statement is the basic thing and you're going to learn from the beginning like yeah, someone was pinging me that uh, it doesn't know programming so don't worry about it you'll learn from the beginning so let us start let me also hello all one sec so let me also see it uh, whether i'm live or not or else i will be keep on talking and nobody will be there okay so, yeah so i'm live okay so yeah so i'm live so yeah so let me share my screen and don't worry you'll have you will all get uh, the breaks which you require because we also need breaks okay so 10 10 minute breaks uh, half of half an hour break uh, like uh, maybe a 120 minute break will also be there for the during the lunch 120 minute break will also be there okay so that will be there okay so let me share my screen okay so hello jbj okay so thank you for attending all of us okay so this is about me so even before we start let me tell about me so this is about me my name is nabindu vishwas i've helped more than 3000 people to start their job in it and uh, uh, one good thing like uh, yesterday only someone pinged me so if i would tell so Because why to do this 12 hour boot camp? Is it any beneficial? Why to go to our YouTube channel? Is it any beneficial? So that is the question. Is it any beneficial? See this thing. Yesterday I got a message from a person at uh, around 5 a.m. And uh, he, he, this is the message. And I love to connect with you and all those things. Uh, actually, I'm able to, for you only, I was able to secure my first career job of 9.6 LP package. And mind it, this guy is not from our paid batch. We have our paid batches also running, like continuously, we have our paid batches, online batches, physical batches running. But we teach everything on YouTube only, everything on YouTube. This 12 hour bootcamp is one of those things. And this guy just he learned from this uh, your 12 hour, like boot camps and all those things. Everything is going on on our channel. So in our channel, if you're watching, you're watching it on YouTube only. On YouTube only, you can see that a lot of lot of things are going on on our channel. Okay, if you like go through all of those things, and today whoever will attend, I will give them a very good nice playlist also in which they can learn and become a developer in six months. Even if you're not from an IT background, so this guy become a full stack developer, like and 9.6 lakh package in this situation is a lot. Like a fresher. In Infosys and TCS, gets a three lakh package, and he got a nine point six lakh package, which is in India is like on the higher side, and that that also he is not from our paid batch. Okay, he is from a YouTube channel. So our paid batches are different. Like this, they get all the mentorship and all. I will tell more about it towards the end, like when it will end. So that will be there. So those paid batches are different like they they have 80 percent success ratio like 80 percent people are placed in those paid batches but people do learn from my youtube also this is not the first time someone has uh, pinged me this thing okay so let me show quickly one more thing like here oh, where is it okay so and one another person so these are all from youtube only so this person also okay this person also learn from a youtube okay he got a internship opportunity internship opportunity internship opportunity is also very big thing to get and he got it from a youtube only so anything you can like from on youtube we put a heart out there and like this 12 hour bootcamp so you go to internet like youtube nobody does this 12 hour bootcamp and we do this every month and it needs a lot of planning a lot of effort because we teach like some of my teachers after this will teach for four four hours straight I'll also teach for four hours straight. So HTML I will take. After, we'll start in, with HTML in the next 10-15 uh, minutes. HTML I will take. After that, uh, CSS complete will be taken by Mossum. Like complete when complete. Everything will be done. CSS basics. CSS flexbox. CSS grid. Then JavaScript will be completed by uh, Hari. Everything. Like JavaScript basics and all. Uh, so like three three hours around three to four hours of css around three to four four hours of uh, javascript again after that i will take the react around three to four hours of react so that is the plan that is the plan and this happens every month only once okay so that is there 
and you will get this nice big certificate okay so this is about me so i told a lot this is about me so i have more than 16 years of it experience uh, i worked in like uh, almost all big companies on this planet like uh, from oracle to ibm uh, to jp morgan all those things but my last job was in innominds i was an associate architect there i was leading a team of uh, 50 front end engineer and i left that job in august 2021 to uh, do the thing which I love more than coding, which is teaching to code. So I started my own company, TWD, and uh, I do corporate trainings. I do teach in other startups also, and I teach in my startup also. So that is there, and uh, I established it in uh, my hometown of Bhopal. So we have physical classes also here. So this is about me and uh, yeah, YouTuber. I'm doing a YouTube for a long time also. And besides this, I have some books also out there. Okay, so this is about me. And uh, I'm a corporate trainer, full-time trainer now, corporate trainer. I have my team. We teach like on YouTube. We have our trainings going on and all those things are there. So full-time training people to become a React developer. And this is a company because you are going to, this is a GST registered uh, sole proprietary company. You will get a nice certificate from our company if you complete this thing. So how do we, you get the certificate? So a lot of people will ask, how do I get the certificate? So you have to fill some attendance forms. So there will be, so this is a 12 hour boot camp. We are doing this. We are not like that. Only one one attendance will be given. There will be four attendance. Total four attendance will be given. First attendance I will give in some time. Like uh, the moment I I am first going to tell what part you have to take. Because a lot of people have pinged me yesterday, sir. I am not from a coding background. What should I do? So those things I need will tell first, then I will start with HTML. But before I start with HTML, I will give you this attendance form. Okay. So this attendance form is a very nice Google form and Google form is always good. Like uh, it will be there. So here I will send it and I will put it only on the, on the chat, on the live chat only, on the live chat only the attendance will be put nowhere else. The attendance will be there, not on the WhatsApp groups from where you are. No, nowhere else, only on the live chat it will be put okay so the live chat it will be put and at different times so this will be put around 9 30 maybe 9 30 a.m second attendance will be put once css is completed which will be i guess around 1 30 third one will be put around 5 30 uh i think when like uh, javascript will complete it and uh fourth one will be put around uh, like uh, 8 30 okay 8 uh 8 30 uh when okay so that will be done okay no it's not necessary to make portfolio website we'll tell about more later on okay so this uh this four attendances will be made for at four attendances will be shared at different different time i have told all the time when this will be made okay so and one more thing, uh, this is like a complete teaching thing. So won't be able to answer many of the questions which you nice people ask. If you have a lot of questions, you can always join our WhatsApp groups. So maybe I will give the WhatsApp group. Okay. And you can join that WhatsApp group and. Uh, okay. You can ask all these things. So in the WhatsApp groups, you will get to know about all our upcoming courses, which like free courses, paid courses, free courses on like YouTube. Every day something happens. So that will be told on the WhatsApp group. So please join this WhatsApp group if you want to learn more. As I've told, love for attendance will be given. Okay. So now as I told, like before a statement, I will show you the path, the path which you need to take why this like a portfolio website this resume all those things doesn't matter nowadays like they are like uh, something from the past maybe if you are living in the past you can make those things like 10 years back they were nice like but but we are not in the past this is the age of ai those things doesn't work even without the age of ai those things doesn't work nowadays nobody sees your portfolio website nobody sees your resume those two things like don't even end up in a trash nowadays you're sending it through mail so nobody watches anything any any one of them okay so 
to get the first attention but resume you need to make to get the first attention what you need to do and what path you need to do to like uh, do this okay so that is also something which i am going to tell so first thing is that the only solution is like the web development so i teach a lot of uh, students from the us also in the morning morning i have morning i have two batches so in the morning batch i teach a lot of people from the us so someone was telling me that in the us there are only like this job which have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. And the thing is that I was telling her that in India also nowadays only these four things are required to get a job in Bangalore, Hyderabad, all the IT hubs. You require these things, and these are the things which will going to pay you well. There is no less. She was a Magneto developer. It is like a WordPress thing. Okay, so you don't uh, you don't do all those things today if you want to get a good job. So they have a limitation. If you are a WordPress developer. WordPress is like something which you which somebody know don't know WordPress magnet or all those things are like some drag and drop thing through which you can make website very well. And the problem with that is that you are just dragging and dropping. You're not using your head. So when you're not using your head, there is a limitation. And I know the limitation. The limitation of a WordPress developer in India is 35,000 rupees after five years of experience. Initially, they will pay you two, three thousand rupees. 35,000, not one penny more than that. Okay, you will not get one penny more than and after five years of experience, maybe after 10 years of experience, they will kick you out. So not more than that. Okay, so Hindi may we cannot do. So because we are, uh, we have a global audience, we have a lot of people with uh, uh, like uh, from uh, South also coming. So Hindi, we cannot teach. Sorry for that, Akshay. So there are some nice Hindi channels which you can go and Hindi may we cannot teach. Okay, so because uh, we help you to get up uh, like a web app developer job and the problem with a web app developer job, most of the web app developer jobs are like very high paying jobs. Okay. And those high paying jobs, you cannot get it in Hindi. Okay, So I will maybe I will add one thing more here, like uh, communication skills is also required. So sorry for that. I need to add it, add one more thing also. So communication skills is also required actually. Without communication skills, it's a bit difficult. And trust me, English is not that tough. Okay. So we do conduct English trainings also on our channel. Okay. So there is one more thing, which is like English communication skills is also required. Because see, this HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and ReactJS jobs, you mainly get in like, uh, startup kind of a companies and like the in one with one year experience like if someone is going to give you like a 10 lakh package so you require to know english for that okay so that is that even if you're telling that i will get the job is uh, job in like uh, uh your uh, in uh, non-metro like the uh, indoor indoor is a very good place to get a job there also you require communication skills because we continuously we get in connect with all those things so uh, that is there okay so so that is there and as i told not much i will going to tell about uh, all those uh, things like uh, so there is no registration but there will be attendance forms given as told earlier attendance forms will be given so okay so developer work will reduce but if i if i developer work will reduce but if we, you don't know what the code means then what the use for chat gpt if you open chat gpt and write like i need a mm -hmm. the react js code to uh, like uh, build a sidebar but how to add that code to a sidebar if you don't know that thing then how it will be none okay so that is there so html css javascript and react is something which is there and people are asking a lot of questions as i have told please don't ask it here a lot of questions this is not a doubt solving session this is a training session so that is there and if you have learned but i will answer some of the things not all those things so chat gpt will not do anything and uh, after front end developer you should uh, uh, add uh, node.js to it node.js to this react js if you uh, add then you will get a become a full stack developer. Becoming a full stack developer is very, very easy if you know JavaScript. So HTML is JavaScript and React. Don't go outside this. Don't learn Python. Don't learn PHP. There is no jobs out there. Do your research. Do your research and you'll find out like most number of jobs in Bangalore, Hyderabad, all those um, big places. And all the other places are these things only. And these things only are the things uh, which will pay you a lot. And we are here to make you a highly paid web app developer, not we are here to make you a WordPress developer, not here. We are here to give you some small jobs. And that's the reason we communicate in English only. And that is the reason like you're going to get a job in a metro. Most probably, even if you're not going to get a job in a metro, you're going to get a job in a very good company. 
and or you are doing okay so suppose i don't want to work in a very good company then what i will do i'll become a very highly paid freelancer i will do freelancing but freelancing work doesn't like in india you won't get good freelancing work if in india you start doing freelancing work they will not pay you they will not pay you money like they will pay you money like 4 5 000 rupees for a react js work and that also they will delay so the best freelancing works like the uh, like uh, from freelancer.com and all how you communicate with your american clients you need to know english for that okay so that is there sorry akshay you have to learn english okay so no other like uh, thing is there and uh, that is there and uh, so this html css javascript and react okay so lokesh please learn learn first html css javascript and react, nothing else after that once you become a full stack front end developer add node js to it which is again based on javascript it is not much difficult and we have on our channel full stack development courses also man full stack development courses are also there okay so that is there so one more thing like uh, okay so yeah that's good to allow you follow our thing so we are till 9 we are till 9 pm here and don't worry we will have a lot of gaps okay so uh, this is our trademark course and this trademark course happens only like uh, once in a month so you people are lucky if you are here okay so one more thing so as the as a person was asking me and uh, there is one more person here uh, j vj okay this is for him also so they were asking me that uh, like how to become a developer i have a gap and i have something like that okay so there are three secrets to become that and someone is asking about the portfolio site also so that is not required okay now days okay so the thing is that you need to, to get a job today and trust me the job market is like worst in the us but in india there is no effect okay so that's a because we have become independent a lot so india there is no effect in fact india more jobs will come the more jobs will go from the us those jobs will also come to india so that's why it's very important to with this thing to have a grip on english because those us job when they will come to india you cannot talk with hindi with them okay you have to talk with english only okay so those us jobs are coming to india that for that is for sure okay those all those big big us jobs which has gone so you open up linkedin you open up newspaper if you're not living in a cave you know that the jobs are going at a very fast rate in the us but india that much is not there so those jobs will slowly slowly no fastly move to india fastly move to india all those jobs are move to fastly with india okay so the thing is that there are three secrets to become a web app developer for everyone like if you are uh, from an it background if you are non it background if you have a gap you are a housewife you are a watchman all those things okay so you need these things okay so networking linkedin twitter instagram and facebook group you need to do networking you need to good be very good on networking you need don't need to have a portfolio site or something and all this you need to take some daily actions like uh, code to hours daily that is a must and you need to participate in some challenges if you search uh, what is this 100 days of code challenges so if i tell you what is this 100 days of code challenge okay so let us go like this like what is this linkedin twitter and all those things i have to do so nowadays it is not sufficient to just code you have to showcase your code and you have to showcase your code on linkedin twitter instagram and all those things and uh, coding to our daily is like non negotiable if you are from a non it background then and 100 days of code is a very good way to showcase your code there is a person so sometime what happens people like understand what i'm saying and they like uh, keep on like uh, whatever i say they like 100 days of code is a very good coding challenge it's actually a bit difficult coding challenge uh, it is the considered as the most uh, difficult coding challenge on planet earth so if you do that thing completely you will it is for sure you will get a job okay so why it is the most difficult coding challenge on planet earth and maybe on the next planet also so because here you have to code daily daily continuously for 100 days and uh, there are some hashtags are there which you need to follow and this guy took my advice seriously and actually he is doing this for the second time first time what happened so 100 days daily like it's not like a sunday it's my birthday no nothing like that so what happens previous time he did it for 90 days okay 90 days you are it 90 days he did it 91 day day, day he got very ill very ill he got he was like in hospital he was not able to do so gone the challenge is gone so 
he had to start again so they will not understand this is this is the american channel if you complete this channel you will come in the come in the top sites in the us so it is not that tough but it it seems like okay it is very easy 100 days i have to code something good it is very easy but it is not it is it is not considered as the toughest challenge on planet earth it is considered the toughest challenge on planet earth for that reason only people are not in india like it is there i have a one person who completed this channel on one day he have to go for a marriage function uh, in a bus so he coded in a bus and then he posted it so, so that's much commitment is required you might think okay 100 days i will not go anywhere no no it is not possible in india it's especially it is not possible 100 days day will 100 100% go somewhere this guy was uh, uh, like uh, he was not well in the 91st day so what you will do suddenly you have to go to medical emergency what you will do so that is that is something which happens like he is now coding continuously for 6 day so these are some of the things which you have to do so see coders are not like uh, given that much money for a reason okay so money is like unlimited it is still it is unlimited so that is not i was i was that day i was uh, seeing some uh, like uh, euro video of ishan sharma like uh, if you like ishan sharma i think most of you know him ishan sharma so i was uh, watching something from this guy ishan sharma and uh, okay Mm, where is this guy okay so this guy this guy this guy earns earns 4 crore per year his salary is 4 crore per year i know people who earn some million dollar what is a million dollar everybody can tell me million dollar is 8 crore rupees okay million dollar is 8 crore rupees so this guy earns 4 crore per year and he is doing a developer job and uh, he is uh, into html css javascript and react only okay so 4 crore a job per year is also very much easy it is not like it is only like how much your mind can think it is for that okay so someone was telling that i have a like uh, i have a gap gap doesn't matter okay so so it doesn't works like that locus like you need to have a critical solving and all those things those things are nonsense okay so those things it doesn't matter okay so you don't think the logical thing i also don't uh, know what is logical thinking and all those things and i i was a very successful developer like i was leading a team of 50 people i have created web apps like uber level complicated web apps i have created in my career so those logical thinking and all those things are like bull and shit okay so you have to do only one thing which is like you have to create a lot of projects and no other things you have to do no logical thinking and those blah 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 those things are not there you only have to create projects projects and projects after you're done and you have to showcase those projects okay showcase the, those projects and that is the only way to get a job you have to showcase those projects on your linkedin like that guy is showcasing his things and uh, if you cannot do the challenge it is okay then you can do like uh, what other people do like uh, if you cannot do the challenge like uh, then this always like uh, this guy is my intern he is from hyderabad and he is working at my company he is a mechanical engineer so see 2016 to 2020 he is a mechanical engineer now he is a full time engineer he is more than 6 month here and uh, he also did a lot like he learned a lot and all those things and all so when he was like uh, learning okay so uh, let me give a, get a go a bit down so you have to do the projects like this okay so you have to do the projects like this and you have to pay you have to put them in linkedin you have to do the projects like this okay so those things are there so it doesn't matter you you forgot html css and javascript so it doesn't matter why why do you want to remember those things why do you want to remember those things create projects you will never forget you will never forget them and uh, the main thing is not uh, learning this is not some college going on okay the main thing is to get a job so if you keep on learning like it will be like your life will go in like this and 10 years will i know people who are learning i know one guy who is learning html for the past 2 years html he doesn't have confidence like he is learning html for the past 2 years 
keep on learning that thing will never end okay so the main thing is to get a job not like just keep on learning 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 and when you get a job you go in a project the project is like they will give you some small component to make in this project then you don't have to understand everything then you'll go to google and search for those things you only need to learn a bit of basic now for all of you people there is even much better you understand the basic you have chat gpt also okay so chat gpt also is there so nobody is like forcing you like not to use chat gpt but you should know like if i give you a component to create and if i like uh, no chat gpt like i i give you so I, suppose i gave you uh, this uh, this header to create this header to create then i should able to write the basic code in react for that this linkedin is a whole thing is react the world is completely moved in react i have not told this everything is in react so that's why i'm telling you linkedin instagram facebook everything we see there it is react all the startups you see it is react react and react except google so everything the front end is in react okay so this linkedin this site is coded in react so if i give you this this header to make so first thing you should know a bit of thing how to create this header then the next part comes like how you'll use chat gpt for this where to or everybody does uh, like uh, uh, research only on google and all and you build two four five clones you'll understand a lot there are a lot of clones on our site so this man clone which this guy has built which bhargav has built this is there on our site this is there on a youtube channel so build that thing you'll learn a lot of things how to create this header how to do the api call how to link the backend with the front end this is a full stack project all those things you are going to learn so don't think like you'll forget 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 okay so enough of talk like as i've told earlier please uh, uh join our uh, whatsapp group if you want to like have some more thing to be told that is there now i will send the first attendance as i told because i'm going to start with html now so enough of the talk so please fill the first attendance so this is attendance one okay so this is the attendance one please fill the first attendance okay so i am also pasting it here the attendance one have been shared please fill the attendance one the rest of the attendance you have to fill all four attendances all four attendances needed to be filled to get the certificate and uh, that is there and uh, let me now yeah start applying for job but first start applying for internship if you are in a college or all start applying for internship do all those things create your linkedin like uh, good linkedin good and showcase them on linkedin create those project and showcase them on linkedin and after that apply for jobs you will definitely get a job okay so that is there or i will give you, um, like if you complete react and all so there is so much so much requirement for react that If you create some good projects in react i can forward your resume so it is like that there are so much work in react okay so now we are going to start with html because this is for like for just the basics also so we will start with html and a lot of person people were telling that whether we will teach from the starting yeah we'll teach from the starting so untitled like i created a folder and i will write it as html i'm using a mac but windows also can create a folder so nothing different is there in windows also okay so then what i'm going to do i'm there is something known as vs code okay so and one more thing is there like uh, some people ask me so i don't have a laptop i don't have something laptop or a computer but but you need a laptop or a computer for coding so that is required without that it is not possible so it will be very difficult okay to code on the mobile screen even if you have a 5 inch mobile screen no it is not like it is not suitable for coding so please buy a second hand uh, uh, laptop if you have to sell your mobile sell your mobile buy a second hand laptop for 10000 rupees that is there so don't do those things you have to do something then only you can learn so this uh, is there this is known as a visual studio code which is something which is required to be installed on your laptop so visual studio code is a coding editor when you code you need something known as a coding editor you need a coding editor 
in which you can code okay so this coding editor is required this is a very lightweight coding editor so i was, i'm telling you mm. that uh, you don't uh, you can do it with a 10000 rupees laptop also second hand laptop 10000 rupees because this vs code is like it it doesn't request anything like a i3 uh, i5 third generation 4 gb of ram is more than enough for it to run so you will get a easily a 10000 rupees uh, in a 10000 rupees you easily get a good laptop so when when you get it you do, like download this thing and it is like a exe file you'll get it on windows and you can install it if you have some problem we have some videos for that also how we install it on a windows okay so that is there and uh, you install it and then what will come and Reaper, please join our uh, WhatsApp group. Uh, you can connect with me personally or, or you can also ping me on LinkedIn. I will guide you further. Okay. So all the steps which are required. Okay. So those things are there. And today who will get the certificates, uh, like uh, fill all the patterns. They will also get the exact uh, LinkedIn, exact YouTube videos, which you need to follow to make your career. Like this, these are exact YouTube videos. We have like more than thousand YouTube videos on our channel. So you cannot like go and do it in any order. There is an order to this all chaos. There is an order. So that order you learn in those YouTube videos. Okay. So like in what order I have to learn everything. So those things will be there. Uh, it will be shared to all of you who get the certificate. So, so that is there. So like Visual Studio Code, it will open like this. Okay. So now it will open like this. Now, how I will open this folder? So the thing is that I have to open this folder here. So I will do and drag it here. Okay, let me do one more thing. Let me see that whether you people are filling the Google form on, on you or not. Okay, and okay, I forgot to tell two, three things here. Okay, so let me quickly also say one more thing. Okay, so only three people have filled the Google form. So I forgot to tell one thing. So you have to uh, fill the fill your email ID here. Fill your email ID. Then in the email ID should be correct. The email ID should be correct in which uh, you need the certificate. Okay, only only four people have done. So there are more than twelve people here. Please do it. Then the name which which. Uh, you want the certificate please fill the right name or else you will get a certificate with if you say that like reaper <laughs> okay reaper you will get a certificate with reaper name okay so please fill your real name or else you'll get with something wrong youtube username by which you have subscribed to the channel see we are doing so much for you we want you to subscribe to a channel and we will check it this time like that you subscribe to a channel it is a mandatory and instagram also instagram instagram also we need you to do it so it is not like some fancy dancing instagram we have a very dedicated instagram in which i try to solve all of your queries and all those things are there so whatever i feel like it is there so that will be there on the instagram okay so so instagram id also by which you have subscribed to our instagram then your role like whatever is the current non id and linkedin profile linkedin profile is very important okay, if you don't have please feel that i don't have a linkedin profile but as i've told linkedin is the main thing by which you get a job today there is no resume there is no portfolio site to, nowadays only linkedin profile is your everything it is it's your profile is your portfolio site is your website is your resume everything everything is linkedin so please give your linkedin profile if you have if you don't have please write i don't have but please create create it as soon as possible and i can see only five people have filled it please fill it uh, i'm not using instagram id so you do it you i'm not having instagram but most people have come it come from our uh, facebook and instagram ads only here so if they have come from there so most probably they have an instagram id okay so you don't have an Instagram ID. Okay. Write it. You don't have. Okay. Write it. You don't have. Okay. So that is there. But most people have Instagram ID. Okay. So that is good. Okay. So that is good. But don't fill with crazy sigh. Okay. So you'll get with crazy sigh only. Then your certificate. Okay. So that is there. So that is good. You'll get the certificate. Uh, you. So this is the only the first first form. There will be another three attendance certificates like this. Okay, attendance forms like this. If you fill it, so I will check on like uh, not everybody have filled it. Please fill it ASAP. Okay, so or else you will forget and then you will not get the certificate. Okay, so I will make some room for both of these things. So I have uh, dragged the HTML folder here, as you can see. 
uh, you just have to drag it like this okay so i have dragged it and we're going to start with html html means hypertext markup language it is the basic like through which uh, so you don't have to tell it if you have failed it okay so so what will come here in html so html is used to create the website so website has mainly three parts like html is the building block of any website like the basic building block like the structure of the website is given by html the styling of the website is given by css the uh, actionability of the website is given by java it is like building a house the walls are created with html the paintings and the showing the house in a very beautiful way like the coloring and all those things then with css but when i uh, switch the fan button the fan should work that is done by javascript when you click something the something should work some application should work so those are done by javascript okay so how's analogy so that is it let us start with the uh, html here so html i've created a folder now i will inside this i will create a file called index.html it is not required that i should name it index but that dot html is something which is very very much important why it is very much important dot html so like uh, jpg file app dot jpg extension doc file app docx extension all those things so like this the html file or any coding file html is a lang is a language so any coding file will have the extension like this html app dot html extension like soon we are going to see css dot css dot js dot java java files of java extension so all those things have this extension so st index dot html have that so the thing is that uh, before 2010 most of the people used to code html in something known as notepad plus plus which is there in windows or something like that but nowadays everybody codes in, the, in this thing like known as vs code why because vs code has got some very cool features okay so like uh, like one of the feature and i can to get more space i can click here it will close this thing so to the folder structure it will close so one of the benefit here in this is that if i give a not so every programming language have a structure so here also we have a structure if i give a not here and then a tab so this whole structure this whole structure will be created so what is this structure all about i'm going to tell about that okay so title i will write it as a statement so let me tell about all the structure so this is one of the benefit of using your vs code like i have given just the not and then the space and then the tab and it created the whole structure for me although it is not the main code it is the main structure so the first thing is this doc type html so doc type html means this is html version 5 doc type html means it is html version 5 okay so html was created in the year 1993 so a lot of different version have came and there is it is all standardized it is like uh, maintained by a uh, um, not a company it's a organization known as w3c worldwide web conversation or something like that it's very difficult english word so that is there it maintains it okay so doctor html is there now after this this uh, we have like html is all about like different tags like you'll have this greater than and lesser than size 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 in html so this html lang english means it is a language is english so html is starting and html is ending here then we have a header tag okay head tag and the body tag these are the two main things like inside the html we have this head and the body these are the two main things head tags is mainly uh, used to do something so this is also a website so html is used to create website and web apps and everything which you see in the internet so this thing is there this a lot of things like here will be done from the head tag and the body tag will contain the body body tag is the main thing which we are soon going to go into the body tag and we are going to create different different uh, we are going to create uh, different your tags like html is all about learning about different tags how to create a, a bold head a bold uh, headline how to create a small paragraph how to add an image all those things so what is this header tag all about so this header tag is like uh, you see this this meta is there and title is something which you are soon going to see this title will come here okay so what is this meta so meta is something which is not phase not facebook because facebook name is meta nowadays so meta is something different Fa meta is related with google 
how Google because there is something known as search engine optimization SEO search engine optimization so in meta tag you can give the keywords and the description of the site keyword and the description you can give in the meta so when you give the keywords and the description in meta so they become a part of search engine optimization and the digital marketers learn a lot of these things it is not for us because uh, I'm not a digital marketer, so uh, and uh, development is such a big field that digital marketing is a totally different. So SEO, like you can put a lot of keywords and all those things, and then you can be there on the first page of Google. Like keywords, like what? Because what Google uh, Google do? Google have a very big database. What is Google? Google is a very big database in which all the websites on this planet they are like uh, something about it is written there. Okay, so what is this? But the better your seo is you will rank high on google so that is done by seo teams okay so like this site is there so maybe keywords they put it so and there are a lot of other techniques and i don't know them so like this in google if you go and search for free code editor like this you know, search for free code editor see just to do code has come and in fact this site have also come on the first page of Google, which is something very difficult to achieve. So this is what is SEO because these three words are, will be there in the keyword of this uh, meta tag. So that's why it featured on the first page of Google. So that is about it, meta tags. You don't do much about it. And this HTML, as I told, it will be shown here. Now the body tag is the main thing which we do. Like uh, we'll see some things like so first thing I'll see is a heading tag and uh, I'll do, I'll write this and do a control and backslash. And this is something which is known as comment. This would be not shown to the end user only for the developer. This is the developer view. This is the end user view. Okay. So now I'll write a H1. I can see VS code H1 tab. It will complete me. H1 is heading one. So then two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, worldwide web cos console team. So I cannot spell that third thing. Three, four, five, six. Okay. So heading one, heading two, and uh, heading till heading six are there. Okay, let's save it. So these are the different heading tags, like H1 to H6. So you might have seen, okay, like in this site also, this is a heading one. This might be a heading four. So these are of different sizes. So, but how to see this thing? I don't want to see this thing. I want to see my site up. So what I have to do, I have to go to this index.html, which I've created here. And uh, I have to, go and double click on it it will open in my default browser which is like uh, your uh, for me it is safari because i'm using a mac so for you it might be edge if you're using a windows or you might have changed it to google chrome but i have not changed it so i will like uh, right click and open with uh, maybe google chrome okay. so it is open in google chrome and i will actually okay so Google Chrome I have opened and see this is how this has been shown everything is shown so here there are two three things first thing is that uh, this HTML this title this title has been shown here and this heading one to heading six are been shown as a different sizes heading one to heading six are been shown as different sizes so this is how our HTML looks okay this is how our HTML looks and uh, thank you all for filling the attendance form I can see 15 people have filled the attendance form so those who have not filled the attendance form, please fill the attendance form. It is like there. And uh, I've also like uh, mentioned it on the, your, my YouTube that attendance one uh, link is there. So you can also get it from there. So now you cannot say that it is not there. So you can fill it from there also. Okay. So, but you have to type it manually. It's better to get it from the chat. So that is there. Now, the thing is that like heading, there is a uh, heading tags. There is another thing known as a, paragraph so we'll see the paragraph okay so and html is all about learning about different tags and we as we are told today this 12 boot bootcamp we are going to teach 
every topic in detail html in detail css in detail javascript in detail react in detail everything completely will teach after that only the thing which is remaining is projects we cannot do projects in 12 hours then it will take 24 hours so projects are also there on our channel you can do the projects that is the main thing okay so para are ph tag paragraph tag i'll do and then do a control and a backslash paragraph tag and uh, paragraph tags are done with p okay p p and this let me take a bit of code from here then I'm maybe I'll complete I'll close it um, so this P I've taken and this I will paste it here now I'll save uh, I'll save it but saving it is not showing it why it is not showing it is not showing because in HTML what happens like if you save it P is for paragraph so you have to go and refresh it suppose I don't like it I don't like like going here and refreshing it I suppose I don't like it then what then then there is a thing like uh, if i don't like this thing like if i don't like uh, going here and doing it then i mean if you like it like if you do this thing a lot of people don't mind doing this thing then it is okay but if you don't like this thing and then vs code comes with a lot of extensions these are extensions are the small small things which uh, different developers who are like highly talented who have got a lot of time they create these things okay so there is a extension here so which you will come here and do liv live search for liv live then you'll get this live server okay so this is a very good extension this live server is created by Ritvik day and he has got more than uh, three crore downloads and these are very easy to add in vs code you, you will get a install button here install it it will not ask anything else and it will add it so these are like additional features which you can add in vs code through third party libraries which are official it is not like unofficial it is like adding something from uh, android play store okay so it is like official this is their play store in which adds functionality in vs code and a lot of functionality VS Code is also created by Microsoft and it's free. So they cannot add. So those small software developers, they create this small package and they give us that. So live server, I have added it. So what's the benefit of this live server? So the benefit of this live server is if I right click here and uh, I will get this option open with live server only if I uh, install it or, or there is a go live button is also there. So once I install it, I will get this thing. Okay. So I'll go here and do a open with live server. Now open with live, so it will open it. My default browser, okay, so that is bad. Okay, so huh. now what I can do here actually open in something like this 127 and all those things. And you don't have to learn something more about it. This is known as your local host, okay, 127 and all this. Thing. Now, uh, what will happen here, like this 127 and this thing is there. Now, here I will go and i'll add one more paragraph here okay so first thing is that here you will let us see one more paragraph i'll add i don't have anything like code to add so what do we do so in these cases what happens developers use something known as lorem l-o-r-e-m lorem so what is this lorem lorem is a dummy text okay so uh this is another thing like if you want to add any dummy text, i can you can do something like this it doesn't look good it doesn't look good like it doesn't look good okay so and there is a dummy text known as lorem ipsum and uh, lorem ipsum is in vs code again there is a lorem ipsum generator L O R E M. you do right and press the tab it will generate the text for you lorem ipsum is something which is like 200 years old it was used in newspaper when the newspapers were created suppose i am a owner of a newspaper and i don't have a news right now so but i want to see that how the print has been shown then i use the lorem i don't type, like type anything there okay i use the lorem if some text so this is something which was which is like 200 years old this text doesn't make any sense but when human eye sees it it sees it seems like okay it is there something is there okay not like i'm typing something and uh vs code comes in built with lorem if some generator okay so i'll save it again like it is not shown here so i have to go and refresh it but if i go here so it is automatically there how do i confirm it is there suppose uh, i delete this thing and save it see the moment i did it, it it came here again i'll i will make that thing back and i'll save it so the moment i save my code it will be reflected here. so that's why developer likes vs like this thing okay 
so i think those people who have come now right now please fill the attendance form and attendance form is in the live chat and it is also been shown in the youtube video so but it's better to you fill it from the live chat you'll get directly a link from there you don't have to like type it manually from the youtube video okay so that is there so that is the benefit of this so now we have learned two tags but there is one thing more which i want to tell heading one ta heading tags and paragraph tags are also known as block level element so why they are known as block level element because uh, uh, what happens with this heading tags if you can see this heading tags and paragraph tags both of them are block level element because there was a lot of uh, space here like after heading one heading two heading three heading four heading five heading five heading six this all could have come in the same line but it is coming in different different lines and there is some spaces also there is some spaces also some spaces there. in paragraph could have also like this thing lorem ipsum this thing could have easily come here but it is coming in the next line because there is a lot of spaces there so this is this is known as a block level element because some of the tags are uh inline element also like the next tag which we are going to learn so the next tag which uh, we are going to learn is known as the the anchor tag okay so anchor tag or the link tag so link tag link tag and i will write it with the a link tag is a a or anchor tag also it is an a and tag will do it will give you something like this i will have two anchor tags to show something so here what you can do you can give some like a uh, site uh, site name okay some sites you can give so suppose uh, i will give One of them, I will give my YouTube channel link. So here I'll write T W D Y T, and the other I will write ads. My site. site here but here in the second one i will write something as target equal to underscore blank i will come to this what is this target equal to underscore blank and save it so the moment i save it it is coming here so there are two three things which i want to tell you first thing is even going uh, here this is the inline element see both of these things are coming in the same line so if i copy this thing again like like this and if i If I paste it two times, save it. See, it is coming in the same line, inline, same line. It is not a block level element that it is coming in its own line. No, it is like coming in the same line. So, this is known as an inline. Okay. So, now what is this anchor tag? Anchor tags are tags in which it's a very popular tag which you have seen in almost all the websites. It is TWDYD is there. And this href, what is there in the href? This is known as a, uh, this is. Uh, mm, Actually, whatever the site will be mentioned, it will go there. And this underline and this purple color, all of these things are made by this anchor tag. Okay. So if I click here, what it will do, it will open this site. Whatever is mentioned there, it will open there in my own, uh, in that own browser. In that own browser, this is our channel. And if you have not subscribed, do subscribe to it. So, and it is mandatory also. So it will open in the same. It will open in the same tab so why i'm saying that because if i click here you'll see that it is opening in the different and this is our uh, uh, site and you can like uh, see like these are some of our paid boot camps so like these things you can check it out like the courses and all those things are there okay so that is there so this is this site is opening in a different tab so and here it is opening the same tab if i again click it see it is opening in the same tab actually it is not considered a good thing if you click on a link it is opening in the same same tab because uh, if i'm in facebook suppose i'm in facebook and there is some comment is there in the comment there is a youtube link is there so if i click on that youtube link it will open if it open in the same tab then the facebook is gone and facebook youtube all those things all the things which you're getting for free it is actually not free you they shows you ad they learn what you are then only they get paid 
even one one second if you uh, like spend uh, two three second less in that side they earn that much less because they understand your personality also so those things are there that's why you are shown targeted ads so no sites want you to go away from them so all of the site have put this target equal to underscore blank and what does that means in the href like their front end engineer put that it will open it in a new tab it will not open it in the same tab so this is the difference and this is the anchor tag all about okay. so anchor tag is done now the next thing which uh, we are going to learn is the list tag okay list tag we are going to learn and this list tag is uh, again like i'm showing all the important tags see everything is like that uh, html also you can learn for six months css you can learn for uh, four years javascript you can learn for like eight years but we are not here to do those things we are here to give you a job okay and we teach only the main thing okay literally javascript you can learn for eight years okay because javascript is very very difficult to master but very easy to learn it is said it is very deep okay if you want to master it so master it after you get a job not while like you want to get a job okay so now the list tag is there what is the list tag list tag is like uh i'll do a ul unordered list and here i'll do a li ul means unordered list li means list item so there is item one then there is item one item two item three item four and item five i will save it. so this see this dot 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 are created so these are what these are unordered list create this dot 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 like this okay and there is another kind of list which is known as the oil oil means ordered list oil means ordered list and uh, you create one two three four five okay one two three four five okay so that is there so it will give this numbers okay so that is it now the next thing which we are going to learn is a very important thing here which is form tags and this is a group of some tags which we are going to learn here the form tags okay so here what will happen like this is a form tags and what are these form tags actually and even before going to the form tags i have come a bit down so i will put another thing like a hr hr i'll not write it hr is known as horizontal it will create a straight line straight line okay hr is horizontal rule and then we have a br br is known as break row so what does break row have break row have a, will give us space and these tags are like self ending self ending means it is not having something like starting and ending okay so um, because the form tag is very important i'll put it inside a bunch of uh, br and hr and then i will do a for form tag okay form tag i'll do and then this form tag i'll do a form 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 tag is there and uh, here form tags are used for what form tags are actually used to take the user input in a website or a web app anything like in linkedin or facebook you go you register there for the first time so that data is taken from you from the front end and that is uh, placed or put in the database in the facebook linkedin whatever that their server it is put and how that is put that is also something which you have to learn in the future that is something like in react you have to learn those things okay so that is there so now this form is there and then i'll do a label and uh, so form tags generally have something known as an input elements in which you can user can put the input someone was asking me how to take the input in javas html css or javascript this is the way you take it through the input tag but input tag always comes in pair with something known as a label what is the label we're going to see so label i will put the label as name and then the name and uh, and input someone was asking one day like why do i put a label why cannot we put a span or something span is a kind of a div something okay so label is required because html is not a very tough language like java or something it will not give you error for anything but this is how it should be there so there so that your website is also seo optimized and it is like the right thing so always write a label tag for a input okay input type text i have written okay so input type text what is that i will tell and then i'll do a name equal to name and uh, there is something known as id equal to name id 
I'll tell what are this all these things. See, this it is it is shown like this. Name is coming here, and this is coming here. So uh, now the next thing which I'm going to do is like this. Page. 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 And but this will be input type, and you am yeah, number input type number. So age is like this, and uh, again you see like this is a text box in which I can type. So here I can write when do here I can write anything, and the number input type number I can increase also input type number I can increase also. Okay, so that is there input type number I can increase also now. Now the other thing is that like uh, I'm not liking it. Everything is everything is coming in the one line. Okay, so that is a different thing. Let me first explain like what is this for name and ID. So type you might have uh, learned like type text is like I'm I can type a text. Type number is that I can type a number. So that is for the input type. But uh, the label and input, as I've told, as I've told, the label and input are something which are in a pair. But I am telling they are a pair. Label and in, so this level and input is a pair. This level and input is a pair. How does the computer knows they are a pair? So there is some tag known as a for tag. So it I have written a name and the corresponding thing here is the ID. So these two things should be same for an ID should be same for them to appear for an ID, whatever I've written here, they should be the same for them to appear. And what is this name? What is the name like age and name I believe? So the main thing of a front end is to take the data and send it to the back end. When it will be sent to the back end, when we are going to send it to the back end, then what will happen? The thing is that what will happen when we are going to send it to the back end is uh, like uh, whatever I've written here, like name, name equal to like Nabendu, age equal to 40. So that will go like that in this name tag, whatever it is. It is, it is not required to have the same thing, but prefer to take the same thing. Okay like this it is there we're going to see this thing how it is like uh send to the back end. although we're not going to learn the back end and all those things right now so that is there but uh then what i'm going to do here i'm going to like I, i'm not liking it everything is in one line because everything is the inline here label is the inline input is the inline everything is the inline so i'll write a br here we are break row we're just in break row means it breaks the row i'll save it so it is coming in the next line so i'll do one more br because I'm, I need some more gap. And because we don't know CSS at all, CSS will be taught next. We can do this thing very easy with CSS. Okay. So then I will go here again and put this thing. And then BR is there. And I have some issues. All, all the time I'll put this thing. So this input type text and input type age we have learned. So the next thing we are going to learn is uh, like a uh, uh, text area and a uh, text area and a uh, drop down button so those both of those things are very important so i'll come here and do a label and then a me -E message me -E message and then i do the text area text area name and id have again come call and rows or something uh, i don't need name and id again so name i will give it message and id will give message but this text area, if I save it, see text area is nothing but a multi-line input type text. Here I can write like this. This is good. Okay. So like this, it is there. But the text area is like, uh, is a bit different from the input. Like text area have a starting. Text area have a starting and an ending. Okay. Text area have a starting and an ending. But the input doesn't have like an ending. Like it's a self-ending okay so test area again it is a very common thing which you might have seen like when you go to facebook when you go to linkedin when you go to anywhere you have a thing in which you can do the post that post like you can write multiple lines there so that is nothing but a text area although it is very beautiful looking so very beautiful looking it is done through css not through like but it's a text area okay because multiple lines can be written only in a text area again that post which you write on a facebook and click on the post it is sent to the back end and it is stored in the facebook server okay facebook instagram linkedin servers okay so that is there now this is the text area now the next thing which i'm going to be, we're going to learn is like uh, known as uh, drop down again a very important thing you go to amazon you go anywhere you'll see this drop down thing okay so i'll do a color and color and it is again used to take one single uh, 
thing from the user, one single input from the user. So we'll have a select name is color and ID is color. Then in this select, I will have a option. Value is something I'll do red and then the red color. This is green and green color. This is blue and blue color. This is yellow and yellow color. Okay, so like this, it is there. I'll save it. Like this, this drop down is there, and this drop down is something which you have again seen a lot. Okay, this drop down. So I will choose, I can choose anything here red color, blue color, yellow color. But the thing is that this what is this value? Value is something which will go to the back end, not the like this, whatever I have written here. I can give some sometime people give emojis also. The back end doesn't need emoji, back end needs a value there, okay, because that this all the things will be stored in the database. You don't store emoji or something in the database, okay. So, like that, it is there. So that is there. So this is uh, something which you know that. And hope everyone have filled the attendance form. Let me mark again like this thing. Okay, so that I've given again. So now the next thing here, like this drop down, as I told you, might have seen it a lot in Amazon. So the next thing which we are going to learn, we are going to learn about the checkboxes. Again, the checkboxes are something which uh, we have learned, like in in Amazon. If you go, if you, this is a drop down, but as I've told, like all the beautiful thing are done by there. So like this, you can go. You can select anything. Like uh, maybe I will select where is the I'll have computers and accessories. I'll select and go there and uh, see computers and accessories. It has been shown. So this is a drop down. This is how I selected one thing. A drop down. And uh, then if I go here in the laptop, now what we are going to create? Now we are going to create something known as a checkbox. So when I go to the laptop, everything has been shown here. Okay, but I can see something like this. Okay, so like this, I can show. I will see, okay, CPU manufacturer or something. So if I select AMD, only AMD laptops will be shown. If I select, okay, so it's better to select with brand. So if I select Asus, Asus will be shown. If I select uh, Lenovo, uh, this will also be shown. If I select HP, this will also be shown. So this is known as checkboxes. So checkboxes are very, very popular as you, you can see, this checkbox. So we are going to create the checkboxes now. So checkboxes uh, is like, uh, again, I'll do VR. Uh, we are and here I'll do a bit different. Here I'll do a H4 and what do you own and write like this? What do you own and write? And then and here is less is okay. And then I'll write here input type is at box and name equal to y equal one value equal to byte and id equal to byte okay. and i'll have a label okay so one thing which i'm doing here which is different is that i am putting the label after the input for a reason i'm doing this thing okay id bike and bike and then to Okay, so bike and car both of them are coming like this. Okay, so 
again like i can select one of them or i can select both of them it doesn't matter i can select one of them or both of them so that is the benefit here okay so now what is why is this name as vehicle one and name as vehicle two because both of these check boxes are treated differently and the value will go we're soon going to see this thing so now the last thing which we are going to learn here in the forms is known as a is known as a radio box and radio boxes are used to take something which you can enter only one and the most common thing is the gender you can enter more than one gender so it is used to take something known as a gender so gender will do and then input type is radio and uh, name equal to gender and then value equal to male and uh, id also equal to male like this and then you will have a label and male and female like this then it's female and female and the the and other so in this i have and same so male female and other is there and i can select only one of them okay and then the if i select other the first one is gone away so this this again this is again something which you know okay so here one thing is there the name is like common all the places it is gender because only one data will go here if you see this name is vehicle one and vehicle two because here two data can go if you fail it so that is that now we have created the whole form a very good form but how to submit it so to submit it we need a button here you know we'll have something known as a button so you it button button okay so button and submit but the thing is that and it will create a button okay now one more br i will require to create a button but this is a special kind of a button okay this is a special kind of a button which you have inside a form you have to write a type equal to submit inside a form when you have a button you have to write the type equal to submit and we can have a button outside also like button outside of form also okay and that button will not have a type submit what is the difference here so you'll see if i click here the second button so nothing is happening because the all the functionality you have to give with with javascript like i show i told the clicking of a button so all the functionality you have to give it with that okay so that is there but this button is a special button i'll show how because we don't have time like uh, if i add something here and then i'll write this is good and i will write a uh, in color bike car mail and see i am going to click on this submit i am going to click on this submit when i am going to click on this submit then you will see what will happen okay i am going to click on this submit at the moment i click on this submit two things happen something got submitted and this got refreshed is it got refreshed so everything was cleared so that that is something which has happened when I give a type equal to submit. And what just got submitted? Let us see quickly and let us cut it from here. And this is how it is sent to the back end. Okay. So if I put it here, I will comment it out because I don't want it to like be there. But if you if you see this thing, so name equal to Nabendu has one. So which I have written here. But where this name came from, name is came from here. Age equal to 40 has one. Message equal to message equal to this is good plus is given because i have given some space color equal to green so color is this name color equal to green green has one not green color checkbox vehicle one and vehicle two has one differently vehicle one equal to bike vehicle two equal to car vehicle one equal to bike vehicle two equal to car and a gender only one thing has one gender equal to male so this is all about the form this is how we use the forms okay so that is there now the last thing which we are going to do is the image tag because without uh image website doesn't look good all right so 
last thing in the HTML, which we are going to do is the image tag. Okay. So image tag and the image tag is like, uh, there are two ways to give like ING and I will again do it two times. Okay. There are two ways to use images. One way is to like um, download an image and then showcase it. Image takes two things, two parameters, source and alt. Right? These things we will see. So the best place to find image is the site known as unsplash.com because if you take the image from Google, you can land into problem because the some of the images in Google are copyrighted. Okay. So you cannot like, I cannot take, you can take because, okay. So, okay. So there are like, uh, this image this image i'm going to take and i'm going to download a medium size of the image okay so i've downloaded it and then i will go here and and i'll write images i'll create a folder this is how i create a folder and this i'll show And this is unsplash. Okay, this unsplash is already in name is there. So Lucas unsplash I'll do. Okay, Lucas unsplash. So this I've downloaded this. Then I will take it and drag it in the images folder. This is the best way to do it. Okay, images folder. And now you can see this image is there in my file. And uh, it is always advisable to download the image and show it. Okay, there is another way which I will show. So SRC I write images because that folder is there and then thus lucas thing because the path you have to give and this all all you have to write something meaningful something meaningful which is this thing okay so what is this this is a laptop laptop so i'll write this thing and this is another way also so the another way is like uh, if i see this thing the other way is like i will right click and copy image address this you will get everywhere copy image address i'll do and i'll put it here and what is this this is a sunset sunset okay so i will save it now you can see like you'll see like both of the images are been shown but uh, the first image has been shown very huge like i'm not able to see anything so how to fix it so in HTML, there are very less way to fix it. And one of the ways to give a width, yeah, width here equal to like, uh, maybe I will give it a 600. Right, it will auto adjust. So with 600, I've given, and it is like showing like this. And both of the things are showing perfect fine. Okay. So, but what is this alt tag, which I have to, I've told like, I have to give it like exactly like what is there. So alt tag is nothing but, this alt tag is shown along with the broken image if somehow the image is not able to know, able to load so you might have seen a lot of like a uh, lot of sites okay a lot of sites you might have seen in which what happens a lot of sites uh you go and the image has been not good either sometimes what happens your internet connection is not there or uh, maybe some genuine mistake was done by developer maybe like the developer did something like this unsplashy.com c like this, I did. I'm a developer. I did like this. Something wrong. I have to be given, and now I will save it. See now what is happening. Sunset is been written here. What is there all? And the broken image has been shown. So this is broken image is something which you all might have seen. So this is all about it. So we are done with the HTML, and as I've told, like uh, the next, like uh, we are going to start with the uh, CSS okay, so and CSS uh, will be taken by a trainer Mossum because okay, CSS will be taken by Mossum and uh, we'll start in one, two, one or two minutes. We're going to start it okay, so.
तो हाय ऑल एंड वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू योर वीडियो है स्टॉप अरे भाई वी हैव एक्चुअली टिप अ ब्रेक ऑफ अ मिनट सो नाउ वी आर रिज्यूम्ड विद द सेशन सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद टुडे सेशन वी आर आई एम गोइंग टू टेक केयर ऑफ सीएसएस वी विल कंप्लीट द एंटायर सीएसएस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम बेसिक्स टू फ्लेक्स बॉक्स टू ग्रिड सो uh it will take around uh, 10:30 11:30 12:30 around uh, 3 hours approximately to cover the entire things and uh, uh, we are covering basic, basically the basics of css the forms styling of forms styling of list positioning in css pseudo classes and flexbox grid so these are the things which are important in css we are going to cover all that and there will be a total of four attendance so first attendance form has been shared yeah hi hi abdullah hi so one second so first attendance form has already been shared and it is being displayed on your screen so i hope everybody have filled the first attendance form so i request you all to please fill it and uh, once you fill it please reply in the comment section that you have filled it so that i can go ahead for the so i will i will share you the second attendance form approximately around uh, i can say 2 o'clock 1:30 2 o'clock and after that next sir and after that we have a lunch break of around let's say 20 30 minutes and then we will continue with the session so let us start the today's session and uh, let me hide it okay so it is a folder with the name css and this is all about the css so let us start with css so css is what css is basically cascaded style sheet which is used to make the website decorative and attractive beautiful also without css website looks very ugly and css is the tool which helps you to make the website attractive and beautiful okay so let us start with css so let me have index.html we have the first thing which is called as uh, basic structure and have css here. so there are three ways in which we can add css the first one is inline second one is internal and third one is external so these are the three ways in which we can add css okay so let us go live first so in this go live session if you see here we will see the output of all the three ways of adding css so first one is inline what is inline inline means in the same line directly we apply css to the html element so here using the style tag we use this particular thing and we add the property of background color with the color as aqua so when i save it the output is coming here now after that we see the next thing which is called as the internal what is internal so internal means we apply css directly to this html file so for this thing we again use a style tag and in the head part we use the style tag here and apply on the h2 and again the same background color property with something called as hash double f double zero double a kind of a thing as soon as, soon as i saved it it will throw a color of let's say some pinkish type of a color now after that the next is the external now what is external so external means externally we apply css directly to the html file so how we are going to use it so for this thing we use a file i dot css 
in this file, we apply a background color property on in the form of RGB, the range starting from zero, one double zero. Oh, and two double five. And we need to use a link tag in order to establish a connection between both the files. So this is how it goes <clears throat> like that. Now, here, if you have noticed one thing, in all the three types of CSS addition, I have added a single property which is called as a background color. And in the background color, what I did, I have added colors. This is again a color, this is again a color, and this is again a color. So I just want to tell you one thing that these are the ways in which we can add colors. So let us see how we are going to use it. So one more thing here, this particular thing H3 here is the CSS selector. This is the declaration. This is the property. This is the value. So there is how it goes like that. Now, after that, let us see the first kind of color addition. So first one is simply typing the name of the color. So I what I did simply I type the name of the color, which is aqua. So there are around 140, 140 color names, which you can simply type it. So let us experience those color names. So we have Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have HTML color. And second one is HTML color codes. HTML color codes. So there is how it goes there. So there are around 140, 140 color names, which you can simply type. It. So these are the 140, you can count 10 and 14, 140, 140 color names, which you can simply type. It. Now, after this thing, we see the next thing here in the colors, where in the internal type of adding CSS, I have to use a color using some hash pattern. Okay using some hash pattern. So we have a hash double F double zero double A. So here this hash represents the hexadecimal color system. It represents hexadecimal color system. Double F represents the red color. Double zero represents the green color. Double A represents the blue color. So it is R, G and B. Okay, now in the third one, which is the external one, this is purely a RGB pattern and the range of RGB starts from 0 to 255. Okay, now here, see, so this is how just click on any color of your choice and you will get the codes. So this is the hexadecimal code, this is the RGB code, and this is a HSL code. Now, what is the HSL? So HSL again is a form of color addition where H stands for hue, S for saturation, L for lightness. Okay. Now in this hue, hue contains the colors. Okay. Hue contains the colors in the form of RGB. Saturation contains the sharpness. Lightness contains the brightness of the image. Now in the third one, which is the RGB pattern. So in R, in this RGB pattern, if you see, in the RGB pattern, if you see, uh, we can very well, one second.
so <clears throat> in this rgb if you see here we can very easily create any color So this is how it, you can create any color with the help of this drag bar. So the value of RGB starts from zero. So zero is black and two five five is white. Okay. So this is how the range goes on. Simply you need to just put the detail. In the VS code here, and you will get the color of your choice. Now, next thing here in this we will be taking is the uh, 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 we have the next thing. Okay, so let me have a diagram. So we have a lorem of a dummy content. So this is what the lorem says. Now, let us use some basic set of styles. So, for this thing, uh, we have a font size of, let's say, 20px and uh, font weight let, of bold. And after font weight, we have text transform to uppercase. And again, we can use text decoration to underline and uh, and 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 what else we can have here. Mm. Okay, so we have letter spacing. Oh, well, letter spacing. Mm, let's say in P one P X and word spacing of again let it 22 px so these are some basic font okay so we have one more property is called as the line height of let's say uh, three thirteen px small so So here this is called the line and line it means spaces between the lines now try to understand these basic font properties here so font size font size is nothing but the height of the font after this we have the line height line height means the spaces between the lines font weight is bold text transform is uppercase uppercase means everything is in capital letters text decoration underline Letter spacing means spaces between the let spaces between the letters. Word spacing means spaces between the words. So these are some basic font properties. Now after this thing, let me have uh, another paragraph. Okay, but before going to that, let me use the font family here. So font family, and uh, by default, if you see a minimum of three available fonts are there. So let us pick up this thing. And here we have minimum of three fonts. Now, what is the use of minimum of three fonts? The use of these three fonts are, if here Arial is the primary font and Helvetica and Ten Serif is the secondary fonts. Okay. So Arial is the primary font, Helvetica and Ten Serif is the secondary font. So if you see here, suppose, Suppose Google Chrome does not support Arial font. So what it will do? It will automatically pick up the next available font, which is the Helvetica font. And let's say, suppose Microsoft Edge does not support Arial and Helvetica font. So it will automatically switch to the next available font, which is the Sans Serif font. Okay. So that is how you can calculate this thing. Now, these days, 
Now these days, Google font is being used a lot. Why? Because as you know, Google are now into our event part of our, every part of our life. So Google have their font also. So these are the Google fonts, which is being used a lot. Let us pick up this, fold it. So we use the first one. And in the first one, we just simply paste it on the top. And uh, 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 uh. Now see how it suddenly changed. So what we will do here, um, actually it is not completely visible also. So let us change this. Uh, okay. So, let me have the let us pick up this Laura part. So in this Laura, we pick this one and uh, now we just simply copy it. So we have a two font set here. So I use All right. now see how beautifully the content looks like. See now if I reduce, if I remove this thing. That that how beautifully it looks like that. Now, after this, let us have a another paragraph here. So we have a para with a lorem of ten. Now, in this lorem of ten, in this lorem of ten paragraph, if you have noticed one thing here, the set of styles what we have designed for the first paragraph applies to the second one also okay why it is happening because there is no bifurcation there is no segregation that which but which particular set of styles is for which paragraph okay so for this thing what we are doing here uh, so for this thing, what we are doing here, we are coming up with classes and IDs. Okay. We are coming up with classes and IDs. So what are classes and what are IDs? So classes and IDs basically are used to target HTML elements. Okay. So here, here. A paragraph is a HTML element. Okay. Now, in this, if you see here, there is no bifurcation or there is no segregation. So, we are, we have come, with, come up with classes and IDs. So, in the classes and IDs, if you see here, we use this to target the elements, HTML elements. Fine. So, let us see how we are going to use it one minute class any of the class let's say it stops and here we'll use id and the name is what happens So here, 
we use p dot now see now see this particular set of style this particular set of style is only for the first paragraph okay and for the second one we have a id so dot is used to highlight a class and hash is used to highlight id and one more thing this class top can be used multiple times and id can only be used one time Fine. So for this thing, let us have a bottom. We'll use a font size of letter twenty to be X. And uh, okay, so that is sufficient. So we have used twenty two PX font So that is how that is how you can use classes and IDs. Fine. Now, now after this thing. Let us see, let us see, let us see next thing, which is called as the box model. So if you see one thing here, so this is a box model. So this is a content, padding, border, margin. Content, padding, border, margin. So let us experience how we are going to use it. So uh, we have the content here, after content we have, Padding of let's say 20 px padding after padding we have border let's say 4p x solid border of let's say blue color and after that we have a margin of let's say 30 feet. Now try to understand one thing here. Okay, this is the content after this content. We have padding. Padding is of internal space. After this padding, we have border. And after this border, we have the margin. Okay, so this is the content. After this content, we have the padding. Padding is the external space. And this padding moves on all the side means top, right, bottom, and left. Similarly, we have border. Border is again on all the four sides. And after this border, we have the margin. Margin is again on all the four sides. So if I have given margin of 30 px, if you see here, 30 px here, here, 30 px here and 30 px okay so that is all about the box model property now after this box model property let us have a styling of let us do a structure of styling of list so we have h2 ul and li 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 into 6 so this is the structure of a list so we are going to design the list now. So we have a index, and here we write class. Uh, class. Let's say. Let's say. Let's say. Let's say. Head. And here, if we put hash here. Functionality will not work. So, can I use red, green, blue, and orange and purple? Now, see how this thing is going to happen. So, we have this pairing class head. After it, we have a H2. After it, we have a UL. You will have LI and LI have anger tag. And anger tag have the control as right. So let us put, let us do the standing part. 
so we use dot head and in this dot head we first create a border of three pieces x colored with a color with the border radius property of let's say in pieces the edges will get corrected and uh, one second i just need to comment out this thing because it is showing the color in h2 which is the index now one thing one more thing i can have here if i use text transform the upper case things will get capitalized <clears throat> or let me use one second let us check out And so on to capitalize. First letter capital is here with the help of the text transform capitalize. Now after that, uh, 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 so if I okay, so we have a dot head H two. We shift take this to the center. Is in the center and uh, <clears throat> dot head dot head h two and uh, and 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 we have a u l. This u l we use some heading of zero and and we'll use a list style to none. So that the dots will get removed and content shaped towards the entire left. So after that, we have dot head and um, we use we target the anchor tag where we use text trans uh, text text decoration to none with the color of the font to black and we use some margin in the bottom dot head li margin in the bottom of it with 10 px some spatial get created and uh called our bottom property will use of it say 2p it's sorted with Oh, because we're going to increase this thing by 20 px. So it good, it looks nice. And 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 uh, padding in the left of it, uh, 20 px looks nice. So that is how it goes like that. So this is all about the styling of list. Not a styling of list, we have the next thing which is called as a styling of form. So we have the styling of form for the form we need to create a form so let us create a form first and in this form we have a div and a label so form will be for the label input type tag id is not required so this is such a and a class here class on gp and okay and here a parent class we use uh my for my form now let us replicate this thing okay. so this is about the structure now 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 we'll fill it so we have the label for Name name will be after that we have label for age input type will be number and name will be age. We have the label for email and input type will be email and name will be here email so this is a simple form 
what I have created. Now after this thing, uh, now after this thing, after this thing, after this thing, let us pick up each and every style and we do the style. But before that, let me have a input style commit with the value as So this is what all about the structure is. Now, okay. So now what we will do, we will pick up this parent class and this child class, this elements. Okay. So we have here dot my form. Have uh, some padding of let's say 30 px and uh, uh, border not a quite and short form dp input display of block. So it aligns everything in a block and already we have imported a font. So let us explore that also. So this is how it looks like. Now after that, we again target dot on GP. Label will be the font size will be check only to P and uh, have some margin top, let's say 20 PX. Oh, sorry, this will. So, okay, so input, let us have some padding of, let's say, in PX, so that box will increase, and the border radius property of, let's say, 10 PX, they just will really get curved ones. And what else we can have here? So we can have uh, increase the width to let's say uh -huh, seventy percent seems seems good and 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 here let me have uh Margin in the bottom of let's say 20 px. Uh, seems good. Now, let us style the button here. This button, so input type submit value submit. So, let us have a class f. No, sorry, btn will be the class now. Dot btn. And we have some height of let's say 40 bx and a width of let's say 60 bx. Let me make it to 80. What a radius property of dbx. Which turns the button into a oval shaped button. Okay. And, uh, and, and, uh, you'll have a background color of it, say, light green and font color will use a blue. So, this is what about the styling of. Form. Now, after this styling of form, 
let us switch on to the next thing which is called as the alignment and centering so for this thing again we have a structure so this structure This structure will be of relative uh, to a pair. Pair will have a Lorem content. H2 will have, let's say, H2. We will have a class of Lorem. So let me replicate this thing two more times. And here we have H O H P. So H2, H3, H4. Now, after this thing, what we are going to use it, we are going to use the available width. We are going to divide it equally into three. So we have a dot block. We'll use a load left property with the width of uh, 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 33.33% there is how it, there is how it goes like that now after this thing after this thing after this thing let me do one thing let me disable one. There are two paragraphs, so we again use and we need to have a change in the class also. So I use display, I use a block of one in the second one. So for this thing, I got block of one will use float top right with the width of uh, 33.3. No, no, no. Here we use. 50% and uh, here also we use this tool 50 or oh, 50% oh, if I use this again to left so there is how it now now it is actually looks like identical now after this thing, what we can have here. So let us have a adding of, let's say, can we PX and a border property of CPX. So let's do it. Okay, now if I replicate this thing here and want to have the things identical to the box sizing. Order box and primarily hello group box size thing order box. So that is how we can put the boxes identically. Okay. Now after this block, after this block, um, next is what? Okay. So let us see the next thing, which is called as the positioning. What is positioning in CSS? So in CSS, there are four ways in which we can position the things. Okay. So first one is first one is static. So what you are currently seeing here? Okay. What you are currently seeing here means the header, the paragraph, the boxes, the borders. All these elements, all these contents are usually using the static or the neutral or the normal positioning, which is called a static positioning. So there is nothing to discuss on static. Next one is the relative. So for relative, let me have a structure here and we have a structure which is called dot p box. And in this, we have a H1, another we have H2. So, this is the structure. Now, if you see one thing here, one second.
<clears throat> okay, so now if you say one thing here, uh, H1 will always be above H2. Okay, so that is fine. Now, one thing to notice, one more thing to notice here, with the help of positioning, we will shift H1 below H2 with the help of positioning relative and positioning absolute. So we have dot p dot p dot p box and uh, we use uh, let us create a box with a width of uh, let's say eight hundred pms and a height of eight hundred pms and border of four p solid with so this is the structure what we have created and um, after that we apply the position absolute on H1 if I put position absolute and from the top, I want this to 300. Px down and from the left, let's say 200 p. You know, see, HTML is below CSS. You know, also for the second element. We will use position absolute from the top, uh, not from the top, let's say bottom, bottom, let's say 200 pH. And from the right, let's say 400 pH. So it goes like that. Now, if I use position, relative see as soon as i use the position of relative what happened the parent of this bob of the parent the parent changed from the top of the page to the top of the border with the help of this or you can see if you see like this all both the things are actually aligned in a single so that is how it goes like now after this positioning let's one minute let me have a uh, already i have downloaded some Images yesterday, once again. Okay, so no need to worry. We'll download another image. So we have the folder here and in this folder what we do, we create a new folder with the name of and in this images we move the image what we have downloaded just now. So now what we are going to do, we are going to fit this image uh, 
uh, but it is not coming. Okay, okay. Some part of the image is coming. Okay, so let us use some background, some piece of property to actually fix it. So we'll use so background size power. Okay, so here it goes like that. So, but currently, what is happening? Only this particular part of the image is coming here. So we have put this thing with the help of background size power. Now, after this thing, let us check out some pseudo classes properties here. So, okay, no, no, no. One more thing we have the last which is called as uh, position fix button. Fix and uh, we'll use uh, class FPTN. Now, we will target this FPTN class as position fix. So, we have dot FP. FBTN position fixed and I want this to be fixed from top, let's say 400 P X and from the left. Well, what I so this is the button which is fixed here only. So, this is all about the Positioning. Now, after this positioning, let us check out the next thing, which is called as the pseudo classes. So, what are pseudo classes? So, pseudo classes. So, for this thing, again, we need to design a structure. We'll have a UL LI into 6. And again, uh, OL LI into so we'll use here one, two, three, four, five, six, and replicate this here. So let's say nine, eight, seven, six, five. Six. <clears throat> so this is a structure. We very well know how it comes in UL and LI. We'll have a class here, class of let's say pseudo P S U E B O, and uh, next will be that class P S U E B O pseudo one, pseudo and pseudo one. Now, how you are going to use the what are pseudo classes? Pseudo classes are nothing but it is an extended way to target the classes and elements. So we have dot pseudo L I for child for child the uh, 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 um. One second, some tapping mistake. We got it. Okay. Now, second. If I want to target the last child, I can have a Okay. Now, if I want to target the child number four, so what I do here? Some background color of let's say 
ठीक तो विद इफ यू पुट एनी थिंग हेयर यू विल गेट दैट चाइल्ड हाईलाइटेड एंड फॉर द सेकेंड थिंग सेकेंड थिंग इज यूज वेन वी हैव सम Lines and we want to color it. So we use this thing. The ordering, even functionality. So that is how it goes. Like that. So with the help of the pseudo glasses. you can target and with the help of second one you can color it when you have some hundreds and thousands of rows okay so let us take a break of so uh, 5 minutes okay 5 minutes break 5 minutes break will resume and Eleven twenty eight with PFS box. Box. Five minutes break. So let's do my leg more game. See you guys. Okay. So let us take a five minutes break.
Okay, okay. So uh, while the medium people are coming, let me have the structure for the CSS flex box. So for this thing, So this is the structure and uh, one second. So let us start with CSS flex box. So what is a CSS flex box? So CSS flex box is nothing but a flexible box. Flexible box means a box which is flexible enough for you to fit the items inside it, either horizontally, vertically, like that. Now, here, if you see, Flexbox is a display property which helps to make your web page responsive and attractive. Okay. So, let us see how we are going to implement this. Flexbox property. So we have to have our structure. So this is a structure, and we'll use a link tag and let us go live. So this is the structure. Now, there are some rules in Flexbox. So this is the parent class container. We have a common class box for all the items and a individual class for individual items. Now, let me have some styling. So there is, uh, this is what the structure looks like okay now after this thing let us apply a display of flex so if you see if you notice one thing here flex box properties will only will always be applied to the parent class okay this is the parent class container and we apply the property to the parent class. Now, as soon as we apply this property, as soon as we apply this property, what will happen? So, entire thing will align in a single row. Okay. Entire thing will align in a single row. Now, why it is happening? Because Flexbox, as I told you, Flexbox property will be applied in a row. And as soon as we apply it, everything inside that, inside it, every item inside the parent container will align themselves in a row. Row means from left to right. So let us see how we are going to implement this thing. So now see, see. So as soon as I applied, I applied display of flex. So everything gets aligned in a 
single row. Now after this, let us have a border property of let's say five px all it with black color. Now see what is happening here. We have a we have given border. Now if I use a line of flex, see. As soon as we apply the inline of flex property, the border ends where the item ends, or we can say vice versa also. The item ends where the border ends. So if I now after this thing, going back to now, as soon as I use a uh, height property, so height. Vertical height, we have taken it, and we have a property which is called as the x direction to so by default it is row only, row means from left to right. But if I change this to column, see what is happening, things gets aligned in a column pattern. Column pattern means from top to bottom. Now, if I use here column reverse. So the items gets reversed, it will show in a reverse order. And we have similarly, we have a row reverse also. Uh, oh, one second. So we have the things here in a reverse pattern means one, two, three, four, not in the form of two, ten. So this is how it goes. Like this. Now, what is happening here? So if I use the plus action column, so by default, there are two types of axes. First one is the main axis and the other one is the cross axis. So when the flex direction is row, the main axis will be from left to right and the cross axis will be from top to bottom. Okay. But when I use the flex direction call, okay, what will happen? The main axis will be from top to bottom and the cross axis will be from left to right. Okay. So this is what the axis will reverse when we change the direction of flex direction to column. Now to this thing, we have the next thing which is called as uh, flex wrap. So flex wrap again we use a dot dot box with the width of let's say and 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 we have oh sorry. We have a display of left, a border property, a height property, and a width property. Now see what is happening. So as soon as as soon as <clears throat> I apply a flex wrap property of wrap, what is happening? See. So as soon as the available space will be equal to 300 px or more than 300 px the one item gets shifted in the top row. so that is possible with the help of flex as flex is a display property and it helps to make the web page responsive so that is how it is working like that and after that if i fix the bit to 33.33 It will remain as it is. No change will happen. And uh, if I need to have a border inside it, so I can use the border 4P. I just draw a little bit blue color. So this blue color border we have created very easily with the help of 
border property which we applied to the items now after that uh after that if i need to have the oh so if i want to change the order so if i want to change the order okay so we have a property which is called as a flex box or the ring property and i think this i give one second here order to let's say what happened this item number three get shifted at the after item number four so if i give the item box of order of let's say <clears throat> seven so it is it shifts after item number three but if I want, if I wish to fit a item five between, so I write five. Now, the item number five is between item number six, sorry, item number three and item number seven. So how it is going to happen? It is going to happen with the help of the ordering property. So the logic. <laughs> In ordering flexible certain properties, the least will come first, the highest will come the last, and the middle value will come in middle. So that is how it goes like that. Now, after this thing, let us check out the next thing in Flexbox, which is called as the alignment and centering. So for alignment and centering, we use the justify content property. So we have uh, and we apply uh, uh, justify content property with the value as text of start. By default, it will be in the start only, so no need to worry. Let's off and now see what is happening here. By default, items are aligning in a row pattern. Row pattern means from left to right. If you have center, things will go like that. And after center, if we have the space around, so around the space gets created see and if i have the next value which is called as the space evenly so evenly the space gets distributed and have the space between so between the item space will get allotted so that is how it goes like that now if i wish to change the font has to be P X. What is happening? And now what I what will happen? I apply, I change the main axis and cross X. So flex direction, flex direction to column. Now we see the vertical movement. Vertical movement means from top to bottom. So again, we'll apply the same set of properties. Uh, but we'll have a minimum height of let's say reach. Now let us start applying these properties. So by default, it is in a flex of start only, so no need to do anything. Flex of end. We find everything in the end. After the start end, we have the center. Uh, 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 space around is evenly and space 
between. So there is how it is going to have like that. So the same, the same, the set of values are same. But here we have used it after applying the flex direction column. So flex direction column will reverse each and everything. Now after this thing, let us apply the next thing which is called as the align item property. Now align item property actually is the opposite of justify content. Okay. Now let's see how we are going to use the align item property. Okay, coming back. And uh, we have a display of flex and a border property, height property, we will use a border of the phone be x tall and width. And a height of let's say 100 feet wide. And a line item property starting from now the movement will be in a different direction. So start and enter stretch. So these are the properties of align item. Now we have one new property of align item which is called as a baseline property. And in this base line, what will happen? The items gets aligned in a line in a pattern where the base of all the items is common. So we focus here. The base of all the items you see is common means the base is same for all the items, even if it is of different shape and different size. That is how it goes like that. Now, after this thing, let us check out the next thing in Flexo, which is called as the align content property. Now, for the align content property, what we do? We fix the width to Three point three percent, and uh, here we have a display flex, the border property, a height property, and the item which from baseline not required. Okay, so now we apply the flex tab property here. This is what the structure looks like. Now see how we are going to move these items. So if I apply here, page C align content to Start, so it is in the top and enter edge place around place between and space even. So these are the same set of values for. Align content property. Now, after this align content property, we see the next property which is called as the align self property. So, the align self property, align self. Align self means it is applying, it is apply, it applied to the child. Okay. Because what is happening here, the <clears throat> uh, the child. Now, what is happening here? Uh, 
the rules or the properties which we are applying gets applied to the whole of the items inside the container okay for all the items inside the container the set of properties gets applied but if we want to align a single item from that particular item we need to apply the align self and justify self property on the child so for this thing we are using the align self and justify self property so let us apply this particular thing how we are going to use it so 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 Display flex, border property, a height property, a wrap is required with a bit. Okay, so now what do you do here? You will pick up. These boxes and we have implemented the padding property which identifies that what we are going to use. So we have aligned cell. Uh, align self to and and self to paint us align self to start, but for this to start, I need this. Uh, 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 uh. I need this to find. So this cart will come here. So this is all about the justify self and align self property. Right? Now next thing, next thing we see here, we see in flexbox is the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis property. So here. <clears throat> uh, let me make it five. Simple flex after this flex. Okay, what we do, we have a dot box. Can you? Flex of one. What is happening? The leftover free space is being utilized by item. Okay. So that is the beauty of flex of one. But if I use, if I apply for the inner box two. So twice of the space is being given to the item number two. So that is how it goes like that. Now if I change this again to two, now see what we are going to do. So now we are going to see the flex grow, flex shrink and flex which is property. So for the box one, Two. If I use here flex, um, here also flex. 
surface basis. Okay. So what is happening here? Now we apply flex basis. Flex basis means the default size of the item. Okay. The default size of the item before remaining space is distributed. Okay. Now after that, we see the next thing which is called as a flex group. And also we apply flex of grow let's say one so now flex grow means how to distribute the free space between the item okay like in above situation we have a lot of free space so we give two times of the free space to item number one and one part to item number two now let us see the flex grow flex grow means the ability of an item to shrink in the proportion when less space is available. Mostly this is used. I want this to shrink more means three times. So when less space is available. So let me make it less. So see, even though one have the highest number of highest value of space, but it shrinks more as compared to the item number two. Now, uh, now let us take uh, another break of under 10 minutes. And after that, we will start with the PSS flex block. Oh, great.
ओके सो आई होप एवरीबॉडी इस तरह एक वीडियो में अपना प्लेसमेंट स्टेट्स करो प्लेसमेंट सो लेट अस रेज्यूम विथ So let us resume the today's session with CSS grid. So CSS grid, CSS grid is the most demanding thing here. and uh, it help it it actually it is needed to make the web page responsive so when there is a flex box available here what is the need of grid okay so uh, the need of grid is because there is a limitation with the flex box the limitation is that flex box actually works in one direction okay but grid works in both the direction both the direction means it divide whole of the page into rows and columns okay so it divides whole of the page into rows and columns so <clears throat> it works in both the direction so for this thing uh one second let me have the setup first So this is the setup. So we will start with the grid. So what is a grid? As I told you, grid divides whole of the page into rows and columns. Okay. So so let us see how we are going to. implement a grid property the cesl grid property so for this thing we need to have the structure a separate structure and here one more thing so we are going to use the output of grid in the firefox developer edition so one minute so there is a specific reason why i am to think this to the firefox developer edition because as i told you every browser has some limitation so chrome does not supports this particular functionality what that is available in firefox developer edition okay so let us see how we are going to use it so we have our structure like that One minute. So this is the structure. Now, Control A, Control Shift P. Format selection things get aligned in a beautiful manner. Now, after this thing, let us see how grid is going to apply here. So, as I told you, grid divides whole of the page into rows and columns. So, we need to have this thing here. We need to declare the grid. So, as soon as I have declared grid. A thing will happen. Why a thing will happen? Because as I have told you, 
grid divides whole of the page into rows and columns. So for this thing, So for this thing, one second, we so for this thing, we need to declare rows and we need to declare column. So let us declare gtc grid template column so we declare two columns 200 px of one and 500 px of other so we have declared two columns you now see what is happening here <clears throat> two columns we have created first of 200 px and other column of 500 px now second one we have the gtr grid template rows so uh we have the 200 px of first row, 100 px of another row, and 300 px of another row. So what is happening here? Two columns, three rows, but we have total of 10 items. So in this particular scenario, okay, in this particular scenario, if you see here, it is not possible to fit 10 items here where we have a structure of six items. So for this thing, what we are using, we will fit only the six items, but what for the seven, eight, nine, and 10. So for last four items, seven, eight, nine, and 10, based on the size of the content inside it, the space will be allotted. The space will be allotted. Now we have a property which is called as a grid cap of if I use video of 5px, this bottom property gets created when we are using a grid gap property of 5px. Okay. So after this, uh, 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 let us see the next thing here, which is called as the grid auto. But before going to that, let me tell you the tracks. What are tracks here in grid? So if I do the inspect part, uh, uh, one second, okay. If I do the inspect part, and if you focus here, so there are two types of tracks. First one is the dash one. Second one is the dotted one. So these dashed tracks, these dashed tracks are basically the explicit tracks and these dotted tracks, these dotted tracks are basically the implicit tracks. Okay. So one second. Now, how we are going to apply it? So, implicit tracks, implicit tracks, these are dotted tracks are created because we have, because they are created by the grid system and explicit tracks are created because we have declared grid template rows and grid template columns. So, now for these 7, 8, 9, and 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10, we have a property which is called as a grid auto flow property. And if I change this to 150p grid auto now this 150px space will get allotted to these four items. Okay, so as far as concerned, where there is a scenario where items are running out of the structure, what so far we have prepared, 
So for this thing, we need to have a structure where the property, the value which we give under the grid auto row property gives, or I can say allot to the items which are coming out of the structure. Now, after this thing, let us see the next thing, which is called as the auto flow. What is auto flow in? It is grid. Now, if I create a new item, what will happen? So it will gets it will gets placed below item number one because here we have the columns part. But if I want this item to be created by the side of item number two, so we have a property which is called as a grid auto flow. If I change this to uh, see what will happen, item will get created by the side of item number two. Earlier, what will happen? It will get created below item number one. But as soon as we apply the grid auto flow to column, what will happen? It will get created by the side of item number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now after this thing, let me have a bigger structure. So here we have around 15 items with a common class here. Now I use a display of a grid with a grid gap of, so let me increase the space to 20px and here we'll again declare gtc in a percentage form. Now see what is happening here. So 100 px is the available screen size. But after this 100 px, what is happening? If I, okay, if I put this thing here, okay, so 100 plus 20 px. So, 100 px, 100 percent is the screen size plus 20 px. That means 120 percent. So, what is happening here? This particular column, the right side of the column, gets stuck or it's touching the horizontal bar. Sorry, vertical bar. Now, in order to overcome from this particular problem, we have a solution. We have a unit which is called as the tab R. So for this thing, we have 200 px and 150 px and one. Now, see. Okay, so what is FR? FR is the free space left after the explicit width. So this is the dash tracks after the space free space is the explicit width space and it is being utilized by the FR. So this is a unit which is called as a free space. Now if I have here so twice of the space has been utilized by the, by the last column. One part of the free space has been utilized by the second last column. 
and this is 150 px and this is 200 px now after this thing if i use here auto auto so what is this auto auto means depending upon the size of the content inside the inside this uh, cell the space will be allotted so if i increase the space if i increase the content more space will get allotted so that is how it goes like that after this thing let us apply the uh, uh, repeat functionality so repeat two times of two times r and again we in the last we use one or auto 150px, 2 times of 2fr means 2fr, 2fr and 1fr. So when you use auto with repeat functionality, it becomes very, very, very effective and very powerful. Now, after this thing, let us see the next thing here, which is called as the sizing of grid items. But for the sizing of grid items, we have to have the change in the structure. So... So we have around 30 items currently with a common class and a separate class. So what we are going to use it. So we have a grid template column with a repeat 5 times of 1fr. Okay, so 5 times of 1fr column repeated. But and for this item number 9, we are going to do something different with this item number 9. So with this item number 9, short item number, uh, uh, I think, short item number 9, we will change the background to right so that you will easily notify what is going to happen here. And with the width of let's say 500 feet. So here what is happening? We have increased the width of item number 9. But this item number 9 is actually disturbing the whole of this setup this item number nine is disturbing the whole of this setup okay it is disturbing the whole of this setup so for this particular thing we have a functionality which is called as the pan functionality so what we do is we use gc the grid column it is pan of two so here, without disturbing the rest of the column, okay, without disturbing the rest of the columns, the desired space has been given to the item number 9. And similarly, we can have this for row also, so GR, grid row with a span of uh, 3, so 3 row merge together and results in a single cell with a span of two columns. Now here, if you see, if I want this to start from a particular column and to end with a particular row, so I use VCS grid column start. I want this to start from two and at five. Uh oh, the P grid column and two five. So T it starts at two and ends at five. So if you see here, this is how it goes like that. Similarly, I can have this for 
for row also. So for row, what is happening here? We again use the same structure. The structure will be like the grid row start from three and grid row end to six. This is how it is going to utilize this particular thing. Now, after this thing, now see how beautifully it actually paste, it actually aligns themselves with the, with the only use of grid row start. So, if I end grid row start at 3, so 1, 2, 3, start. Four, five, six, and for column. One, two, one, two, start and add five. Three, four, five. So before the start of five, before the start of six, it actually ends. So that is how it is going to happen. <clears throat> now, after this thing, there is one more shortcut if I put here. Oh, uh, GC, grid column 2 of brick 6. So start at 2 and 6. We are uh, 1 and 5. So start from 1 and it does it for us. So with a single line code, we can perform this operation very beautifully. Okay. Now, after this thing, now after this thing, we will see the next thing here, which is called as a auto fit and auto fill property. One minute. So for auto fill and auto fit, auto fill and auto fit property are almost same, are almost same. But in order to understand the difference between them, so we need to have a change in our structure. So okay, so auto fill, auto fill, auto fill property tries to fit as many as possible items in the same row without moving on to the next row. So, okay. And it is very big thing for a responsive design where items reorganize themselves. Okay. So, let us see how we are going to do that. Now see how we are going to check this thing. So we have a display of a grid, a grid gap of 20 px, a border property we will take care of 4 p black and a grid template column with the repeat property. And as soon as I apply auto fill with uh, let's say 150p. So what is autofill? Autofill tries to fit as many as possible items in the same row. See. Without moving on to the next row. So 
this is auto fill now after this auto fill let us check out the auto fit okay auto fit so how we are going to use the auto fit for the auto fit property let me reduce the items of all Okay, uh, so we have here I remove it. So here, how we are going to use it? So for this particular thing, we apply the auto fit here at one fifty px, and for the item number four. Okay, for this item number four, we use G C E grid column and two minus one, and again I change this to auto fill. Okay. With the help of this auto fit property, you will be very easily able to design the navigation bar. Yeah. Where you have some home products services in the left side and uh, find the let's say feedback contact us type form in the right side so this you can very well very easily create with the help of the auto fit property so as, as i've told you auto fit and auto fill are almost very same and uh, uh, this is how you are going to write it now after this thing let us check out the next thing which is called as the min max now in this min max we have a uh, different structure So the structure will be having uh, four items on second year. Okay. So this is the min max container and in this min max see how we are going to implement it. So min max let us see how it, this is happening here and this will be the main max container with a display of a grid a grid gap of 20 px a border property and with the grid template column with auto fill of one let me change this to 100 px no see what is happening these items except goodbye are, are, are fitting are fitted here perfectly but this goodbye is not properly fitting here. So for this thing, what we are using, we apply a min max property where two types of case will be given. Okay. So either it will use one FR or 150px but that all depends upon the uh, 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 one, two, that all depends upon the space so we have given two type of space and based on the requirement it can take automatically so that is how min max features will work fine now after this Thing. Let us see the next thing here, which is called as uh, the grid template area. Okay. So for this thing, I have structure here. The structure will look like that. 
Now, here. See the structure. The structure says, I am the sidebar one. I am the sidebar two. So this is the sidebar one. This is the sidebar two. This is the footer. This is the footer. And this is the center content. Okay. And this is the sidebar one. So that is how it goes like that. Okay. Now. Now, 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 let us go into design this thing. So we have the parent class container here. The same type of structure we are using. It. Now what, what we are going to use is, so we declare the GT grid template column with one FR, span FR, and one FR. And after that, we have the next thing, which is called as the template row 150 px so this is how the structure comes like that now <clears throat> here it is showing that i am the f bar sorry i am the sidebar one then the footer the footer needs to be placed here sidebar will come here Sidebar 2 will come here and this will be the center console. So we have here grid template areas with sidebar sidebar 1 and then by two okay now similarly this structure is same for the second part so we will replicate it uh -huh. okay now see the beauty of firefox developer edition it will automatically tell us that where which content needs to be fit. So it is showing us that footer comes in the last. Okay. Center items will come in the center. And these are the side parts. So now what we are going to use it, we are going to align the items here. So for the footer. For the footer, we use a grid area of and for dot item one, I think, item one, we have a grid area of in bar one. Let's look at it for item two. We have the sidebar. No, we have this thing as a content. And for item three, we have the sidebar. So this is how we are very easily we can fit or we can place the items with the help of our structure so that is how it goes like that now after this thing we see the next thing here in 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 in, in cases grid which is called as the legendary masonry layouts so what is this legendary masonry layout so this layout in this layout, we have around 70 items. Okay. So, so we have a display of grids. 
a grid gap of 23x. And after that, what we do? We apply GTC grid template column with the repeat n times of 1fr. So see how beautifully, without doing anything, the items get played accordingly. Now what we do? We add some irregularities here. Irregularities means with the help of the span functionality, we have added or we have increased the size of the item. Okay. So now with the help of a single code which is called as a grid auto flow, dense see with the help of this grid auto flow dense, we are going to place the item very beautifully in the page. But there is one problem. If you read the sequence, one, two, three, four, five. So six is below one to five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, sorry, eleven, twelve. So here you can place the item very well. But the sequence is not guaranteed. Okay. So that is how that is going to be here. So the beauty of this layout is you can place the items here but the sequence is not guaranteed so that is why it is being called it is being told that when you do not need to when you do not need to uh main uh manage the sequence you can use this legendary masonry layout okay so uh, is the display grid work similar to display flex uh, flex actually flex works in one direction but the grid grid works in both the direction so in flex if you want to change the direction we need to declare the flex direction column we need to change the direction of the flex but in grid, grid actually works in both direction and both are the display properties. So is the grid display grid works similar? To? No, both works in a different pattern. Both works in a different pattern, but both are the display properties. So this is the basic difference between them. Now, uh, one more. Okay, so now let us see the next thing in CSS, which is called as the uh, alignment and centering. So we have seen alignment and centering in basics only. Also, we saw in uh, we saw in flexbox also, and we saw in we will see in grid on grid also. So let us see how we are going to implement that. So for this thing, there are we see alignment with the help of uh, okay. So there are. So in the alignment part, we have justify item, align item, 
justify content, align content, justify self, and align self properties. Okay. Justify, justify actually we align item in row axis and align. Aligns items in column axis. So that is how it goes like that. Now for this, we need to have the change in the structure. Or I guess this structure will also work a lot. So we have we have a simple of display of a grid grid cap of 20 px and VPC grid template column it's a big and kind of um, okay. so here Okay, so now the the moment. So first one is justify. Now see how we are going to. Right. So we have that justify item. So JI justify item right. So here the movement of the item will be the start one. Everything will be in the start. Okay. So for this thing, if I use the next and see see the item moving. It is in the end. Now press start and we have the next. Or let me change the dot item side down white. Now Start and center and so oh, oh. so start and center and space. So these are the four values. Now after that, we have the next thing which is called as the align item. So align item also works on the same. We have the align item, but for align item, we need to declare the PPR. Grid template rows. Repeat five times of one hundred. And for this thing, align item. Okay, so align item. Alright. Now see how the items are. Right, but do one thing. Let us reduce some items. Start and. Enter. Yes. So these are the four values of align. Now after align item, we see the next thing which is called as the justify content. So for justify content, we actually have to change the structure. So for the struct and for this well content, the value will be start and center space, space around space between space. Event. 
So what we do, we have the structure display of grid, grid cap of 20 px, a border property we will add here. Model property with template column with repeat five times of let me change this to 100 px and with template rows five times of 100 px. Uh, justify item align item and you will see uh, justify and then whatever it will in the start only and. Okay, so start end. Enter. Fetch. Face around. <clears throat> Is between is evenly. So these are the seven values of justify content. Now after the justify content, we have the next thing which is called the align content. Okay, so align content aligns the items across the column. So we have the same thing. So we use the and for align we disable the okay. So we have here at Let me have a height here. So eight of five hundred px a border property. Get template column with repeat and. Uh, And content start and enter fetch is around space between its face. So these are the seven set of values, how we are going to implement that. Now, after this thing, we have the next thing, which is called as the uh, justify self and align self. So for justify self and align self, justify self, the same set of four values, start and center and stretch. So in justify self will be applied only on the items. So, so one second. Um, the attendance link has been shared. So I will show you on your screen. So I request you all to please fill it. We'll hold the session for a minute for you to fill. Once you fill it, please reply in the comment section that you have filled it. Please fill the attendance forms. Once you have filled it, 
this is the second attendance form there will be a total of four attendance so once you fill all the four then only you will get the participation certificate okay and uh, second is once you fill this attendance form this is the second attendance form once you fill this attendance form please reply with confirmation in the comment section Once you have filled it, please confirm me in the comment section. Okay. Okay. So Javi, click. Okay, great. So let us continue the session. So mm -mm -mm. okay. So we will see the next thing, which is called as the justify item. So justify self. So justify self will apply on the item. So for this thing, we pick a item. So we pick the item number four. Here we change the background color to let's say and I and justify self to start. And uh, okay, now let us see the align cell. How we are going to use the align cell property? So, for align cell property, again, we need to uncomment this. So align align cell but um and enter so again, these are the four values of align self property. So now let us have a lunch break. Okay, of 30 minutes, we will resume with Java script. Let's pick up 30 minutes. We'll resume at 1.30 p.m. with JavaScript.
Are you able to hear my voice? Hello? Okay, so just a minute, we will start our session with the uh, JavaScript. Uh, let me take my live chat. Okay, guys, uh, I think hope you have get an insight about the HTML and CSS. So now we're going to see the next, it's going to be four and a half hours. We're going to um, work on JavaScript. Only. Okay. So we're going to see about that and we're going to cover whatever the essential things that is necessary to get work with JavaScript and whatever the doubts that you're going to have in your mind, everything that we're going to speak up and uh, is going to cover all the basics and all the fundamentals, which all are the things that is necessary to do uh to understand javascript and do some work with javascript we're going to cover it for the next four and a half hours okay so if you are an absolute beginner you don't know anything okay so everything is fine uh we don't want to worry about anything so even we don't know nothing about javascript that is fine okay so if here we can cover everything okay each and everything that we're going to cover it okay from what is javascript to how can you use it and what are the things that javascript is can going to do and everything that we're going to discuss it out uh, but still that is uh, this four and a half hours is not only the requirements okay so you just want to learn much more things also so at the end of the javascript class i will tell you what are the things that you can learn okay after completing this book and what are the things that you can learn also it's it. so advanced to masters what to do next to do yeah i surely tell about that if you completed all this these things one means i just tell about that one okay so yeah we will i will tell at the end of the meeting okay so because uh, we will cover out all other basic students also and after that uh, i will give you an uh general structured plan that what you can follow after completing this okay okay your voice with small disturbance is my voice is disturbed is anyone having disturbing with my voice just a minute Give me a moment. Is it clear now? Or is it clear now? Can you able to hear without any disturbance? okay okay no problem the we will start and i think everything is here now okay so at the end of the workshop that i will tell you that what are the things that you, you want to focus further okay if you want to further get into javascript and you want to learn much more things okay and this workshop if you don't know nothing about javascript okay you are uh, just a beginner that you want to learn something like that and this workshop is for you this four and a half hours you will get all the basics to what are the things that you want to learn with that you go you will get it okay yeah 
okay okay so let us start with the class very fundamentals to we going to cover it okay so what i going to do is uh, just a minute let me remove this one okay so first we create a folder okay i think uh, you can able to see the screen right multiple screens are coming uh, uh, in your browser right so it will be come uh, i will come and see all your comments you can interact with me and whatever doubts that you are having in between the class you can ask with me i will clear, clear it out okay if you have any uh, like uh, doubts that uh, you want to conclude later means you can ask it later but if you have any doubts regarding the concept that while i'm teaching that then you can ask in that time i will tell you to that okay so fine so yeah we will get started so i just minimize the screen here we will create a folder going to be a new folder i just name it as name it as javascript okay. and inside that only we're going to create whatever things that we're going to create so let us open it with the vs code i just going to open that with vs code that's it and i hope you know how to handle vs code and basic things about html and css if you don't know about basic things html and css you joined in between the live class i highly recommend you need to know about html css before getting into javascript okay so here what i going to do i just going to create two separate files for html and css okay let i create this one. just increase your screen okay so i just going to create an html file so i just going to name it as index.html okay and let us create a separate file for css style.css and uh, anyone tell like let us make this section more interactive so whatever doubts and whatever things that you want to interact with me you can able to you can just ask it in the chat and i will interact with you okay tell me one thing that why we need two files or oh, we have inline css we have internal css we have external css also then why we are uh, preferring that index.html in a separate place and style.css in a separate place why we are having this kind of different different files why we are having that tell if you know the answer tell it in the chat box i will tell the answer later a little bit okay so now i just going to create an another file that is for my javascript okay. if you find the answer why we have different different files for each and every uh, text so then you will find out why we need to create a separate file for javascript also okay so that's what it is if you know the answer tell it that yeah that is fine uh, we will go into connect each and everything why i want to create and separate file index.html file is there style.css file is there and i can able to write css in html itself right so inside html we have internal css uh, we have inline css in that html file itself we can able to create it right why i want to create a separate file and why people are telling that creating a separate file is in recommended way why that one yeah so the main thing is the code pollute right so that is the main answer so whenever you are there is a principle is there so the principle of distribution so where uh, you create a separate file okay so the whole ideology is uh, very simple whenever we are writing code okay whenever we are writing code so it's going to be rewritten so we're going to write it again why because we're going to face error and we're going to correct it so the possibility is how structure we are writing the code so that principle of distribution what it is saying whenever you are keeping things separate okay so if you have problem with your css then you will go for css css file you don't want to touch your html and uh, javascript file right so that is why we are creating this separate separate things and remember this this uh, principle of distribution is uh, like whatever the update that you are seeing a library a framework and everything right so everything is based on this foundation we think about we have uh, already have html css and javascript why we need react why we need angular why we need these things right so each and every library and frameworks are built under the principle of this principle of distribution so they will just reduce our work in how structuring and how to debug our code and when we are facing some error how can we rectify that error okay so everything is comes under that so that is the main thing okay so let me see that uh, we have an index.html let i create a basic boiler template I just named it as TWD. Say TWD works. Something like that. Okay. 
And let us create an action and give an universal welcome. Hello, world. Like this. Let me save it. Let I open it with the browser. Open with live server. Okay. So it is going to set up the server for us and it is going to open for us. Okay. So this is our application. Okay. Let me keep like this. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, uh, I have a separate uh, CSS file. I just going to say body. Here I just going to mention it as background color as something aquatic white, some color like this. I'm going to save it and you can see that there is no changes whatever i am doing here in a separate file that is not affecting our index.html file okay so why it is not affecting because we need to link that css file with our .html file so to linking that what we will do well we have a tag called a link tag so that will link our css with our html make sure that you are giving the right name in this right file name in this section okay so that's it once you save it Whatever you are going to change in this file, it is going to applicable in this index.html. Okay, clear. But why I want to link this file? Because what is the purpose of CSS? We know the purpose of CSS, right? So the purpose of CSS is to change the style part of an HTML. It's like alignment, it's like the colors, uh, the user interface, and how it need to look, right? So basically, it's all about how to create a user interface. So HTML is like very lame program that we just it will produce the structure of it and with the help of css we can make beautify it right so i need to link my css with html then only the css will know what of what body i need to select from which html tag and what is the property that i want to change right so it will know it. same like that here we have javascript so here we know the purpose of what is css it is going to change the style part of it so we can just directly link with html now we have javascript I need to know what is JavaScript first of all, right? So what is the purpose of JavaScript first of all? Then only I can able to think about whether I can link it with HTML or I can keep it separate or I can link it with CSS, what I can do with it, right? So we need to we need to think about that. So first we need to find out the first, the first question that comes to my mind. What is JavaScript? The purpose. Okay, what is actually JavaScript the purpose is very important if you are taking a text file. So if you are learning React, understand why React is built. If you understand why React is built, then you probably know where are, where you can use the React is. Understand why Node.js is built. Then you can understand all the syntax and concepts that is created in Node.js. So first thing, first of all, what about the language that we are taken? If you are using it in a particular field, understand why it is built for that particular field. So now the question is why i need javascript and what is the purpose of javascript so this means like without javascript can we able to create a website is it possible anyone tell without javascript can we able to create a website is it possible tell it in the chat box if you know the answer without javascript any javascript can we able to create a website or anything like that okay tell it in the chat box so this is the first question. What is JavaScript and what is the purpose? What is the purpose? So for that, I'm just going to take my OneNote. I used OneNote a long back. Let me take it. Okay, still some of some of them out there. can create static website, but without JavaScript, no function. Yeah, true. So can we able to create an entire web application without JavaScript? I'm asking like uh, the end to end. Can we able to create it? A full stack application. <laughs> can we say like that? A full stack application. Can we able to create it? Say it all the things. Let me check with my pin. Okay. Okay. Fine. 
No, no, no. Then think about JavaScript was introduced only in 1996, right? It was introduced in 1996, it's just 26 years old. Think about the website that is be built before 1996, right? Before 1996, how websites are built. There is website is there, right? So we using internet uh, in 90s itself, right? Not 1996, before 90s itself, right? So even uh, during the after independence also, we have the we have Google's and we have websites and we have so much things. So what about that websites? How they are how they are created? If no, without JavaScript, we cannot create anything. How they how in the olden days they created it? So how it is working? So the answer is without JavaScript, yes, you can able to create a website. Okay, you can not a website. You can able to create a stack. In this stack, you can able to create it. But you need to understand what problem that we are having during that time. So then only we can able to understand what's exact problem that JavaScript is doing. Right? Yeah, PHP. Understand Facebook is one built without JavaScript when they it was introduced. Okay. So after JavaScript, it is changed. Okay. So Without JavaScript, we can able to create web application, but there is a problem is there. Everyone is facing a problem and that problem is solved by a man that is called uh, so the Brendan Eich. So he created JavaScript. He solved that problem and everyone has accepted that. And now JavaScript is the web, like the king of web. We can, you can call it a language of web or anything, anything like that. Okay. So first we need to understand how website will work. Okay. Then we can understand what web. Uh, what problem that it creates then we need to understand what problem the javascript it solves so then it, you can able to understand okay this is the thing that we need to create it and still i can able to see some of the peoples who are uh, studying not development so studying some other uh, analytical works so they don't use javascript in their uh, application because they need only the functionality they don't want uh, uh, the conversion they don't want the dynamic city so they don't want it so they don't use javascript they will learn some other backend programming language and they will create a website and they will submit their portfolio. Okay, so still that, still it is there. Okay, don't confuse without JavaScript, you cannot create a website. Uh, you can able to create, but you need to understand what problem that it will cause. So let me go and decode that one first. Okay, so it's all about JavaScript introduction part. Okay, so we're going to cover it. So first thing what I'm going to cover is going to be like uh, if you want to create a website okay or and web app okay so what is the difference between a website and a web application simple a website is nothing but it is a static simple pages like for example you can say consider a websites they don't have more functionality okay with the help of some apis you can be able to create it for example a newsletter website and blog website and a portfolio website and simple uh, like um, what can I sell you? Like some uh, advertisement websites, something like that. Like that. So simple, like company sites. You can go for companies and you will do it. You don't do some extraordinary things though that there is no complex server activities, which will, it will not. But when it comes to web application, it will do lots of progressive work. Okay. So for example, you can take Netflix, you can take Amazon, you can take um, like um, Hotstar, you can take YouTube. They are web applications. Okay, so both so to create a static simple website, a simple block website for a person, and also an entire software a web application for a person, both needs two things. One is everyone knows it. I know that. Okay, one is going to be front end. Okay, and another one is going to be back end. That's it. So this is the category to create. If you want to create a web application or web, uh, website, you just have two roles. One is the front end, the person who creates front end, it called as front end developer. And another one is a back end, the person who creates back end, it's called as a back end developer. Okay. So let me create, uh, let me understand what is the working procedure of a website or a web application. Don't care about my lettering, so okay, because I, <laughs> it's always look like that only. Okay. So first of all, if you have a client. Okay. For example, let us take you have a client and the client want a website. Okay. Let us take a YouTuber who want to create a website and he needs to convert his con content into a blog website. Okay. So what we need to do it. Okay. So if he approaches any agencies, okay, or you want to create your own agency, how the what is the workflow of it? To right now, I just want to create a blog website. 
So this is go for a designer, first of all. Okay. So the designers are the ones who design everything. Okay. So they will design the UI. So what is UI? UI is nothing but user interface, how the website need to look. Okay. So they have several uh, principles like how, what is the exact button size? What is the font size we need to use? What is the images that we need to use? And what all are the content that we need to use? And everything that take care of uh, not contents uh, like how the website should look. Okay. For example, uh, a website is there. Here is the hero section, nav bar. And here we have a drop down and here are some categories, some blocks and here it is going to be the footer. OK, so this is designed by the UI. OK, and here are some research part will be there. That is UX. OK, so the UX people is basically do the research. So they will they know like uh, where exactly the button need to come. What are the color theory that you want to use and what are the content that you want to write to get the attention of it? And what is the pattern that you want to use? OK, so you, you are writing each and every uh, letter so they are they each and everything right now everything is create a website just by cloning and they creating it but as a proper website that we need to understand the customer's mood and template and based on that you need to create it okay so those categories it comes under ui ux and that part that designer will take space this is the research part of it okay so this person will research your website continuously even you have some website okay so and you have some customers they are using the website so this person what we will do he will just analyze the customers and he will understand the problem okay so what the customer is facing in the website and uh, more or less the software is get updated okay based on the research that they are founding they will based on the research they are giving the data based on the data they are giving okay so that is why the software is not built only once it is built each and every day okay so we are just launch it and then the upgradation starts okay it's never going to wait so that is why it's still if you get into a product based company then you are safe because you have, you have only one product then your company is running <laughs> every time that you they are going to run it so you have a secured uh, a jobs guarantee that's what it is okay so this is the first thing so once here the ui ux designer could design everything so they will use several tools like figma and so much of things okay so and uh, they will create a website okay once they created a website not by using code using the tool called figma here you can able to see the figma things right so this is the tool they will use it and they will create it okay once they created it they will give it as a fig file so that is like an image okay so how the overview of an image a graphical representation of how our website is going to be look for the block it is an image then this is hand over to the front-end developer sometimes first it will go for the back-end developer and then it comes to front-end developer it is varies okay so but this is a flow and once the front-end developer what he will do is he will take up this image developed by ui ux designer and he will create it with the code okay that the browser can understand okay he will create the user interface with code that the browser can understand okay so that is what the front end developer work. and that is completed then it will go for the back end okay like i said sometimes it will go for back end first and then the front end developer do the work sometimes it will go for front end and it will comes to back end later also it depends upon that sometimes both of them work same okay so but basically this is the categories okay so the back end work is all about so the first of all what is front end front end is going to be the user interface they are creating here it is an image right so they are creating the user interface of a web application basically they use html and css to create an application that's what it is okay and back end development is all about logical logic okay so front end development is also called as client side work so what does it mean by client side work why they are called it is a client side so because what is who is a client a client is nothing but a person who use the website or who takes the website right so he is going to be the client so how it looks for them okay for example you are using youtube right now right so how the youtube you are the client for youtube right now so how the web app is looking currently now that's what it is okay so they develop a website for the client okay so how it is looking that's what it is that's what the user interface and the tech stack and client side developer and logic is all about how a website that web app or website that how it need to function okay so it is called a server side work okay why it is called a server side work because we don't know how the functionality is working right so whenever we are searching something okay whenever we are searching something okay so there is a there is a thing called server okay it will be there 
okay so it is depends upon what kind of website that you are using each and website each and web, each and every website have a server okay so if you are using google google have their own server if you are using my blog website i buy some servers okay i have my own servers so if you are creating a uh, your website you have to create a server okay so you just want to buy a server or you just want to buy it that's what it is the server is nothing but it takes up the request for example you are uh, requesting to learn about javascript okay so it will takes up the request okay right now let us understand google you have google and you are searching something that is the request and the request is taken by the server and the server goes for the google database google database and it will finds out the matching keyword the request that you are asked for and the server is the only one who takes the information and it is who is traveling through the internet the help of all the wires that is connected and it, the server is only taking go there okay and once he found the matching keywords what are the websites that are indexed in google related to javascript what is going to happen the server takes up the request that is the response and then it is going to send it to this google again and the google will change the user interface according to the response so this is the workflow so this is the logic a request server taking go for the database take the response and again send the like send the response to the user interface change the user interface okay that's what it is okay so this is going to be the workflow and that is work is called a server because server is involved in it okay so this is the workflow now really in this way. okay now we understand the workflow right so basically we have a html file and here you're going to have a google search and here you are searching something that is taken up by the server so which server here you are searching it in google the google server is going to take and the google server go for a place called database and that is going to be the google database okay and it is going to search for the request that is taken from the server once it get matched okay an entire html is created that html is going to be the response and in this html only you can able to see all the javascript indexed uh, website that is indexed first page indexed in your uh, google it is going to be there that response is taken by server again okay and the response is sent to now you have the search page right so that search page is changed into you search page like the javascript what are other website that is having it is going to be searched so this is where the html css will be like this is how the website, entire website and web app will be work and the functionality it may be changed here we are getting something and you can give some information the functionality will be changed okay so basically this is handled by front end and then back end right so the front end to create the html the user interface of google search so what we need so this is also a user interface this is also user interface so at the end the client is going to see only this two part right where he is searching and he is getting this is what he is going to see and all the hidden part it is called as the back end development the request and response this is the client and this is servicing okay so the client will not see it okay so that is what back end front end okay so to create a work with front end to create a user interface what client sees you need a text tag called html and you need a text tag called css and to create a back end whatever you need you need server okay because we know the server is the one is taking the information where can i use that you need to create a server you need to buy a server okay so the servers or sell by server providers you just want to buy it and we need an programming language okay to communicate with the server okay there are so much of programming languages that people say now php is the old one that is created php for backend so let us take that one a language okay so and we need to have a database and you can see that in our uh, cycle there is a place called database where is what it is so this is a storage unit where people will store their information like whatever the information that the, we are giving your email password and everything here it is like a good on where we will store everything okay so whenever the server take the request it comes to the database and it will be work with it so for example one of the common database that i think i have it here uh, it's going to be mongodb you can see here mongodb right so the mongodb is an it's a database okay so where you can see the information 
for example let me show you some data how the data are stored a bit of example so it the database it is in some other place but here you can able to see it where you can able to create it for example let us click my i think uh, yeah you can able to see this is how the database are stored you can see the username i stored some uh, email and you can see the passwords i just private protected it okay by using some authentication so likewise it will be stored okay so let us see the user data user info i think uh, i deleted everything okay so yeah this is how the database it will be stored there are some place that you can you need to buy it and here we can able to see it and we can able to access it uh, based upon your authentication you can able to access it okay so that's all other things okay so this is all other things uh, we need it actually okay so what are the things that we need to create a backend a server we need a language and we know that we have a php and a database and we have a storage it will be there that is javascript then so without javascript i can able to do this entire process right i can able to create client side work i can able to create html css without javascript i can able to create i can learn php is much more simpler much more easier it is built for backend so it is everyone can learn it so backend development i can able to create it so where we are using javascript there is no javascript is here right so what is well, actually what is the what is the thing where we are using javascript it is so now we have a problem right so first of all we have everything perfect so everything is working perfect and what are the things that is fine right so what is exact problem that we are having here is so there is a thing called dynamic this is the main problem every uh, like every websites and during that time 90s everyone is faced so what is mean by dynamic okay let me show let me tell about that for example if you are using okay if you are using facebook or if you are using um, amazon okay let us take like that think about that if you used your email id and your password and you entered into facebook or amazon or instagram and whatever it is it shows information that you are really interested in understand it shows information that you are really interested in, right for example uh, if you go for amazon it will show you the product that you recently searched for it right first of all as that's one and it will show you instagram what who are you following it will give an information according to it right so that is what dynamics it is building website for an each and every individual not for an one website that will be same for everything <laughs> okay so it is it is not possible so it is not also it is frustrating right so, so that is why each and every website it will be changed it will be adapted to the user needs okay so simply here you can understand the workflow is we have a html file and we will receive an another html file that's what it is so whenever you are doing some interaction okay whenever you are doing some interaction with the with website it is going to create and separate html for it so let me give you an another example this workflow is fine and th that is i appreciate it and this is uh, very good and this is how everything web every website is will work now let us understand we have an website okay so we going to have a button that is having price okay and if someone clicks this button okay it need to show the price of my subscription okay like a fade in animation or any other things okay so it need to come down okay need to show it right now it is not that it is hidden okay so this information is hidden if someone clicks it then only this particular uh, information will be visible to everyone okay so without javascript if you want to create this thing then what you need to do is you need to create a file called html and let me name it as price dot html like this okay and what if a person clicks this website if a clear person clicks this uh, what this button then what will happen is it will go for it is taken by the server it will take the request and it is go for the programming language will handle it it is go for the database not it is not actually going for database it is going for uh like the server only okay so where our files are getting stored okay it will look for a file that is right now i need with file right so it will check for the file that is price.html and another file 
like let us say i say two this is with price so now this file is taken carried by the server as a response this file is again come to the user interface and now it is going to show so this is hide here if you click it the server take the request go for the place where the files are getting stored and it will check the file whether we have uh, like if the button is clicked what is the route i need to go i need to render this file so this file it takes this response and it is going to show you the file with price tag so this is the workflow so whatever it means means so whatever the interaction that you will make you click a button you mouse over it you double click it whatever the interaction that you going to make it is done by it is taken care by the server it is taken by the server and the server is need to travel through the internet okay travel through the the big wires and it just want to connect and it need to come up here and it, it need to show a result to you so that is what you need to do even for creating a small drop down you need to create a separate index.html file even for you if you have any uh, like any small change for example you have an advertisement here if you click it it need to disappear so the same process a page with html a page without advertisement a page with advertisement a html page a page without advertisement html page this is what you need to work with so whatever the thing whatever the interaction a website event event is nothing but the interaction that you are making clicking double clicking and everything if an event is occurs it is taken by the server and the server is going to produce a new html for you okay a new html for you in the database okay so that is what the entire thing that's how the entire thing will be work okay and this is the problem remember that in olden days we will get an error called server not available right or network bandwidth reached right so these kind of issues that we will face why because day to day the people are started using the internet more right so think about that each and every time you have a website that people are visiting one like one crore people are visiting that but for these small small interaction the server is going coming going coming means then think about your website how it will be slow and how what it will be happen so that is the one problem that we are having so to changing the user interface instead of creating each and every file okay each and every file each and even the event is occurs each and every time we are creating it okay so how can i change it in that itself without communicating with the server to stop the server give some rest for the server that's what it is so that is what the world is going heading to the serverless environment is also getting to okay so that is what the problem we are having okay for small small interaction we need to go and the server is getting tired and it will be there okay still now also you can able to see that uh, whenever the amazon and the flipkart allowances to big billion days or uh, the offer time okay so the people started to use the website a lot you can able to see the server not available crashes and so much of thing now you can able to see it right so what javascript is essentially doing simply right now the olden days is if you have a html file you will request this and we have a database or the place where the files are stored and if you request a new html file is produced okay that's what it is that's what it is but right now with javascript there is html and css will be there html and css will be there and if you want to if you want to request okay and it will go here and you can ask it here and initially the first time it will produce us an html page for you and if you want to change anything within that page itself and here we have html and css right if you want to change anything inside that page itself well the javascript will takes place it it will creates this it will creates it will changes the particular part of the website i just want to only change the hero part it will change the particular part of the website with the help of javascript we don't want to go for the server each and every time okay so simple example is you have a store okay and let us imagine you are going for a store okay a person is going for a store and a person is there and he is called as the server and he is the owner of your website 
okay so right now you are going for an offline store so the named person named server the owner is there and you are going and you are asking for some medical some it is like a medical shop okay let us take it is a medical shop okay and you are asking for a medicine okay showing and you are asking something that is the request that you are making for the server and the request is taken by the server and imagine that whenever a server is involved it takes some time okay so that is why in your website the page reloading will happen it takes some time to go for and travel through the internet and it will comes the result and it will show to you that is why the reloading will happen okay right now you are asking something the server takes some time and he is taken all the tablets and he is giving to you okay so the request and the giving is called as response the response is received but right now you are asking some additional information about the medicals that you are getting for example which brand it is created what is the expiry date for it when i want to eat it and what are the things that i want to do before eating this whether it will be work or not any person that will like that you are asking some more more information okay so now the server only need to take the request okay and he need to do everything he need to do everything and remember that the server is a kind of slow person he need to do everything with a certain delay okay so that's what it is and imagine that the person is taking some time to explain all the th all those question and you have 20 questions and right now only the server answered one question what about the remaining 20 question and all the 20 questions are very simple questions but the server need to take time because because of uh, let us consider the server is a kind of a old man he need to recreate it and he need to tell it like that okay so the server every time you are asking a request the server need to travel through the internet and you need to fetch the response and need to give it to you like a postman he need to do it right so that is the problem with that so right now you can see that there are a lot of time wasting happen here so if there is a time wasting is that means the conversion of sales is no so in internet speed is what you are converting into the client to a customer or everything okay so right now that very good another example is you have a shop that we have a shop and you are going for the shame shop and here you are asking for the owner so the person is the he is the server okay you are asking for some things okay and he has taken the request and it is he is searching in his uh, medical shop and he is giving the response and now you are asking 20 plus additional questions but now he is the owner he don't want to answer it now here we have a salesperson and this salesperson is do whatever the client needs okay so he is there for whatever the client needs and he knows the everything about the medicals that's what uh, the thing is he's an end guy okay so he's an end guy not unlike on that uh, persons okay so the server it takes some time here he will tell that okay so this whatever the question that you are asking here answer it in one second like this so now imagine where the conversion rate will be high a website with this like a shop without salesman a shop with salesman right everyone prefers shop with salesman right so that salesman work is what javascript is doing in our website so whenever you are this one point you need to clear it out that's what clear and that is javascript so whenever you are going for a website okay you are asking something the request is taken database is taken the response is given that is absolutely fine okay so now when you want to make a small changes like showing the price tag uh, removing the uh, some particular tag or removing creating a drop down creating scroll to top so those kind of things we don't want actually the server to trouble to create an entire new website so we create a website with the javascript so the javascript takes care of all the user interface changes okay so it is take care of all the ui changes so if you want to change the website you need to you need to see the drop down you need to see the occurrence you need to see some uh, you need to place some item to cart you need to see the price if it is doubled you need to see you need to change the website to dark mode you need to change something like that if you want to create something like that the user interface so whatever the user interface changes that you want to make everything is take care of by javascript and whenever you want the real request okay so you want to get something from the database during that time you can ask the server to go okay now the server is free 
Tesla is completely free. Whenever it wants it, it will go for it. And remaining times, JavaScript will take care of it and it will do all the work. Okay. But before, whatever the interaction that you are going to, you click it, double click it, whatever the interaction that you are going to take, everything is handled by the server. So that is why the server error, server bandwidth reach, and everything, so much of things will be there. But right now, the interaction and changes will take care of by the JavaScript. And the server will do what exactly server when whenever the database involvement, whenever the request post request or get request, whatever the HTTP request involved during that time, the server will be takes place. Okay, clear. Let me give you an example. Okay, a real example. So I just going for a website called Triple. Okay, so this is the website for the UI UX designer, like the graphic designer. I say that so during the starting time, you can see a website. So this is the website, okay? So a modern website, it is look neat and clean and everything, okay? So this is a modern website. And you can able to see this kind of changes, right? If I click it, what will we need? We know that it is disappeared from our website. And if I click it, it is disappeared from our website, right? So now what I'm going to do, I just going to right click and inspect queue. And you can able to see what is, uh, the entire div that is containing this one is going to be this. This is the entire div that is containing everything. So you can able to see when I make a click, you can able to see some blinking will happen. If I click it, you can see some changes will happen and it is suddenly disappeared from here, right? And you can see here, here also. So yeah, we will go for here. I will show, I think no ad is here. Mm, let us go for Wikipedia. Go for Wikipedia. Uh, no, no, we don't want it. Okay, you can see here this filter, right? So I just go here, and this is the example that we speak about. Someone clicks it, you need to display the price tag. So here the drop down, like a uh, filter tag. Okay, so remember that I just go and right click and inspect the queue, and I just go into scroll down. Okay, scroll down it, and you can able to see. I just want to get the entire div that contains everything. You can see this is the div. It is a form that is containing everything. Okay, you can able to see here. So now what I'm going to do, once I click it, you can able to see a div here. This is the div that contains everything. You can able to see a property of CSS is applied here. I think uh, you are not able to see it. Just a minute. You can able to see property of CSS style display none is applied here. So now if I click it, you can see the display none is changed to display block. You can able to see the CSS here. Just uh, see this is the element that containing the style. If I click it, Display none. If I click it, display block with some animation. You can see then some animation delay and everything will happen. And here you can see if I click this popular and go for the inspect icon. And if I click it, you can see drop down menu open. There is a class is added that is open. And if I click it again, you can see that open class is removed. If I click it now, you can see the open class is added. Not only the open class is added for open, there is a style is also created. Mm -hmm. Let me inspect this one. You can see this is the one. And uh, here, if I click it, you can see the classes are getting added and the classes are getting removed. You can see uh, data drop down state close. And data here, you can able to see nothing. If I click it, data drop down state open so what how what is changing here the css property is changing here right so display none display block the css property is changing here and now not only that you can able to see this one uh, explore the world of leading design and portfolio if you click it you can see trending animation motion graphics and 3d design if i click it you can able to see the trending brand design identify logos what is happening here well, these things are taken by JavaScript and this is what JavaScript is doing. Okay, you can able to see there is no server involvement. How can I found if a server is involved? 
only javascript is doing that you can able to understand first of all it is working that fast and if a server is involved you can able to see the page reloading will happen for example if i click it you can see there is no page reload is happened so which means the no server is doing that okay if i click this one there is no entire html page is created so it is changing that page itself right so the front end and something in front end it is doing that but you can see if i click the sign in you can see the page is getting reloaded and it is taken me to the different page so you can able to see it is asking or sign in and you can able to see the mm -hmm. user login and it is asking some different things to sign in for us right and this is taken by the server right so that is why it is reloading okay so because now come to this point whenever we need the server we during that time we will go for the server and you will ask for it and during other times if you want to make the website to be interactive those things will taken care of by this javascript okay clear so that is what javascript is doing so javascript is basically built in 1995 it is built for javascript is built for front end so that is why it is called as first of all javascript is not a programming language it is called as client side scripting language client side scripting language what is the difference between a programming language and a client side scripting language so programming language can able to do more compared to scripting language okay so a programming language is that it can able to create it can able to work within the backend to communicate with the server it can able to speak with the computer it can able to create a web application it can able to do their analytical works and whatever things it can able to do lot and if it is a scripting language it can able to do a particular task okay it is meant for a particular task and that particular task is making the website interactive interactive so why we want to make an website interactive because we need to give rest for our server and the first one so how it is doing it is manipulating html and css by manipulating html and css if someone click the button change the property of css display to none so that suddenly it is disappeared if someone click that button then go and change the content of the html tag inside the content just change it so that is what the html will do okay so that is what javascript is doing so javascript is a client side scripting language and it is going to manipulate html and css and what is css css is nothing but it is a style component that is used to change the user interface of the html and what is javascript javascript is used to manipulate both html and css so for that i need to link my javascript file with my html so the css is also linked with my html if i link my javascript with my html then i can able to access all the html and i can able to access all the css with the help of html and css if i can able to access html and css i can able to manipulate them so for that only we need to add our javascript file this one what is javascript and purpose we need to add our javascript file with our index.html file so to adding this index.html file that is a recommended way to add javascript at the bottom of the body tag but you can able to add it in the head tag too but it is recommended to add it in the bottom of the body tag the reason is so the too much of you add it in your head tag it slow down your face first of all and second one is we need to run javascript after html and css is executed properly so that is why we are adding it in the bottom but still you can able to add it in a head tag with using some uh, operation called defer okay so that will allow only html and css after the javascript code will run but the simplest way add it in the body of the bottom of the body tag so adding script tag just just want to add javascript you need to add script tag in this src you need to connect your javascript file with your uh, index.html you need to tell what is the javascript file i just say dot slash you can able to see all the file listed here the file that i want is app.js okay so now if i save it okay so now if i save this file now if i save this file now our app.css file is successfully app.js file is successfully added we need to identify whether our file is successfully added or not right so for that what you need to do is you need to work with the developer tools like browser developer tools okay so the browser tools web apis or anything just go and right click the inspect and you can able to see all the browser available tools 
So one of the thing is element. We know what is element it is. You can able to see all the HTML tag and what is the sales part of it and everything. So right now what we need is we need this console. So console is the place where all your errors will be shown. For example, if I write something like this, if I save it, you can see we are getting an error and background of red color is considered as an error here. So we are getting an error and caught syntax error. It is telling that unexpected identifier something like you are asking for it. It is it is telling that something you written, but I am not able to understand it. That's what it is. Okay. And you may asking why this is not throwing error. You can enable to notice the double slash, right? So the double slash is basically called as comments. So comments are nothing but uh, that who, but that line, whatever you are writing, it will be ignored by the browser. The browser will not read those lines if you added comments. Okay. So in HTML, we have comments, CSS, we have comments. Save like the JavaScript, we have comments. And that is what the double slash. It is called a single line comment. The comment of this, now if I save it, you can see the error will not die. Okay? Because this line is not read by browser, it is going to ignore it. Okay. So if you want to check it, whether your app.cis file is linked with uh, this file, write something like this. If it is throwing error, then obviously you, your file is successfully linked. If it is not, then you need to think about that. Why it is not throwing an error? Because I'm writing something fishy that it is not throwing an error. You need to just think about that. Okay. So this is about the JavaScript introduction part. So this part, this browser to console, right? So we can able to access this console inside our vs code okay how can i access it so this console first of all we need to understand what is this console the console is not only the place to show error but also where we will spend our entire time with javascript with this console only so whenever we are writing some code we need to check whether the code is written in a correct format or not right we need to check whether uh, everything that if i write a single line of code i need to know whether that code is worked or not for example if you type body background color is equal to some aquatic white and i know if i change it to some other dark colors if it is changed i can able to understand okay so it is working it is changed i can able to understand what if it is not changed it is not showing then i can able i'm not able to understand whether it is in proper format or alignment right so that is what i am asking whenever we are writing some code in javascript we need to know that whether the particular code is successfully written or not right so that is the one thing that we need to do Right. So to find out that only we have this console.log that is called as debug. So console is not only the place for errors. So whatever the value that you are giving it will show the result of that value. For example, I asked about three multiplied by five. It is giving me 15. So it will whatever you are giving inside the console, it will throw the result of the console like result of the particular operations or anything value that you are giving. So you can able to access this console inside this file. How? help of method the default method that is available in javascript that is going to be this console.log what is this console.log will do means whatever you are giving inside this two curved braces it will be reflect in your console for example i say 3 multiplied by 15 and if i save it you can see we are getting 45 you can see we can able to access this console.log here. So with the help of this method console.log, we can able to debug the code, whether a particular line of code is written correctly or not. If any error, if any place there is an error is there and you don't know what is happening, then you can put this console.log in each and every line. Okay. And you can find out what is the exact error and what is the mistake that we have done. So meanwhile, we will work out with this and uh, we will discuss about what is method also. Okay. I know understand this is some default code that is available. Whatever you are giving inside this console.log, it is going to be reflect in your console. Okay. So just understand that's itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So clear right now. I think everyone is clear about what is exactly JavaScript and what is the problem that JavaScript is solving. Right. So now we are getting into the interview questions. Okay. So now you need to prepare for interview. This is the foundation that you need to know how JavaScript is doing. And another question will arise, right? So what is that question? Why only JavaScript? Why not Python? Why not PHP? Why not Java? They are not involved in client side. Why not? Why only JavaScript? Then what is the special power that JavaScript is having? Right? 
How many of you have any doubt? Like, why Python is not in front end? Python is in back end. Why it is not in front end? Why PHP is not in front end? Why Java is not? We are not able to create a website dynamic with uh, Java. Why? Why only JavaScript? How many of you have this doubt? Tell it in the chat box. How many of you have it, this doubt? Just tell it in the chat box. Why only JavaScript is ruling the particular front end? What about other? What is what about what? Because it is just a scripting language. A programming language can do much more than that, right? So why they are not doing that, but only JavaScript can able to do it? If you have the doubt, tell it in the chat box. Okay. Let me tell you that one. Okay. So the secret is secret why only JavaScript for front end? Why not Java? Why not Python? Why not other language can do it? Only right now Python only getting into front end. Okay, but not that much that JavaScript can do. Okay. The secret is yes, you have doubt, right? The secret is well, it's not JavaScript doing that. It's all about your browsers are doing that. The Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Opera Mini, and your Brave, whatever the browser that you are doing, they are only helping JavaScript. Okay. JavaScript is not something have special powers that can able to work with in the front end. The only JavaScript. JavaScript also not able to work it in the front end. Okay. But with the help of your browsers, JavaScript can able to do it. Clear? It is not, it's, there is no issue with Python, there is no issue with Java, there is no issue with uh, PHP or anything, any other languages. The thing is, JavaScript is also not understandable by the front end, like the browser, it is not able to understand. But the browser, they created something to support your JavaScript language. So the browsers are doing that. The secret is all about the browsers, not the language. Let we discuss that one. And I promise you that within 15 to 20 minutes, the theory part will over. We will start to code. Okay. So yeah. I can yeah. So what is that? So basically, what is happening? So if, if you take a programming language in the back end, okay, in the back end, we have server, we have database, and we need a programming language. And a programming language communicate. It's create the server, communicate with the database, what it need to do, what it need, don't want to do like that. It will tell that it speak with that. It is common. That is what programming language is, right? To speak with the computer and speak with that uh, browsers and everything. So servers and everything, right? It will speak with that. Right now, JavaScript, how, how JavaScript can able to change the user interface. But these all are not able to change. JavaScript, how can it doing that? How can it able to change the CSS? How can it able to see, change the HTML? Right. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is just a file. Right. It's just a code file. We're going to write the code in English. Right. We're going to write it. Is that this language is understandable by the computer, the browser? It is understandable. No, it is not understandable. Right. It is not understandable. Then how JavaScript is able to change the user interface? Well, JavaScript changing the user interface with the help of the browser. So it speaks with the browser and the browser is coming to come and this browser is doing the help for JavaScript and JavaScript changing the HTML and CSS. That's what it is doing. But the problem is the browsers are known only zeros and ones. They are computers, right? They only know zeros and ones. And here JavaScript is a language. It's a code file that is in English. This is a problem with Python. Python is also a language that is in English. And also Java is also is a language that is in English. That is like everything is a language that is in English. Same like that JavaScript is also that that is also in English. But the computer and the browsers are not able to understand it. That is why Python is not in front end. Java is not able to in front end. But what how JavaScript can able to tackle it? How can do it? Well, JavaScript is not do anything. JavaScript is not understandable by the browser. So, but the browsers understand the potential of JavaScript. What problem that JavaScript can able to solve? Well, keeping the client in your browser itself is the key of any business. How many times and how long they are spending their time 
in your website then your business model is success right think about how many people are irritated when uh, you want to enter into a website and it is just loading it is not entering into the website and once you enter the website you are not able to perform uh, your clicking button that button is not working you will leave that website right well javascript is has huge potential in the browser is understand that so that is why it supported javascript okay so javascript speak with the browser and the browser communicate uh, communicate it is giving the indication and they are changing the html and css but the problem is the browsers are going to understand only zeros and ones it is in some other language so the language is not understandable by the browser then how it can able to communicate it so that is why the browsers browsers created their own translator that is called as javascript engine it will be present in all your browsers this engine is like a translator it will be present in all the browser all the browser remember that even you want to create a browser you need a javascript engine and what is the work that javascript engine is doing is it takes up the file of javascript and it is going to convert your javascript file into byte code or low level programming language simply related some syntax that is related to the assembly language like zeros and ones it is going to change it to that. okay so it is going to convert it if you have browser they don't have javascript engine those browsers still not able to access your those browsers are not able to understand javascript and the best part is we can able to see the engine functionality in our browser settings let me show you let us go for our browser go for our setting settings go for uh, privacy and security you can see site settings right just click here scroll down you can able to see cookies and data uh, don't want uh, cookies right now you need to see cookies bit later we see this you can see a special thing not python not java not any other thing javascript is here let i click here you can see two options the site usually use javascript to display the user interactivity feature like the video games or web forms they have written something and the default behavior of this particular site the google site is sites automatically follows this setting when you visit them here you can see we have two, two options one is site can use javascript and site allows like don't allow javascript sites to use javascript and site listed below or custom settings instead of default you don't want touch here you just go and change this settings right now i disabled javascript right now just simple the javascript engine is turned off that's what it is now if i go for any website let us go for uh, uh google map okay just go for google map and i clicking here you can see what we are getting when you eliminated the javascript whatever remains must be an empty page enable javascript to see google maps why so they are saying that you eliminated javascript from your website so i am not able to show google maps to you why just imagine google map is a web application right so the interaction that you are making with google web apps is huge like zoom in zoom out drag in drag out pinging and like so much of interaction remember that each and every time you are interacting with a website without javascript it is handled by a server if you zoom in the server need to go and produce a zoomed in photo if you zoom out the server need to go and produce a zoomed out photo remember that application will work fine <laughs> something like that it's completely not possible right so that is why they are telling that you experience a very bad experience and also the site is not built without javascript functionality so please enable javascript to create your files so they are just simply giving us a warning okay so that's what it is so now you know you can able to see this sign right so now if you allow javascript on www.google.com and i just click it 
Now, if you refresh it, you can able to see this interactivity. I am dragging JavaScript, zooming JavaScript, zoom out JavaScript. I just want if I want to pin some place, okay, JavaScript. And if I click this burger menu, JavaScript, close it, JavaScript, save it, JavaScript, close it, JavaScript. Everything is JavaScript is doing. Only during the site loading time, the server will need it. And other time when you are searching something, for example, I want to search Chennai. You can see the page is reloaded and it is produced in Chennai, right? And it, it is showing me the image of Chennai, right? In that time, we need it. Whenever we want server, during that time, we need all other time you are going to work. That all it everything is taken care of by the JavaScript, right? So that is why we are getting it. So there is no magic in JavaScript. The magic is in browser. The browser supported a created engine to understand this language, and they created a JavaScript engine. That is what the JS engine is called as. Each and every browser have their own engine. And based on this engine, JavaScript can able to communicate with your browser. There is no Python engine. There is no Java engine. Yeah, what is JavaScript engine? That is why Java can able to communicate with your browser. Okay. So that is the reason JavaScript is in the front end because the browser supported it. Okay. Clear, I think. Show. Yeah. Why not Python and other will not go with the help of browsers? Yeah, that's why because we don't have engines, we we need to translate your code, right? So we need to uh, like if you browser need to understand, then we need you need to convert your code into white code. So you need a compiler, you need a translate like either you need a compiler or you need a uh, like what you can say like uh, yeah, you you need a transistor or you need a compiler. So either it need to come convert your code into something mission understandable code. But we have only JavaScript engine. That JavaScript engine only converts JavaScript code. It is not going to convert your Python code. It's not going to convert your any other languages codes, right? So that is what the engine is doing. What is the engine? Engine is nothing, but it is going to convert your code. Okay. So basically, it, it has the in the engine, it has the translator and it has the compiler, and it is going to convert your code to a misspelled code, and it is the browser is understandable by that. Okay. That's what it is doing. But here, there is an another problem is there also. Okay. So remember that this question will be asked how JavaScript is working in the browser. It is be asked. But here there is a question. There is a very big problem is here. So that we, if we found out why Java, how JavaScript can able to communicate with browser. But there is a very big uh, issue is here. You need to understand. Okay. So if you understand that one, that's the final thing. Every fundamentals of JavaScript is covered. Let me see that one. Okay. So the issue is remember that. I have created a website. I created a website. And in this website, I use a JavaScript code. And here, if I want to if I want to use my JavaScript file, okay, if I want to this JavaScript code is need to display in my browser, okay. Let us take Google as my browser. Okay. So Google is going to be my browser and Google have their JavaScript engine. They created an engine called V8, one of the fastest engine right now available to convert your JavaScript code. So this is the JS engine. So what is happening here? Your file is taken. Okay, your code file, whatever the code file that you are giving. So your file is taken here and this is converted into a byte code with the help of the engine that is created by google let us say google created it and they converted it the byte code and they are displaying now they know how the file need to display it in google okay with the javascript let us say google map v8 is converting and they are displaying it in the google right okay so the same website if you want to search it in right now, you can see I'm using Firefox to display my streaming, okay? Because I want to handle Google browser, right? So same. Let us say if I have the same website, I want to display it in Firefox. Then what I need to do? They have their different engine. They have their different engine, and they that is called a Spider Monkey. The engine name is Spider Monkey, and that is created by that engine is created by. This engine is created by Firefox developers. So this engine is created by Google. 
This engine is created by Firefox. Okay. So Google created their engine according to their terms, their own, their own methodology, their own depends upon person to person, right? They how they are creating. And here Firefox engine is created by Firefox developer, their own developers, and so on things. And here, if I go and give the same code, this is also doing the translator, translating the code to bytecode. This is also going to translate the code. Okay, it is going to do it. Now I have a question is imagine the same like that you have thousands of browsers, like right? hundreds of browsers, and all the browsers have their own engine. Imagine that the translator, the translator, the engine that is going to convert your code into a bytecode. It is developed by different, different browsers, different, different developers, according to their own methodology and own functionality, they have created it. And I have only one website. I just want to run it in all the place, Google, Firefox, every place I need to run it. Okay. Can we expect what V8 engine is translated? Okay. For example, I say, hello. And this is translated into 0, 1, 1, something like this. Okay, it is translated. And same hello I am giving here. I just giving an example. If I give hello, both engine will do same thing. Here I giving an page of program and they translated into some bytecode. Here I am giving a page of program. Can we expect the same translated script? Both script will be same. Can we expect? Remember that this engine is created by different developers. This engine is created by developers and they have their own methodology, functionality and everything. This engine have their own methodology and functionality and everything. They follow different different methods to translate things. Can we expect the same input if I give to the same engines? Can we expect the same output from all the browser? Is it possible? Yes or no? If I give the same input, a device is created by different different developers. Is it provides that provides the same output? Hmm? You just want to you are going for a manufacturer and asking for a T-shirt and the manufacturer is uh, giving you a T-shirt for you. OK, and you are going for some other place and you visit some other manufacturer and you are asking for a T-shirt and he is also providing T-shirt for you. Can you tell me that both the T-shirts are in same quality, same price, same? Everything will be exactly same. They are going to produce T-shirt only. So can we expect the both the manufacturer are going to give me the same best quality T-shirt? Can we expect? Wait. Yes or no? Can you tell? Can you guess, guess, tell the word? Uh, like, can you able to understand? For example, and another example I can do. Like, for example, let us take mobile phone. Okay, mobile phone is common, right? So, what is the use of mobile phone to communicate with each other, right? And a mobile phone is developed by Apple. A mobile phone is developed by Firefox, uh, like not Firefox, Samsung. Okay, so can we expect both the mobile phone is going to work exactly the same? Because both are mobile phone, like that. The answer is no. Why? Why no? I need I need that one. Remember that, that. Let us consider the mobile phone as your engine. This engine is created by Apple. This engine is created by Google. Can we expect a translator to perform exactly the same when I give the same output? If I take a camera in iPhone, it gives me the same picture. When I take camera mobile phone in Samsung, it will fit. give me the same picture. Can you tell it? Yeah, sure. You, this this part is all about if you want to get a junior job, you need to learn these questions and everything. Okay, so if you that is like whatever we are seeing, it is around forty percent of your JavaScript question. Okay, so you will get it. Okay, and then we started to grow to code uh, so because this is the foundation. If you have the foundation strong, then JavaScript is very easy. If you don't have JavaScript foundation, if you don't understand what is JavaScript, then it is like an Harder and harder whenever you started to learn. Right. So can you uh, no yes okay no yes no yes
yeah. well, last time boot camp is just an uh, one hour boot camp so we within an hour we are not able to cover the javascript entire pack okay so that is what i am saying that's what we have uh, four hours four hours boot camp okay so this part is all about uh, four hours like the preparation from basics to that advanced concepts okay so if you are to create in depth concept you don't do, you need at least two to three months to cover the entire javascript okay so that is the franken proof okay so that's what it is and you need to spend at least two hours a day and you can able to cover uh, the entire javascript with 20 or 40 days like that you can able to cover it okay within an hour you want to learn javascript then i'm not the guy okay so and that is not completely not possible okay that's what it is so the answer is going to be no why because this is developed by different developers and this is developed by different developers and you can expect just imagine your javascript file will be work fine in google and uh, your javascript file will be work differently in firefox and some more behaviors will not work in uh, safari some more behaviors will work in uh, opera many like that okay you can able to see this and is it working is it okay if you created a website and if you created a web application and uh, you just want to uh, in google it is working fine and all other place it is not working fine something is not working some other javascript functionality it is not working is it fine for you answer is no right because i need to if i create a website or a web application it need to be work exactly same in all the browsers right exactly same in all the browsers right so how can i do this How can we do this? That is why we have Sigma script. Okay, so that is why we have this Egma script. So Egma script is very simple. Okay, Egma script is very simple. It is not an another name for JavaScript, or it is not JavaScript. Okay, so simply, simply JavaScript. Uh, here the problem is. Each and every browser have their different different engine, and those engine we going to have different that will be displayed in different different browser, right? So here, what Igma script tell us? Igma script is the rules and regulation, the governing body. Okay, is that rules and regulation the governing body for JavaScript? Okay, it's a rules and regulation governing body for the JavaScript. Simply what they say, okay, what they will do is how JavaScript need to perform in the browsers. So simply they have the rules and regulation. For example, if this is your input, if someone writes a code like uh, something like this, this is the input that you are getting, then you should provide this output like this. And whatever methodology that you are doing, that is up to you. But if this is the input and this must be the output, if someone using this syntax, then this is the output. So the Egma script tells that. Okay, the Egma script is going to tell that. So if this is going to be your input, then you need to produce that output. Okay, so that's what Egma script will do. Simply, it's like uh, what is the example i say manufacturing right so just imagine the government of india is ordered for the manufacturing industry okay and telling that if someone asks you for the t-shirt you need to prepare it with this cloth and you need to provide with this quality and you need to provide that right there so now you can expect the same result right so that is what it is we can say like yeah we can say the uh, structure of the engine is going to be behaved this right? But the functionality is different. Let me show you an image and I just going to show you. AS engine. Okay, everything is going to have the same uh, like function, but how they are created, it is different. Okay. So let me show you the image of a JavaScript engine. So basically, this is the JavaScript engine. You can see here. So your JavaScript is blurred. Uh, just a minute. JavaScript, JavaScript, this one, you can see this one. So basically this is your JavaScript code. Okay. So first, what is the functionality will happen is your code is taken and it is passed down. Okay. So your program will be run. 
So the program is going to be simply, it takes whatever the code that you have written. For example, you are writing, writing, I have a function. This is the name of the function and the parameters and the code to execute. So JavaScript once, this is the file. JavaScript once take the code, what it will do means it will broke down the piece of code into simple, simple things. For example, what is the keyword? So it will create keyword. Keyword is a function. Okay. Next, the name. Name is going to be name of the function. And what are the parameters? What are the parameters? And code to execute. What are the code I want to execute? Likewise, it will broken down into small, small pieces. And that is what called as passing down. Okay. And this, how it is broken down? So we need, we, the a program is returned, right? So that return program is different, right? In uh, Google, they return some different program. The developers return some program to get, get the information in passing down. They have returned a different program. So Firefox, they return different program. Like that, they will return. And once it is completed, now it is converted into AST, abstract syntax tree. And that is called something like DOM, like DOM tree, I think you may hear it out. And that, that is nothing but it will form a tree like hierarchy. So basically, a tree like hierarchy is a good representation of each and everything. Okay. For example, it is a function. Okay. Inside this function, we have the name and what is the code to execute and what are the parameters are available. Like that, they will form a tree like hierarchy. If this happened, this, that like that, it will form it. And then it will move on to interpreter. So we know that interpreter. So what is interpreter? Reading the code line by line. So JavaScript, initially it is an interpreter language only. So it reads the code line by line and it is going to convert into white code. So that is what zeros, ones, not zeros and ones, but something related to zeros and ones. So more related to low level programming language, it will convert it. But the way of how it is working in engine, it is exactly the same, but it is different how it is taking down the code and passing down and aligning things. This is different. This is different based upon who created the engine. The person who created the engine, based on that, it is going to be different. So who created the first engine? The person who created JavaScript, he created the first engine. Brendan Egg. And that engine is Spider Monkey. Right now it is used by Firefox. Before that, it is used by Netscape. Okay. So the Brendan Egg is created the first engine because he need to test out JavaScript is working or not, right? So initially JavaScript is like initially JavaScript is an interpreter language only, but technically now speaking, JavaScript can compile the code also. Okay, so that is whole different concept. Okay, so that is whole other different concept. Okay, so yeah. You can see course abstract syntax tree interpreter and you can able to see a compiler is also there but before that there is a bytecode is there and the compiler compiles the code and then it will be bytecoded. Okay, so this is a working functionality but how it is doing this thing? It is how it is created by different different language and created by different different developers according to them how they are taking the code and passing down is going to be there. Okay. Your duty, both of things, YouTube service, community, come on, TWD, professional service, don't mix two. So Ra Rashmi Singh, I'm not getting what you're saying. What, what mixing, I'm not getting that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what, this is what the interpreter and compilers and that, that's how the engine will do. Okay. It will be, uh, the functionality of things is going to be different, different things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is what everything and this Igma script, what it is right now, it is doing everything, right? So whatever the functionality that you are doing, I don't care. If someone gives the input and this is going to be the output, it will tell that the governing word. So right now, whatever the functionality it is doing within the engine, it is not care about us, but the input is this, you need to produce the output. So it will tell the browsers how they need to create the engines. But basically, Igma script is a standard and it is a governing body for JavaScript. How JavaScript need to be performed in the browsers. So all the browsers, all the browsers who are in the browser business, they accepted the Igma script standard. So based on that standard only, this engines are created. Okay. So based on this standards only, okay, so this is the input means this is the output. So I need to create it. And you may notice that Igma script have a lot of versions. ES5, ES6, ES7, ES8, ES9, like that, it has lots of version. And every time a new version is created, 
based upon the syntax and based upon the things they will update their engine because it, they need to understand okay this is the input so you are giving this input i need to produce this output and the engine is doing that so they will update the engine and there is a delay will be there if the version is introduced they will take some time to do something inside the engine and they will update it right so there is a delay will be there and that, during that time only you will see this this method is not supported because it is newly released uh, it, this method is not supported in firefox this method is not supported in windows like any documentation upset you go means you can able to see this notification okay because why because the engines are not updated to that syntax they are they are used to the, the old syntax okay so during that time only it takes some time to update it okay that is what igma script is right now we have covered what is javascript and purpose it and how javascript can able to communicate with the browser and what is browser engines and this igma script okay so these all are the concepts that it comes to the foundation okay if you cleared and done with this then that is fine and the core concept is js engine works okay so it is comes under the core concept how javascript engine is working okay so that comes under the core concept we will discuss that later okay, okay. so now we know that what is javascript and how it is working so now if i want to perform an action i want to perform an action what i want to learn so javascript for front end what i want to learn initially if you are a beginner what i want to learn you need to learn the basic concept okay plus okay and i need to learn the dom operation okay so dom operation what is this this dom is again supported by browser it is not something related to javascript it is supported by browser so this we, we see that like javascript communicate with the browser right so when someone clicks it the browser need to send some indication to the file right so that is what this dom is doing whatever the whatever the user change that we are making with the help of this dom only we are making it and the browser giving that okay so this what is the browser api also we need to learn it and the basic concept is nothing but we need to learn about variables data types loops and everything whatever the basic concept today we going to learn what is variable what is data type what is going to be a uh, loops what is going to be a function what is going to be uh, the another thing is going to be conditional statement so these are the basic concept and some other there are so much of this there and this is the most common basic concepts and when it comes to dom how to change the html changing the element changing html changing css adding class to html i removing the class to css and grabbing element from an html and uh, so much about the things we going to cover it here today and this is the basic front end concepts okay and uh, yeah this is what we going to see today and we going to walk in the practical code and we going to apply this code also okay once we completed that one what other thing that we learn when it comes to javascript also we will discuss okay yeah M. P. Abdullah. Okay, let me explain what is what is the issue with uh, Rashmi Singh and M. P. Abdullah. The thing is, the twelve hours bootcamp is for beginners. Okay, so the twelve hours bootcamp is for beginners who don't know nothing about it, who want to structure everything from it. Okay, so we are taking JavaScript class for four hours. Okay. and we are taking right now we covered all the fundamental parts and right now we are moving to basic parts what is the problem with that so problem right so who are not interested in learning the beginner things you can stay in the call and you can attend the meet and you can you can further with you can further proceed with it okay so that's what it, that's what it is we just mentioned that it is a 12 hours web development boot camp who are interested and you can able to attend it okay that's what it is we are not taking any advanced courses and we are not selling any courses here we are not doing anything something like that who are not involved in web development who just what involved with it is that we are paying something like that okay no something like that right we just we are going to recommend some courses to learn from here is that you see any paid advertisement here is nothing free we don't have we don't want to do anything that
Kasim is saying why you why you are caring about that one like we focusing only on beginners that is why we are taking that if you are not a beginner you are a pro developer and you want to learning that you can take the four hours of weekday boot camps okay so we are taking the advanced concepts in the weekdays right weekend is only for beginners that is a motto is of navidu biswa sir is to convert the beginners of 1000 like 10000 people to teach it that is why we are taking it okay so if you want to learn if you want to be a pro if you want to that then there is a weekdays in weekdays we will have for all the persons weekend is only for the beginners okay so if you are not a beginner attend it in the weekend we are offering it is for free only now right right i know about that that's fine okay see people just tell me one thing javascript was introduced uh, uh 27 years back and everyone is teaching the 27 years back old things is everyone is getting bored see the thing is here what you want to learn attend that workshop okay so that's that's the thing if you don't if you are not a beginner and don't attend this workshop just attend the just attend the uh, whatever what you want to learn it okay so you just we don't want to care about what we need to do right so we, we this is for beginners and we know that who oh, all are beginners here even a single person is there we will take it even no one is there we will take it okay so you don't want to worry about that one okay yeah sure you can take it once we completed this one i will tell you what all are the what all are the advanced concept that you want to learn that is also for absolutely free okay so the thing is what you want to learn all the people i am telling to all the people what you want to learn you can learn it if you are a beginner if you are not a beginner then kindly please don't you don't want to watch it you can go and you can uh, watch the another stuff that who all are the people that there are so much of people who creating great stuff and they are creating advanced things and learning from that that's what it is right so is that if i don't take any beginner concept uh, there is no beginner here i th that's what it is i was thinking about it okay i don't know who all are the people and uh, this thing i never taken for uh, the last 3 months i never taken the javascript engines sigma uh, script on those things i never taken for the last 3 months i stopped it because it is repeating that's what i'm stopped it but right now i'm taking it okay that's the thing is what you want to learn just focus on it okay so the systems and everything is going to be same every week is for a beginner so that is why we are giving ads and spending money and getting the beginners one okay so motto is to making involve people who to right to code that's what it is okay there is no other concepts will be there okay okay so yeah let me start to code now so let me open it with the live server the first thing we going to see it's going to be javascript data types and variables okay so before getting started uh, i want to ask you one another question also like if you have any other doubts okay we we going to write code we going to practice code and we going to write code so if you have uh, if you have any other uh, doubts that you have in uh, your mind regarding javascript so before starting code okay that is disturbing in your mind uh, like for example javascript java like that if you have any good doubts you can ask it here okay you, you can ask it in the chat box okay you can ask in the chat box we will clear the doubt because once you started to write the code you need to focus only on the code coding part okay no other things right you just want to focus on so the content is uh, just simple i will uh, i think uh, you are in whatsapp group is right if you want to get uh, javascript you can just uh, contact us and uh, uh, just to subscribe like just get, uh, if you just can wait for it each and every whatsapp group we will share it a uh, github yeah we have also github is that that's me saying i am again telling that uh, yeah if you like just understand what this workshop is for 
it's for beginner level workshop okay so there are a lot of other people who are watching this they are beginners they are watching that okay so if you want to advance workshop you just go and watch the advance workshop okay that is no other things if you why are you wasting time here just go you and watch your recipe i promise you within 15 hours you will not get master in web development i promise you if you want to promise me and if you want to challenge any other developers you can do it if you everyone can become 15 hours a developers then everyone is a developers no one go for a doctor no one go for engineers it takes even you learn for 6 month it takes another one year to master each and every topic that advanced topic that you want to cover if i take started to take closures in javascript it takes more than 2 hours if i want to explain everything clear that is that is all about the thing yeah if you have any other doubts you can ask it the other comments okay so we will just start code yeah, okay so so right now you can see javascript is disabled so we will enable that one from our site go for our site setting and uh, go for our uh, um what uh, privacy and security site settings go for it let us enable allow javascript to use the site okay so now it's fine okay so we have enabled it so let us go and start with the basics okay so the first concept so remember here we i say like we have two things that we need to learn one is basics on dom okay so basically a website a website will be there an interaction will be happened and once the interaction is happened that interaction is transmitted by like browser will communicate to us and we have our javascript code the file will be there and here we will write the functionality for the file and once the interaction is done the functionality will be completed it will be again send the according to the event according to the response okay it is going to change the user interface a different user interface it is what going to happen right so that is what going to happen so here what we need to learn first we need to learn this one javascript okay and then we need to learn about this one the event if the event is happened this is events and this is js fundamentals and this is dom with the help of down to changing the user interface and everything okay so first we need to learn javascript and then we will apply the learned javascript how to listen to the event and then we will join it and once we listen to the event what is the thing that i want to change with the help of down this is what is okay so this is what the workflow so first let me learn this one that is why we need to learn this one so if you want to learn a language if you want to learn a language the first thing is you need to understand the syntax okay each and every language has a different syntax so javascript is a loosely type dynamic programming language so it is not like java or python it is very loosely type dynamic language so which means you will write it like simple english you don't want to follow any strict syntax like ending things with semicolons and those things okay so for that you need to stop you need to stop uh comparing javascript with other language if you know java or python just forget it out okay we later we can uh, compare and learn it and but right now whatever the syntax that we are following that is your uh, first thing okay if you don't know any other programming language that i know most of the beginner people will be here and uh, if you don't know any other programming languages then that is fine that is well and good because learning javascript as a first language it will be much more easy okay so that's what it is so let me go and learn first what is variable the basic concept let us understand the syntax of a variable okay okay so let me remove it uh, this one will be there we come out of here and right now so first thing we are going to discuss it all about variable so variable what is variable variable is a container okay to store data okay so variable is a container to store data so why i want to store data for example 
you have an input box and you are giving your name right and you are getting the name of the user you need to store it right we just want to get it and you need to store it then only we can able to use it later so variable is like a container where we can store data and for creating a variable we need three things this a keyword i will explain everything keyword don't care about typos i will make so much of typos okay so and another one is going to be an identifier and another one is going to be final one is going to be the value what is the value that you want to store okay so what is a keyword first of all keywords are called as reserved words reserved words so some of the words are reserved for that particular programming language each and every reserved words has a uh, like they have a specific functionality if i use this word and browser will do this functionality okay so these reserved words are like keywords like based on this keyword only the browser will understand oh you want to create a variable or oh, you want to create a function it will understand okay so this keywords are reserved words it only used for what it is meant for okay so here for creating a variable you need three keywords uh, you have three keywords you can use any of the keywords this var another one is let and another one is const these are the three keywords these are the three keywords and then we have identified identifier identifier is nothing but what is a variable variable is nothing but a container to store data so we will have we will store a lot of data okay so we will get the value and store it a lot of data and we will store it in so much of containers like we have 10 12 uh, let me consider hundreds of containers right we need to identify the container right so for that what we will do we need to label the container okay that's what it is so labeling the container giving a name for that container for example if i show the name of the person so i just want to label it as name so it is easy to arrange right so you have gadgets you have uh, some other wires you have some other uh, uh, study books you have so much of containers so and what we basically do this is for gadget this is for wires this is for books i like think we will store it right same like that here also identifier is a name that we will given for the container so this is a name so there are several rules and regulation is that so we will see that name of the container like labeling the container like this and finally value so value is the data that you are getting and your story everything is data okay. so now we start to create our first variable code so for example keyword i can use three keywords available that i use let keyword let's say let okay just give a space here we have identifiers identifier is the name of the container so the name of the container you can give any name for example if i want to store the name the first name like this i can store it let's give a equal to equal to is also that i missed out is an assignment operator you need to add it. and here you need to give what is the value that you want to store so this value is basically come from here and you can notice that i already mentioned that so browser interaction and javascript so the browser giving the name and if we click the button then it will come to javascript right now we haven't seen about this interaction the event part right so i what i going to do i going to give the value directly let me give the value as tw okay that's it we have created a container and if you want to end this ending with semicolon is good without ending also it will be work okay but ending semicolon is good practice you can add it okay that's it we have created our container so this is variable okay Okay. Okay. So now I want to check it whether I want to create whether I want to create I want to check it whether this is created successfully or not. so debug the code so how can i debug it just go right click inspect go for the console look for the console and right now it is showing some error 404 something is not found no it is coming from different it is fav icon error so we don't want this i just refresh it so now what i going to do i just going to use console dot log okay and here know that whatever we are giving inside it will show the result the answer of it right so 
So I just going to call the container. If the container is successfully created, it will give me the result of it. If the container is not created, it will not give the result of it. If I save it, and if I ask for it, you can see we are getting TWD. I just refresh it. Uh, save it. You can see we are getting TWD. So what is mean? What mean by this? This this is mean our code is successfully created. And I return a code and I will check it whether it is created successfully or not. So I have done with that. It is created successfully, right? So that's what it is. So we have done. We have created this one. Okay. So now next thing is all about. Uh, let us go much more deeper into variables and we will figure it out. And here you can see var, let, and const. Right? We have var, let, and const. So we going to create a variable only, right? So we going to create a variable only. Just a minute. Yeah, we just going to create a variable only. So uh, whatever the variable uh, uh, we are going to create. So why we need actually three keywords, right? We just uh, have var, we have let and const. Why we are having three keywords, right? You need to think about that, right? So because each and every keyword has a special functionality and that is, that's why we are having three keywords. So the thing is right now, for right now, you need to understand this. Don't use war, okay? So war have a default box, okay? So there's a several major issues there and that is why we are not using war keyword, okay? That is why we are not using war keyword. We are using let and const only, okay? Right now we're going to use let and const, okay? But war is also helpful in some cases, that is much more advanced cases, we will use it. So whatever you want to use, you can use with letter quants if you are a beginner, okay, absolute beginner, okay. So war keyword, I will tell it at the end of the class, whatever I am telling, I will, you want to learn it later. I will tell you the guidance also for free completely where you can learn this from myself itself, okay. So I will tell that, okay. So right now we are using let. So what is the difference between let and const? Well, this let and const are introduced in the newer syntax. So what is meant by introduced in newer syntax? So this is ES6. Igma script version 6. So whatever the version before ES6, ES5, right? So they are called as old JavaScript and ES6, after ES6, they are considered as modern JavaScript. Okay. So the lot of syntax updation has been changed and lot of new methodologies and new ideas has been introduced. So that is why ES6 is considered as a modern JavaScript. And letter cons is <coughs> introduced in ES6 after 2015. So right now it is good to use letter cons. So what is the difference between letter cons? Let me explain. So this is called as this kind of work creating a variable. It is called as declaration, declaring a variable, declaring a variable. Okay. This kind of work is called as declaring a variable. Okay, so that's what it is. <clears throat> if I want to, there is an another thing is also have reassigning. Okay, reassigning the value. So what is meant by reassigning? So understand what is happening here. When I write let the container is created, I now I label in the container, putting the value inside the container and storing it in the browser. That's what is happening. So now I can create first name and I can say TWD. I can see I can say e like this. So what is going to happen now? What is going to happen now? So right now here when JavaScript reads the code, the container creator label is uh, label and a TWD is put inside it, right? So we have put it inside. And next line, it reads this code. What will happen is, what is going to happen is, a container has already existed. You can see I'm not using let. If I use let, a new container will be created. I'm not using let. I'm just calling an existed variable. So it is go and take the existed container. And right now I'm assigning new value. This is called as reassigning. So take out the old value, put a new value inside. So now if I ask, save and ask for it, you can see we are getting the new value, right? So we are getting the new value, the web dev. This is called as reassigning the values. And this functionality, this kind of work, it is possible in let keyword. When you create a variable with let, it is possible. But when you create this variable with const, okay, you will get an error. That error is type error. So why? Because if you created a variable with constant, this is not reassignable, not changeable. Okay, we cannot change it. Okay, so that's what it is. It is not reassignable. And here, understand this is the message, and this is going to be the description of the message. And this is type error. So, what is meant by type error means 
in javascript each and every thing that have several uh, specific things to do when you are uh, doing not doing that uh, when you are violating that behavior it is showing that behavior so mostly it comes for this const so const variable is constant you cannot change the value which is created by constant uh, like variable but if you try to change it it will throw an error and the type error assignment to a constant variable so this is a constant variable but you are trying to change it so this is not possible it is showing an error for us okay so that's what it is so that is the main difference between let and const there is another difference between is then is that we'll discuss that later okay so this is all about uh, keywords okay speaking about identifiers let us go deeper into identifier and speak about identifier there are several rules is that to create an identifier okay so there are several rules is that to create an identifier so the most common rules are you should not start an identifier with number like this it is an error to not start an identifier with representing number so that is an error okay so i just remove this one that is an error possible and you should not use some special characters like for example this sign you should not use anywhere inside this okay you can use number in between or at the end but you should not start an variable no. like identifier with a number okay initially okay just a minute Sorry for that. Yeah, you cannot change. Uh, you cannot change the like all the variables are uh, immutable. Like variables, uh, the data types, the common data types are immutable only. It is not changeable. Okay, so mutability, immutability is comes under difference. This is reassigning. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's what it is. So data types are in the primitive data types are immutable data types, and uh, you cannot change it. Okay. But here, this is reassigning. Okay, so just taking out the value and you are putting this value. Const is constant. You are telling that you should not change it. You should not change it. It's like an uh, some data, some original data that you should not. You don't want to change it. So during that time, you can use const variables. Okay. Uh, sorry, some big name, but I I'm not able to understand Hindi. So sorry for that, but uh, if you can able to add uh, this thing in English, I can uh, respond to you. I think, uh, yeah, some some words I'm not able to understand. Sorry for that. Okay, I don't know Hindi. Sorry for that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is what this is what the uh, TW like this is what it is. This is type error. Remember the errors. Okay, you will get around four to five errors, and that errors you will understand. Then you will get the message. Type error is doing something that is your. Uh, wrong with a particular type or uh, violating the behavior of a certain keyword that what is type error is okay this is one this is reassigning okay mutability immutability comes under a concept that you cannot change change okay so that is comes under data types we will discuss that okay and we discuss uh, numbers and everything will not change and you should not use underscores or uh, other things you should not use this, some things like that okay and uh, main important thing is the identifiers are case sensitive remember that whatever the caps letter or small letter that you are using in this particular variable you need to use the exact same thing while you are calling or reassigning or anything that you are doing you need to call it okay for example here you have caps in if i ask for small n you will get an another error uh, let us change this to let okay that is a reference error remember that this is a reference error so what is reference error reference error is nothing but you are asking something that is not existed okay so here first name is that you are asking for first name but remember that this is with caps and this is with small n so what is mean by that so the caps and is a different variable and small n is a different variable that's what it is okay so that is case sensitive you should use the exact same case what you created what you used for declaring and you need to use the same exact thing okay yeah that's what it is and this is called as reference error and right now it is looking for a variable that is not existed it is going to look for a variable that have small n it is not existed in our entire file so that is why reference error it is not defined that is what reference error is and if you give this one caps you don't get any error it will be worked that's what it is 
Okay, clear. So that is the second error, and that's what it is for rules. And there are some other rules as well. Just just Google it. You will find out some other some basic rules will be there. Okay, and you can able to use the dollar sign underscore. That is completely possible. Okay, so that you can use it. And the next thing is going to be next thing is going to be the value. So what is value? So values are nothing but data. So is data only be letters or words like that? We have so much of data, right? We have numbers, we have integers, we have booleans. We know that we have different categories of data, right? So then, which means we have different types of data. Right? We have different types. That is data types. Data type is nothing but so they are categorized. So what are the value people can store? The names or their names or words, right? Sequence of characters, and they can store numbers. They can store some. Um, yes or no type questions, right? Yes, true or false, like that. And they can store some like empty null value. I just want to put this as null, empty values. And they want to give anything, nothing, and define like that. They they have some different categories data types, right? So those are all called as data types. That's what data types. Okay. So that is what data types. The types of data are categorized here. That is what called as data types. And basically, this divided into two categories. One is primitive, and another one is primitive data types. First one is going to be reference data type. And there is a difference between them is that why they are named it as primitive, they named it as a reference data type based on values, based on reference like that. Right now, what you need to understand is primitive data types can hold only one data. Primitive data types hold only one data. There are seven data types in primitive data types, and in reference data type we have object. Only one. It is reference data type hold more than one value. There are objects. Okay. Primitive data type we have string. We have number. We have boolean. We have null, and we have undefined. Okay. And we have begin. We have symbol. Okay, we having this one. Okay. String number boolean null and define begin and symbol and reference data type. We have objects. That's it. Okay, with this all other data types that we are have. Okay, clear. So do you know how more than hundred plus people hit knives and you are teaching? Why them ban? Uh, I mm, sorry. I sorry. Uh, Lot stones. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm I'm very sorry for that. You are telling something good, but I'm not getting what you are saying. Uh, I think uh, trust built stones. Like I'm not. I'm very bad at Hindi. Okay, so if you speak to me, I can understand it, but I'm not able to understand that. So, okay. mm. oh, you you speaking in Urdu? I don't understand your language. Sorry for that. Okay. So yeah, if you know some word in English that you can uh, translate to me. Sorry for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's what it is. So now let us see each and every data types. This one is going to be string. So string is nothing but sequence of character. Sequence of characters. So sequence of characters is nothing but words, letters, and everything. Okay, so in the short term, if you want to understand what is string, string whatever you are written inside, single quotes, double quotes, and backticks. Whatever you are write inside, single quotes, double quotes, and backticks, they all are considered as string. Okay, for example, just say let str a variable, and I just going to say hello. This is a string. How can I check whether it is a string or not? Well, we have an operator called type of operator. Okay, so this type of operator basically it will this type of operator basically it will tell which data type that the variable has. Okay, there is two ways to identify that. One is just mouse over to the variable. You can able to see the Visual Studio Code uh, VS Code just given recommendation. It is a string. You are holding a string data type. You can see it is giving a recommendation, right? 
So otherwise, you can use this type of operator to see what is the data type that the variable is storing. Okay. So type of operator returns a data type of a variable. That's the name. In this console dot log, okay. If I say str dot not str dot, I just want to say type of okay with a space and tell what is the variable. So just understand str is the variable. And here, type of what it will returns, it will returns the data type of the variable. Okay, what data type it is storing, it is going to return. And the data type is string. In console, it is going to show me which data type. It is a string data type, so that is why it is showing me. It just come out of this one. That's why it is showing me string. Okay, so that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, the type of operator returns the data type of a particular variable, or otherwise you can hover over it and you can able to just understand the things. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So now the next thing is going to be number. And here, one more thing is note you need to notice is even if you give numbers inside this particular string, it is still a string. It is considered still a string. Okay, not numbers. Okay, so everything, whatever you are writing inside double quotes, single quotes, and backticks, it is considered as a string. Remember that. So, how, why this behavior is there means because in some language, you can see static language, you will tell the integer character before the variables, right? But in JavaScript, it will convert the data automatically. So, that is called as automatic type conversion. You don't want to tell this is a number uh, the variable that I'm going to get. It is going to be a number. The variable that I'm not getting that is going to be uh, like it is a string like that. You just don't want to tell it. Okay. So JavaScript automatically understand it. Okay. So that's what it is. Okay. So that is what it is. Yeah. Hope so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right now only I see it. Uh, what I did? <laughs> okay, so sorry, sorry for that. I was just uh, summing spam commands. Lot of the recent days we are occurring, sir. Like lot of spam commands uh, between the edutech uh, doing something for uh, long time and free. So that is why. So that's fine. No problem. Okay. This is all about thing. Let us move on for the numbers. So what is numbers? Numbers are basically, uh, they don't, in JavaScript, we don't have integers, floats, or so much of things. Everything is a number. For example, I say let, uh, let num equal to 10. Okay, num equal to 10. And if I ask for console.log, what is num? Tell me the type of the num. Tell me the type of the num. It's a number. If I give a float value like 1.10, it is also a number. If I give a integer, a number, a neutral value, a number, and a negative value, that is a number. Everything is a number. Okay, that don't have any this things and that thing. So only thing is, if it is a number, you should not enclose it with double quotes or single quotes. Whatever you are enclosing with double quotes and single quotes, it is considered as a string. That's what it is. Okay, that's what it is. And the next thing is. Uh, what is going to be next thing is going to be we going to see about booleans. Yes. So booleans are nothing but uh, basically uh, yes or no type questions, true or false questions. Okay, so that is what booleans is of. So basically, for example, I just say const. Uh, let us say bool equal to if I say true, you can see this is also a sequence of character but not enclosed with double quotes. Okay, so if I ask for console.log, what is the type of 
is the type of bool. Now you can see this is a boolean type and this is a other variable. Basically, it will be occurs during comparison, comparing things like four is greater than seven. Basically, it is false, right? So it is it is giving true or false. These two very values are the boolean data types. Okay, and then final, uh, not final. We're going to have another thing that is going to be null. So what is null? Null is nothing but purposely giving the value null is purposely I want the variable as null. Okay, so uh, don't confuse the difference between null and undefined. Okay, so null is nothing but I want the variable to be null. I purposely making something null. Okay, so that is what null is going to be. So it's just simply const const uh, num equal to null. I want this num variable to be null. It means the meaning of null is empty. But I want it empty purposely. I'm taking occupying the space and I'm telling that it is empty. Okay. And now if I ask for console.log, what is num? You can see we are getting null. And here there is another thing is we get if I use the type of operator, you can able to see we are getting an object as a data type. You can see when I use a type of operator with boolean, we are get bool. When I use the type of operator with num, we are get num. When I use the type of operator with string, we are getting string, right? So it is practically whenever I'm using the type of operator with none, we need to get none, right? But why we are getting object? And you know that object is a reference data type. I mentioned it is in the reference data type. Then why it is showing the data type as primitive data types? Well, speaking about the truth, it is a but. Okay, so it is an error only. In future, you can expect that it will be rectified. But the thing is, uh, still the process is making. Okay, so the proposal is also made. They are changing, working out of working out this. Okay, so this is a bug. This is a bug. Okay, so you need to. We don't want to care about this one. Okay, so that's what it is. Also, uh, research towards this, you will get an interesting article about how the proposals are made and how tough to change the null data type of null is going to be. You will get on more insight about that. Okay, so have Google towards that. Okay, so that's one. Then next one is going to be. Next one is going to be what it is going to be. It is going to be undefined. So undefined is basically not meant for the purpose of us. Okay, we to use. Okay, but there is some place we can use it to check whether it is undefined or not. Like to compare and check it. Uh, but it is not, not like mainly used for us to use. Okay, so it is JavaScript to use it when during the memory allocation. Uh, we see it in JavaScript engine, right? We will write the code. It will pass it down, create an abstract syntax tree, right? So during that process, it will allocate memory also. Okay, it will store the values in the memory heap. It will store it. So during that time, this undefined is plays an important role. Okay, that's what it will do it. So undefined is like a variable without value, a temporary, uh, temporary keyword to tell that during uh, like. During right now it is empty, but it is later it is going to be occupied with some value. So a temporary zone. That is what undefined is. So the null is purposely making something empty. By purposely telling that I need this value as null. Undefined is it is not right now nothing is there, but later it is replaced by something else. Right now it is empty. For example, a variable let a sort a value. If I ask it in the console.log, what is a? Or get undefined, and if you ask what is the type of a, you can get the undefined type. Right? So null is purposely making empty. Undefined is something that it is an it is the way of memory allocation. So every variable has a temporary zone without without a value. It is considered as an undefined only. Okay, so it is considered as undefined. So this is a behavior. It will happen during the memory allocations. Okay, so yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Okay. So these all are the five primitive data types that is most commonly used. Okay. Let me discuss about the sixth one that is begin. Begin. And this begin is not begin and symbol is not for use cases. Right now only that is introduced. It is not. We are not using that much. And not. We are completely not using. Okay. So it will be used right now. Introduced and it will be maybe used for some methods or maybe introduced and they will use it later. Okay. So what is begin is. Each and every programming language has a maximum safe number. So what is that means? Means that is the highest num value, no, like uh, highest value that a program can store. Okay. So if I type uh, max safe integer, you can able to see this is the maximum safe integer for JavaScript. You can just copy this value. 
over here and I paste it here. This is the maximum safe value for JavaScript. Okay. Okay. So only JavaScript can able to hold only till this number. Okay. You can see we are having a 991, right? If I just give plus 100, sorry, 1000. If I press enter, you can see what is the result it is producing. It is producing 1992. It is adding 1001, but I added only 1000, right? So producing some wrong result and weird result. So that is what happened. If you do some operation that is cross with the maximum safe integer, okay? if you cross with the maximum safe integer, during that time, it will produce some weird results like this, okay? Some inaccurate results. So to stop that only, begin is there. So begin is nothing but a number followed by n. So a number followed by n. That value is considered as begin. So right now, numbers or numbers, a number followed by n is considered as a begin data type. And right now, if you do the operation here okay, like this, sorry, n. You can see right now it is producing the correct answer, 1991 not 992, right? It is working perfectly, right? So that is what is. So beyond the maximum safe number, if you want to do some operation, you can use this begin. So that is why I'm saying we don't use anything like that, okay? So a number with n, if you check the type, type of p, it is a, it is a number. With p n, it is a begin, that's it. Number followed by n, it is considered as a begin, okay? So not having much use cases but it will be it will be that in our data types okay uh, A minute, guys. Guys, just just be in like, right? Just uh, there are see, like don't do anything such comments like that. Okay, so you are listening here for a bootcamp, right? So if you have any doubts regarding bootcamp, just play and respond to it. Okay, so if someone is speaking something, don't respond to that. Don't trigger to that. Okay, so yeah, don't do any comments like that. Okay. Mr. Abdullah, it is not not a comment uh, for TWD. They are fighting with some religious conscious. Okay, so please avoid those concepts. Okay, just if you have any comments, if you want to ask any question, ask with me. Okay, and ask only related to dev web development. The why you are people doing these things today? The entire mood is getting spoiled for everyone. Okay, don't do something like that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Okay, keep focusing on the concepts. Okay, so don't focus on any other things. Okay, so everything, whatever you are learning, so your education is going to help you, nothing else. Okay, so don't um, don't go out of topics. Okay. So these are all the spam comments that is coming out here. Okay, so you don't. Uh, like uh, the automatic bots and something is here and uh, yeah so people who are in uh, live and we know that uh, uh, specifically some youtube channels is also sending some of them to giving some hate comments also is there so 
don't care about those things okay if you find it is something not valuable then you can just leave the meet but there is no issue with the access if you found it is valuable stay in the call we will be there and we will help you okay that is that simple okay yeah okay so let us go for symbols the symbols also something like that hmm symbols also something like that uh, it is something uh, like uh, storing some unique data for example uh, let i store some let a equal to 10 okay and here i just say let v equal to 10 and here in the console.log if i compare both the values are same a is probably equal to 10 a is probably equal to b like that if i compare it you can see we are getting true right so symbol is something whatever even though you are giving the same data it is considered that as a unique value okay that is what the symbol will do so for example to create a symbol or data type you need to add symbol in inside the symbol you need to tell what is the data that you want to store so if you store anything that's inside symbol then it is a unique data even though you are having the same data it is not going to be it is not going to be reflect for example if i just if i give the same exact value here okay both are same only but if i ask for it you can see we are getting false why we are getting false because symbols are used to store anonymous unique data so anonymous is nothing but some outside data that you want to store it some data that you want to store it that is not going to be useful for your program but you want to store it you can store it like this this is completely unique okay so unique set of data it will store it even though you going to store the same exact data in a different data type it is going to produce as it's a consider it as a different values not the exact same values that's what it is no use case don't want to confuse no use case okay right now no use case for the simple symbol is there okay yeah okay let me remove this for now yeah. so now Ashari uh, Abdullah, I can understand what you are uh, saying. That I can understand that uh, what uh, you then I just guided out to them, just uh, blogged out them. Okay, so this is a spam bot. Okay, spam bot is nothing but uh, how can I say, like a particular chat. Uh, okay, so who all are not only us. Okay, so you can see 18 plus comment will be come in, in before it will be come appear. And sometimes it will come. People will ask you what why you are what are you. Why you are typing something like this? Why you are allowing something like this? It will be appear. Right now, there is no background people is there. I am only the handling these things, so that is why I need to come to the chat and I want to uh, delete it. So it is like a spam bot. So if you if someone is taking like okay, a, a set of chat will be automatically loaded. Okay, so people will load at that in a particular name. It will be loaded. Okay, and those people are uh, again just what they they are get triggered and they are telling that okay, don't just avoid that that don't. those things okay don't care about that one okay so uh, that is why right so usually we have uh, the background people uh, so like uh, right now you can see uh, there is no background people is here right now i am only handling the session so that is why the, that is the reason uh, i need to come and check it and i need to block the users okay sorry for that uh, inconvenience that is happen i can understand okay so what you are telling that just leave it okay so people who all are telling that they are going to be tell that just leave it just focus on what you are asking okay yeah okay yeah so the we're going to see about reference data type reference data types reference data type is nothing but see guys i just want to tell you one thing it's not about uh, what others telling in the comment it's if you have any doubts regarding web development you can stay in the call or you can watch the bootcamp and you can watch it okay if 
we want to discuss some other things okay other than politics other than religion you want to discuss it kindly please leave the boot here okay i'm not supporting anyone i'm not supporting others or anything like that this is not a place to where you want to discuss we are here to educate okay so if you want to speak something else okay if you want to something debates okay just go okay i'm not the guy to who want to check with that just, just get out okay that's what it is okay if you want to listen it just be here if you don't want to be there just uh, leave it okay don't disturb other persons okay and kindly if anyone okay so if, if here i just say like if anyone is there means we will just shut down the chat the chat is not going to be there and uh, there is no one you can able to communicate with them so this live chat will be disabled i promise you that okay so just listen to the class if you are not able to just get out okay thank you okay so sorry for the people who all are really interested i'm really really sorry for that who all are watching the uh, boot camp okay i'm really sorry for the disturbance happening okay so i don't know why it is happening but sorry for that okay so let us see about objects so objects are nothing but okay objects are nothing but hmm Uh, it can able to store multiple data and one of the other thing that you need to notice is object have a special type okay object have a special type and that type is going to be arrays okay and object have special type and that type is going to be arrays and arrays are nothing but uh, arrays arrays it has a special type it is not a data type of an object arrays also a special type of an object only okay uh, let me see first of all what is array so let i say reference data type can hold many number of data types right so many number of data it can able to store so if you want to create an array it is going to say cons a or r and just give a square bracket here you can hold multiple data so this is array for example i say 1 2 3 just give a comma separated lines and store as much as data that you want to as much as data that you want to store it okay you can just store it okay so now here let me see how array is created if i ask for console.log arr you can see array is created like this only if i click it array you can able to see 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 something like this and you can able to see the values so both are numbers little bit confusing right i just go and write some names okay just say like this okay and uh, you can able to see you can see Uh, we have the values in the right hand side so this is values in the right hand side and you can able to see how many values there like right? there are 12 values of we have length of 12 so what is this so this is the count of the data type okay so this is the count of the data type so the count is going to be nothing but okay so including the count is nothing but the uh, how many uh, values that are inside my array for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so arrays are nothing uh, really like uh, they are nothing um, that much simple simple uh, we can you can understand this you have you have created a container so inside this container you have small small containers that's what it is and inside the small small container you are storing the values and those containers are called this 0 1 the small small containers so they are called as indexes okay so they are basically numbered indexes okay so whatever the value that you are giving it will be taken in an ordered way okay it will be taken in an ordered way so the first value will be go for zeroth index second value is go for first index so the indexes starts from 0 to 1 okay so ordered way automatically they will put the indexes 0 to 1 it will takes the value okay so this is what indexes so why we have this indexes because there is a big container is there and inside we have small small containers and if i want to access a particular value for example i want to access this pressure so what i want to do i just want to take the particular small container right so for that i need to label it so that is what this indexes is so with the help of this indexes you can able to take the particular value right now if i ask console.log what is a or r it is giving me the total container right so total value that is inside it but if i want to take the particular value if i want to take the particular value then i just want to use the square bracket 
and I just want to tell what is the value that I want to take. Okay, so the value that I want to take is uh, which index I want to take in the first index. Huh? Container inside a small container that is the first uh, zero first container. I just want to take that one. Now you can see we are getting only press on. Okay, so this index is useful to access the particular value inside it. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, so that's what it is. And uh, yeah, this is what array. And let me check the data type of an array. I just say console.log. If I say ARR, and if I just go type of error, you can see we are get objects. So why we are getting object? Because array is not a data type. Array is also a special type of an object. Okay. So uh, object is a data type, and inside this array we have a special object. That is what array is. Okay. So this array, uh, several things that you notice is it takes the values in an ordered ways. First of all, okay. It takes the values in an ordered ways. And second one is going to be it is going to takes the okay, it is going to take the value in an ordered ways. The second one is going to be uh, indexes. It is starts from zero and goes on as long as it can. And the length property will be there. And fourth one you need to notice is the length property is always plus one times greater than the indexes. For example, you can see we are having the indexes. The indexes is eleven. The length is twelve. Why? Because the count starts from one. So the length is basically number of items. So one, two, three, it will count it. Okay. But index starts from zero. So the it is always less than one times of the length. Okay. So or plus one times the length is always greater than one type of the particular indexes. Okay. So that's what it is. Yeah. Simply that is what it is. And now we're going to see about object. What is object? The object is nothing but so the what is the what is actually object what is the thing that is behind object is storing the data and the function in the same place. Okay, storing the data and the function. Sorry, storing the data and behavior in the same place. I don't know what is functions is right. Behavior in the same place. Okay. Discuss about that. First of all, like right now, for example, if you want to create a data, okay. Uh, for a particular person, first name, last name, age, date, like that, right? So how we will create? Normally, we will create like this. It first name, like this. Okay. Let last name like this, and let age equal to like this and let it is we will create it a particular person okay so what if if you want to create the same uh, details for an another person what we will do well we need to create write everything again right like this and i just want to say like this and not only this, we need to change this also. First name one, second last name two, and third name age is also one like this. We need to change this also, right? We need to change this also. But this is not a good thing. Let us imagine you have thousand people and you are creating something like this one. It's not a good program. So that is why we will group the data together. So how we will create an object? So simply, const. This is going to be person one. If you want to create an object, use a curly braces. Here you can use key value pass. Key value pass. Key value pass. Here I just say first name. Just, uh, I just going to copy all the things. Let's change the syntax according to this. So remove the let. You don't want to use let every time. Okay. So this is an object. It is going to store the person one information. Not equal to this colon, not semicolon at the end, it is comma. This is the syntax. This is the syntax of it. Okay. Right now you can see a person one and all the information about the person is here. And if you want to create a person two, just 
Yo, this is person two. Change the variable person two. Change the name. That's it. All the properties are exactly going to be same. Okay, first name, last name is that. You don't want to change here. You don't want to write let every time, and you don't want to do. only change the value. The structure is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so that's what it is. Like this. Like this. That's what it is. Okay. So that is the good way to write a program. So this is also a principle. Okay, to write a program. Okay. So this is the way that we need to write it. person one and person two. And here we are having this one. Okay. Yeah. So now. So now let us see how the object is look in the console. Let us say console dot log. If I say person one. You see, first name, last name, age is there. If I click it, similar to all array, but it is not an array. You can see uh, it has they have curved braces, right? So the square bracket and it has curly braces. You can see age twenty three, first name, last name. It is changed the order also, right? You can notice that. But in array, we don't have key value posts. We just give value, and the keys are determined based on their indexes. The indexes are numbered indexes. Here you can see the indexes are named indexes, and that is given by S. We will give it. They are named indexes. We will give it. Okay. And if I want to access this particular value, okay, what I want to do? Well, person two. I ask for person two, and see we are getting Hari, Prashant, and everything is there. If I want only this value, then based on the key, we can able to access it. How? Just give a dot. Say first name. Okay. If we save it, you can see we are getting the value. Clear? Okay. We are getting these values. Okay. So that is what that is what here it is. That's what here it is. Okay. Yeah. This is how you need to access the value. So this is the way to store data inside it. So what is behavior? Storing behavior. What is that? So before seeing that, we need to discuss about functions. Functions. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Ten more people saw that. Okay. Okay. Let me discuss about functions. And after discussing about functions, uh, after four fifteen, we will take a short break. Okay. We will take a short break, and we will continue. Okay. So till after that. Okay. Okay, so how many of you need break? Just uh, tell it in the chat box. Okay, so let me see that. Okay, so functions functions are nothing but uh, have a block of code. If you want to run some particular action, so what is variable? Variable is a container to store data. Functions is also like a container, but it is not going to store a data as single value. Instead, it will store a block of code. Okay, more number of line, uh, more number of code. It is. Good. Uh, it is going to store a block of code, and whenever we are calling the function, it is going to execute the block of code. It is going to run all the code, okay, while calling it. Okay, so that's what it is going to be, sir. Yes, and the object is also contains an another object. Array is also contain an another object. We have that. Uh, we have the nested object concept, uh, Sunny. We will discuss that also. Okay, no worry about that. Okay, so yeah, once we covered this, once we covered the functions and the basics of function. We will discuss about the nested object also. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay, you will have it. You you can able to store it. I will tell it. How can you access also? Okay, no problem. Okay, so let's see how to create a function. So for creating a function, you need a keyword. The browser understand that is function keyword. Then you need to give the name of the function. So here I just going to say say type. This is the name of the function. And after that, you need to give a parenthesis. This I will tell why we are using this parenthesis. I will tell it. And once it is completed, then you need to write use the block of code. Curly braces. Write what code you need to execute once the function is get executed. So here I am going to write a block of code. I just say let uh, message equal to hello all. And here I create an another variable let 
SH equal to okay do you need any trick like this and here I just going to say return SH SH S space And here I just say say hi. And if I run, oh, sorry, that's it. We have created it. First of all, let me understand the syntax. So this is function. It is a keyword to create a function. And name is the name that you want to call a function. You need to give a name, label, right? So that is what the name of the function. And this is the block of code it is going to execute. Okay. A variable returns a data. Here it will run a particular code and it will return the data. That's what it is. The difference between a statement and a particular data. Okay, so that's what it is. What? Yes, any object is also contain another object. We are going to have that also. Okay, we will discuss also once we completed that one. Sunny, we will discuss about. Uh, how we can able to store object inside and another object okay don't worry about that we will discuss it okay so now you can see the return right so what is mean by return is that is the end of the function first of all and second whatever you are going to write after this it is not going to work done if you reach the return that is the last thing so if i run a block of code i need to return something right so i need to execute some if i'm doing some action there is an answer will be there that answer i want to return it here what i'm returning either message one I just want to add the message one and the message two. I just want to concatenate it and I just want to return it. Okay. So where it is going to return? So it is going to return where the function is called, where the function is invoked. Okay. No, Abdullah, pointers are not there. Not here. Okay. It's not here. It's not here. Okay. That's why I'm telling that uh, you don't want to compare. Uh, this syntax with that syntax. Okay, you should not compare that. JavaScript is entirely different, and here, and we have TypeScript. Okay, so to make JavaScript stricter. Okay, but JavaScript by default it is not. Okay. okay, so right now if I save it, you can see right now we are getting Harry. This is because we are coming getting from here. It is coming off it run it. You can see it is not running anything. Why? Because a function is created. It will only run. So it will be it will be run it will be execute whatever the code that we are writing inside this function it will be execute only the function is called okay so here if I say console dot log in the console say hi run it you see what do we need any break yeah of course so this is how the functions will be work okay so let us take. Okay, let us take a. Okay, let us take a break. Okay, so we will meet after. Okay, after fifteen to ten minutes. Okay, it is level fifteen right now. You will you will see after level fifteen. Okay, you will get it. See, guys, I am again repeating. That is a bot. Okay, understand that that is a bot. Okay, so don't use any another unnecessary words here. Okay, yeah, uh, Vijay, you will get the attendance form. Okay, you will get an attendance form. Okay, so uh, I will share it oh, at the end of the class. I will share it. Okay, I will I will share it that with you. So take a break up to ten to fifteen minutes. You will do that. Okay, so understand that one. That is a that is a pre-builted bot. Okay, don't get trigger and don't use any unnecessary word. Don't oh, do any such things like that. Okay, so I, after ten minutes, get into that. I will be there.
Yeah. So we will start our class with uh, the remaining parts. Okay. Okay. So right now we are in functions. So we have discussed about functions. Functions. Functions is uh, basically so why it will return a block of code. Like we have a block of statement will be there, and uh, whenever you are calling function, the entire block of code will be written. Okay. So that's what the functions will do. Okay, I think uh, is my voice is audible for all. Is my voice is audible all? Sorry. Hello. Yeah. Okay. 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 So this was functions is and inside you can see we have this uh, this curly braces, right? So what is this code braces is? This is called as parameters. So basically, if you want to fetch a variable outside the functions means you can use this parameters for example right now these two things is outside here okay so if you want to access it inside okay so the right way to access is passing it in the parameter for example here you can create like a b okay here i can use a comma b so whatever you are whatever you are uh, declaring here it's like a variable without any keywords that we are creating it okay this, this is called as parameters so this parameters usually takes up the value from the outside okay what it will do it will take the value from the outside so where it will take the value it will take the value here you can see say hi right so it will take the value here so whatever the value you need to take here you need to pass it you can see if i hover it you can able to see the parameters so say hi is a function and it has two parameters one is a that may be any data type b that may be any data type it is telling that so i need to pass a value here so what is the value i need to pass is a as a as i message and uh, this as message too like this okay now what is happening is this message this value it is taken inside this particular function and it is go inside this parameter and this parameter the value of message is right now inside this a for example if i run console.log what is a what is b you can able to see you can see hello do you need any break right so if i ask for uh, here this is outer, sorry inner okay let's see the difference you can see inner so this value is the a value and this value is the b value okay so if i don't pause any value if i don't pause any value you can see it's showing undefined undefined right so the a is undefined because it has no value we know that a variable without a value it is undefined not only a variable whatever that you are creating without a value it is undefined only so right now if i pause the value i want message one for a if i pause it you can see we are getting hello all right so this is paused inside a value right so inside a value right now the value undefined is getting replaced by the message that i have paused and right now we have b value that is undefined because we don't pause any value for b the order is very important okay so here i just going to copy this one i going to paste it here okay. save it here you can see we are getting this value and this is called as parameters and the place where we are giving value to the parameters is called as the arguments okay so this function and function name and whatever the code that you want to execute you can write it here return keyword is the keyword that will returns what exactly you want to return it from so it will returns it okay and uh, and console dot and here we are whatever the value that you are passing that is considered as an argument okay so this parameter it is accessible whatever the value that is inside this parameter it is accessible only inside this function okay it is not accessible outside the function that is why we are passing it okay so this is what this is what about in thing about uh, a function okay this is all about functions this is all about a functions okay so now i just uh, Going to comment off this one. <laughs> so sorry, I just wanted to comment off this one. Uh, here, I just comment off here. This one also, I just comment off. So now, 
you're going to see about objects okay we have already discussed about object right so inside this object we are also going to have inside this object we are also going to have behaviors i say that the object is going to have data and behaviors right so data are already there we need to add behavior so behavior is nothing but the functions so adding functions also inside the object is the, the functions are always work based upon the data okay so we will create a function based upon the data so that is what the behavior of an object also okay so let me see that so how can so adding function inside an object adding function inside an object that is a behavior so let me say okay. to add a function inside an object is just create a property i just say details okay and here instead of adding a value add a function an anonymous function function without name is called as anonymous function why we are not giving name here is because it is right now inside a key a property right so we can access the function by using this okay i just going to like this like this here i just going to return okay person one sorry person two dot first name okay plus it is going to return person two dot last name like this. Okay. So now what is going to happen is I now let I ask what is person two like this. You can see we're having a function first name last name. We are having an age and we are having details and that is a function, right? And that is a function. And one more thing to notice is if you want to execute a function. Not only you need to call the function name, you need to call the function name with this parenthesis. Okay, you need to give a curly code braces. So that is going to execute your functions. Okay, so that is what actually going to execute your function. So you need to give that functions. Okay. Okay, so now the next one, what I going to do is, yeah. So now what we going to do, we going to invoke the property. I just say person two dot first name. You can see we are getting this, and I just going to say details. And if I run it, you can see we are getting the formula that the code that we have written. Right? So details. Why we are getting this code? Because I need to give a parenthesis. So if I give this parenthesis, then only the whatever the code that I have returned inside it is going to execute. So if I run it, you can see we are getting three percent. Why? Because the person two dot first name is Harry, and the person two date last name is going to be Prasad, and we are getting this. Okay. So we just getting here, and you can notice this. This is exactly the same syntax of console. You can see this is an object we created. And this is a behavior, okay? So this is a behavior that we have created, and you can see the name. And here you can able to see this curly braces, right? And here you can see we have console same dot log, and we have followed by this curly braces. You can see the similarity between these two syntax, right? What is the difference between this one and this one? Well, this console dot log is an console is a default object that is present in JavaScript, okay? It is already there, and it has methods. And this object is created by us. Right now, I created an object, and I created a method. This is called as method. A function inside an object is called as method. And data, like similar to variable, key value pose are called as property. Okay. So this is default object that is present in JavaScript, and here this is going to be the object that I created it. Okay, clear. So if you want to see what are all the functions methods that are available for the console, just go here in the console and type for console. You can see this is an object. Same curly braces. You can able to see it is open and entered with the same curly braces, and you can able to see all the function names. Right? You can able to see one and one of the function that we are using is log, and it is a function. You can able to see here. There's a function. Same like that. Here it have a function, and whatever the value that we are giving here, 
it is the parameter it is the argument value that we are giving that is taken by the parameter and it is go and display inside this console the functionality has been written like that okay and this is a functionality that we have created so this is all about object and another thing is notice is a reference data type can hold anything inside there for example if you have an object you can see it is a string it is a number you can able to hold array also for example i can say like uh, um, we can say we can say salary this you can create an array here you can add more number of this like this you can add more number of arrays okay and also you can add an object also inside it for example there is a person and i just want to add the father's information okay so i just say going to say father okay and i just going to open the curly braces name and age of the father so let me add some name let me add like this here let me add something else so now you can able to see an object inside an object so these are all nested object so let me see how it will be look for so this person details is not a problem see this is a person too if i click it age is the details is there and another object father is there right so if i want to fetch this one what i want to do i just go and fetch dot and i want to type father now if i save it you can see we are getting only that particular father sir. and if you want to go inside further then again give a dot and then what you want i want the age of the father this modify and it is showing here clear so this is how you need to go inside it and for array also same okay so if you want to go for salary let's say person 2 is an object so if you want to go inside give a dot and type what you want to type it is a salary and if i ask it now it is an array how we will fetch an array value by using their indexes right by using the indexes so give a square bracket give a square bracket and tell which index that you want so for example the third index i want I just say third, and if I just click enter, you can able to get the value. Sure, sorry, you can able to get this value, right? So this is what it is. So this is how you need to work with the nested arrays. Clear? Okay. Okay. So that's what all about objects. So now what we will do we'll see about events so i think we have cleared we done with something here right so right now we go and see what is events okay so how can we get a event how can we respond to an events okay let's see that one so what is events events basically we need to see about event handlers and event listeners basically two things is that one is event handlers and one is event listeners so yeah so what is events first of all for example let us say you have a button okay and like this and i just say Okay. Now it right. Someone clicks this button. Something need to happen, right? So for that, I need to add an event listener to this function. So event listeners are nothing but so the event that going to occur. Click, double click, mouse over, mouse enter. They are event listeners. So they will run something when 
when that particular event is occurs for the particular element. For example, right now if I want to add an event listener for this particular element, okay, what I want to do is just go here and attribute place. Just type on. If you type on, you can able to see all the events. Okay. You can able to see all the events that are available here. Okay. So here I can just click on click. So what is on click will do means on click event it listen for this particular element where it is that it is listen for that particular element is clicking or not if the particular element is clicked then it is going to execute something so what it is going to execute is it will execute a function so let me create a function let's say function let's just say the function name is going to be click click and here function is clicked. I just want to write console.log. I am I am now if I save it, nothing will happen. But you can see that if I execute the function, what will happen? It will get I am clicked. How many times I'm going to execute the function? That much time I will get I am clicked, I am clicked, I am clicked, but right? This is what we will get. So if I don't execute it, it will not is not going to execute whatever the code that inside we are writing in the function it is not going to be executed so right now what we need to do is we need to add this function we need to run this function when someone clicks this button so what we need to do so here there is a event listener is there and we need to pause the function inside this on click event listener how we can pause it just call the function name Wait. Click. it so what this on click will do means when someone click the button, it will invoke the function, which means it is going to execute the function. Whatever you write inside, it will execute. If I save it, click, you can see the function is get executed and it is asking me, I am clicked. And if I just click again, you can see two times the button is clicked. It is giving the number of times it is clicked. If I click it again and again, you can see how many times I'm clicking that much a time it is going to execute the values. So this is what events. This is based on the events only. It is need to respond to it. Okay. The JavaScript functions is going to run based on the event. A function will be run inside the function. Whatever I want to write, I can write it here. This is events. Okay. I think uh, you got it. What I'm saying. So now what we say, we will just get into some DOM practice. Just go and say DOM events. Go and say about Tom events. Okay. So Dom events. Just a minute. So DOM event we're going to see. So the DOM event we have so much of things. First, just understand what is CSS, how CSS is working. So if you want to change the style of a particular element, what do you need to do? First, you need to get the element, right? I'm saying body tag. I just getting the element body. It's a tag selector. So I just as it is, I'm getting. So if it is a class selector, I need to use dot. If it is ID, then I want to use it. This number sign, right? So that is what I need to do. So here it is a body tag. So I just say body and here we are giving a background color and we are doing something right. Same like that. If you want to get something. Okay. If you want to get something, what you need to do is you need to uh, first, if you want to change some elements first, you need to get the element, right? So that is what the first one grabbing elements, grabbing element elements from the HTML the html so why we need to grab the element from the html because if we want to change the style or if i want to change the content first i need to grab the element so how can i grab this element there are five methods is there is that for grabbing the element grabbing the elements any methods five methods are there for to grab the elements 
ओके okay? so, here first we will see how to grab an element using their id so based on their id how can i grab an element okay so they are categorized into two types one is uh, grabbing single element having multiple element So they are categorized into two types. And in grabbing single elements, having two things. One is the first one is going to be grabbing an element based on their ID. So why ID is same under grabbing a single element? And the alternate three form is shared in the chat box. Who all want to fill? Just fill it out. And once you fill the name, just tell it in the chat box. Fit. Okay, filled like anything. I am filled or anything like that. Okay, just tell it in the chat box. Okay. So, unknown three is there. People who are watching just filled it out. Okay. So, it's out there now. Okay. So, why ID is, let us come to the questions. Okay. So, why ID is considered as a single element selector? Why ID is considered as a single element selector? Why? Because ID, based on ID only, we are going to grab an element. And in HTML, ID or Unix. Right? We know IDs and class and tag selectors. Three selectors is there. And IDs are unique. They will be present only once. Okay, They will be there in the element for only once. Right? So if you use an ID here, for example, I say ID demo. And this ID should not be used for any other element. That is what the property of ID is. ID is a unique one. ID is a unique key. You should not use it for again. Right? But classes you can use it for multiple types. So that is why classes are comes under multiple selectors and IDs comes under unique selectors. Okay. So grabbing a single element. Okay. So here to grab a single element, what is the method that we have is, so this DOM is also an object. So they have properties and methods. One of the method is going to be used to grab an element from an ID. So what is the method is, you need to use document, Dot get element by ID, okay, and followed by this code process. So let's see how we can use this method. First, I just going to say document. This is the DOM object. You dot get element by ID. This is a method that we want. Inside this parenthesis, you need to tell what ID you want to get. So the ID name is going to be demo. Demo is the ID we given for this H1 tag. So I just going to say okay. so we are grabbed it. Now we need to check it, right? Whether it is whether the particular element is successfully grabbed or not. So what I can do? Well, we can put console.log inside this. We will put the entire code inside this console.log. Console.log document or get element by ID demo. If I save it, just give a refresh. You can see we grabbed an HTML tag. That is h1 id with the demo and that is hello world dot h1. So that is how you need to grab it. So either you can do check like this or, or you can, what you can do, you can store this inside a variable. You can say what hit const hit equal to, just created a container and put the value inside it. Now I can simply call hit, so small name, right? So we can just call hit, we will get the value inside that particular variable. This is how you need to store it and you need to get it. So now let us come to CSS. See CSS, grab the element, give the property and what it need to change, right? So property, they have, we have so much of things to change and we need to tell it. Same like in JavaScript, first grab the element, then tell what you need to change and give the value what it should change that you need to tell. So right now what I want to do is, I need to change the hello world to Congratulations. How can I do it? So we know that it is the HTML tag, right? I just go and fetch it and to change. Okay, here I am writing change the content content of an element. So what is content? The writings, whatever it written inside it, it is going to be the content of the element. Okay. So to change the content of an element, you need to use dot 
inner html property what this property will do means it will change the content of the element whatever you are going to give it is going to change the inner content so simply just give equal to just give what is the content i want to change instead of color bold just say congrats save it you can see now the hello world is changed to congrats right so it is changed so now what i'm going to do here you can notice that it is changed immediately even if i reload it you can see we are getting a, a slight delay but it is changing real right i don't want to change something like this what i want to do well when someone clicks it then only i need to change then only i need to change the hello world to congrats so how can i do that well simply well simply i'm just going to say so we know that if i click it what will happen this function is going to trigger and it is going to execute right so what i going to do is inside this function i going to put all the things take away all the code and if i run it you can see now it is changed and come to the normal mode why right? because whatever we have returned inside this console dot log right whatever we are written inside this function it is not going to execute unless someone calls it right so if i call the function like right click now it is changed to congrats right so i don't want to call it here where i want to call it when someone clicks it then i need to invoke the function well we already added the event and added the function correctly if i go and click it it is going to execute all the code the first code is get the element from the html second code is log it in the console and third one is change the inner html property to congrats okay so that is what if i click it you can see we have changed that to congrats change the element so this is how each and every event is all working here okay so this is what the basics thing so how to grab an element you can able to grab an element based on their id class and so much of things first we have discussed only about ids and we have inner head dot inner html and the inner html property is to change the congrats like the html property of an element okay yeah so that's what it is going to change it clear any doubts so thank you sunny okay thank you vijay okay so if you have any other doubts we can ask it now okay so this is how the events we are joining the events with the help of function right all the code inside the function something occurs the event is going to execute the function and the function is going to run all the code and it is going to change the event this is the interaction that is happened and that with the help of these dom operation we will work with it clear now we going to look into some of the dom operation let me see and let me look into that so inner html it is used to change the content of an element right same like that if you want to change the style of an element style of an element what you need to do well first you need to grab the element which you need to change to the style well i going to grab the element of head okay so same same element so same h1 tag head so if you want to change the style then instead of inner html inner html used to change the content only what you need to do you need to use style property if you want to change anything in css you need to use the style property and just give a dot right dot and if you give the dot you can able to see all the css properties that are available to change so the property that we want is i just want the background color I just say background you can see background color let us click here and you can notice that the syntax is different in css each and every word is separated by a dash that is called as kebab case okay everything is separated by a dash but in javascript it is written in a lower camel case okay lower camel case so what is lower camel cases well the first letter always starts with small and the upcoming word is starts with caps okay so that is where i i also written something first letter small and always caps okay it is a way of writing okay you can write it whatever you like to write but it is good to write if you write it in the lower camel case okay i say i have a head that is the h1 tag and change the style property i going to change the css property i use the style property change the background color to what the color i want to change so i want to change is just go here let us have some green 
okay let me take this color okay now i just going to take this okay now what i going to do i just going to put it here okay. now if i save it let me click it you can see it is not working here you can see now it is working here the reason is i just give a semicolon that's what it is now you can see the background color property is added with rgb you you could like to add hex color or you want to add normal colors like instead of like this if you want to add a yellow color an attention grabbing color if i click it you can see the background color is changed to yellow right so this is how you need to work with the things this is how you need to work with the things and this is for changing the style of an element so you can do anything so if i want to change the font size i want to do red dot style dot font you can see font family is there i just go for font size I just say 67 pixel and if i save it if i click it you can sorry i just want to mention it and you get you can see it is coming font size added 67 pixel this is how you need to do all the css property that you want to work with that okay so this is the css change changing the content we have discussed changing the style we have discussed and the final thing we're going to discuss is how to change an attribute okay let me discuss that one so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to go for a splash and you will get a um, beautiful image for free i just going to say and say about nature okay so let me take this one copy image address go for index.html here i will add the image with some default height and width just say 120 pixel height width is going to be uh, 60 percent of the screen size all it is going to be image save it Click here, you can able to see we are getting this image, right? We are getting this image, just a minute. Yeah, we are getting this image. So now what I want to do, if I click it, I don't want only change the headings, but also I want to change the image. How can I do it? How can I do this one? So this is changing the attribute. You can see this image is having this url that is why it is producing that one so i need to give out new url so for that i need to change the attribute right i need to change the attribute so how can i do it first we'll add an id here and i just give me just the id now let us go inside this function so what is the element that i want to change is for the image I just say const image equal to use the document dot element by id Okay. okay i'm getting here saving here and here i just going to say this is attribute changing attribute of an element how to change the attribute of an element okay. so here i just going to say image let me log it first what is images is we getting the image or not and let us go and inspect console and if i click it you can see it is telling that document i think i written something wrong yeah you can see i made a mistake in the spelling so if i click it here you can see we are getting this image and the best part is we can able to access each and every attribute for example if i say image dot id it will give me the id of the image save it if I click it, you can see the ID is image. And if I only want the SRC, okay, if you click it, you can see we are getting the SRC, the image, the image tag, we are getting it. This is what we actually want. So to change the attribute, what I want to do is first I need to get the attribute and I need to give a new value, like reassign the value. Image what SRC this is giving the old image link. And I want to replace that with the new image link. 
So the new image link is going to be this one. And I just going to say copy image address and paste the SRC link inside this image. Let us go here and uh, save it. And if I click this, you can see it is changed to new image link, right? Clear? So why, how it is happening? Because we are getting the image and we are getting the SRC and we are setting the SRC as a new image value. That is why we are changing the value to it. And this is attribute changing, okay? Changing the attribute of an element. Clear? Clear. All right. So the next thing what we're going to discuss, how to add a class, add a class to an element. This is one of the good thing to do. Why means just come here, hit style dot background, hit style dot font size. What if if I want to add so much of stylings? For example, I just going to say for the same element, I want to add so much of styling. Hit font size, I just say font family equal to still and Cursive, 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 sorry, cursive, cursive. I go here, click, you can see the font family is changed and I want to add more. I just want to add uh, more. I'm just going to say uh, the head, head dot uh, color, okay? I just want to change the color to dark blue. Like this and we're able to see that a single element we need to do a lot of things right so much of style property we need to write it and every time i need to write head style dot background head style dot font size get style dot font family like this so instead of doing this what i can do i just cut it down for the css add the css property here Remove all the all the things one just add whatever the property that you want and remove this this okay. and just just create a class i just say active okay create a class active and inside this we will put everything inside this like this like this okay. change the all the syntax to css normal css property this And let us add the normal syntax background color, font size, and colon, uh, and this uh, 67. And I just say font family is going to be cursor like this. If I save it, so now you can see we have this class. And where we are putting this class, this class will be applicable. For example, let me create a ton of HTML and let me remove all the IDs. And if I save it, and now here, if I put the class, if I put any which tag, if I put the class, class active, what will happen? That active, whatever the style that I have inside this active, it will be applicable, right? You can see we are getting yellow dark i think it is in black color something is not working or uh, blue color color is background color is yellow background color is okay it is going to be yellow and it is going to be color I don't want to give it in the string normally we need to give it. okay now you can see uh, i just going to say blue blue save you 
and see we are getting it right so where i apply this class active class if i just remove this one and if i apply it to the fourth element then it will be work in the fourth element right like this and see it is applicable for fourth element if i remove this one and if i add this one here yes it will be applicable in the first element right so this is what this uh, this will do right so how can i add a class like this in my javascript why because i don't want to write every time like something like head dot style dot head dot style dot head dot style i don't want to add it i can create a class what are the class that i want to add a background color font size font family color everything in css and create a dummy class and we can add the class to here how can we add it so we have an element first we need to tell which element that you want to add the head is the element that we need to add and you need to use a property called class list okay and use add and here tell what is the class that you want to add so the class you want to add is active now if i add this one if i click here you can see it is changed to congrats sorry think, uh, this class list i think it is code braces yeah it is inside the curly braces so what you need to do you need to add like this not equal to it is a method so you need to add like this and if i click it you can see the particular class is added for the element and if you want to remove that one then what do you need to do you need to use remove if you want to do both thing the first time you are clicking it need to add second time you are clicking it need to remove what you need to do just use a, a, a property called toggle so what this toggle will do means it will add if it is not existed it will add it if it is existed it will remove it okay we save it now if i click it you can see the congrats is added if i click it it is removed you can see you can see the congrats is added the congrats is removed add remove like this okay so this is the thing that it will do so toggle element so basically it is activating the class and deactivating the class like adding the class and removing the class and that is what happened when the filter in triple you click the drop down right if you click it a drop down will come if you click it a drop down will just add it right simply a display property none display property uh, display is there for example here i can say uh, we have so much of entire div right so what i going to do uh, i just going to wrap it with the div i say drop down uh, id Problem. Okay, and inside this div, I'm going to put all the H1 elements like this. Okay, first what I'm going to do, I just going to add, I just going to fetch the element. Const drop equal to document dot get element by ID, and ID is going to be drop down, right? I think I changed it right. Let us copy this one. Go for here. Let us paste it here. All right. Paste it here. So now what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add a class. Okay, for this drop down. What is this? Is drop dot class list dot toggle toggle. And what is the class I want to add? Is drop. Okay. So this is a class i just want to add it and here in the css create a drop active class and here i just going to say display equal to display equal to i just say none like this save it now if i click it you can see it is disappear if i click again reappear click disappear click reappear so the simple thing that is what happened but with some little bit animation okay so we can create an uh, animation like the transition delay uh, we can make it and it will slowly disappear slowly comes like that we can able to create it okay so this is the various type that we will work with that okay clear i hope uh, you have understood something right so clear means just 
you have any other doubts that you have right now you can ask it now okay so that is what so this is how we will add it or if you want to create a drop down or something like that okay so this is what you need to add something like this hello okay so the next thing what i'm going to do i come out of it everything okay so this is all about the doms basics doms that we will uh, see th those kind of dom operation we will do it and there are so much of dom operation is there if you type it in the google you will get lot of dom operation okay so you will get it okay so the next what we're going to discuss is all about conditional statements okay. we're going to discuss about conditional statements Conditional statements. Okay, let me discuss about conditional statements. So, what is conditional statements? Conditional statement is nothing but based on the condition. Okay, based on the condition, if the condition is true or false, based on that, it is going to execute a particular set of code. Okay, so that is what conditional statement is. So, for example, we have four set of conditional statement to work with condition four keywords else, else if, and we just going to say about this statement. Else and else if, and you're going to have switch statement. Okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use if. So if is nothing but inside this if, it will take a condition. This is the syntax to write a conditional statement. So if it is going to check for a condition, if a condition is true, then it will be execute the code. For example, let me right click, go and click on the inspect, comment. console remove it and here it is going to write true directly giving true okay like this true and here it is going to say in the console.log hi and see we are getting gun if we make this as false what will happen you can see we are getting the code is not writing right so if the particular condition is true the code will execute if a condition is not true, it is false, the code will not execute. For example, I say 4 is less than 7. Yes, it is true. The code will execute. 4 is greater than 7. No, it is not going to execute. Okay. So this is how you need to work with the conditional state. Okay. So now you can see that only if it is true, it is going to execute the code. So what if, if it is not true? I need to execute some other code. For example, if it is not true, I need to execute Y. What can I do? Then you can use else statement. So else is if the condition is false. If the particular condition is not true, it is the if statement is not working, then the else will execute the code what it is written. For example, I just say console.log. Now I'm asking four is greater than seven. It is true or false? False. So it is going to execute the else statement. Why? Because only true the if code will be executed. If it is not true, then the else code will be executed. Okay, so that's what happened. So I just getting one. So now if I make the statement to true, you will get high. The y will not execute. Okay. Depends upon the condition, it will execute it. Okay. So that's what it is. So what if, if you have a multiple conditions? Okay. What if, if you have multiple conditions to check it? So what during that time, what you can do? For example, let us take a build a logic of traffic light. Okay. Create, let, let I create a traffic traffic light. Okay. Here I just say red. So if it is red, then I just want to say stop. What I need to do? I say red. Then I just want to say stop the console. And if it is green, I just want to say go in the console. And if it is low, and we need to say about ready in the console. And if it is some other colors or any other words, any, then I just say error. Like this. 
So how can I build a logic like this? Because I need to check for multiple condition. I need to check whether it is red or green or yellow. Then only I need to go for it. How can I do it? So for that only we have a statement that it will be helpful. So let me see how we can create it. First I say if the given color is triple equal to red. So first let me create a variable. Let a uh, traffic light. Let me take this traffic light. Let me change the traffic light into color. Right? Simplicity. And if it is red, then in the console.log, I just want to say go. Then go. Right? And I just say else. Else if the color is triple equal to because I need to check for another condition, right? I check for green. So if it is triple equal to green, so for that you need to else if. If it is green, then you need to say in the console.log, what do you need to say? Go. So if it is red, I not want to go, I just want to stop. Now understand this is true. What will happen? It will execute. Otherwise, the else code will be executed. But now the else will be executed only if all the conditions are false. They will check for this condition. If it is not true, it will go and check for the next condition. If it is not true, it will go and check for the next condition. If all the conditions are false, then the else code will be executed. Okay. Here I just say console.log, I just say error. I save it. If I click, not uh, this one. I, why I'm clicking this one? I'm sorry. Okay, you can get it. We are getting stop. And if I just say green, the color is going to be green. Now what happened? It will check for red. And if it is red, it is going to say console.log. And once it is not, it is going to say about console.log go. If I save it, you can see the first code is not true. So it will move on to the second code and it will checking for it. Same like that, it will check for each and everything. So, and I just say green, and I just say red, green, hello. So now, what about the uh, what about the variable it is going to give? It is going to change according to it. So it's just going to say green and it's just going to say hello. You can see we are getting ready. You can see we are getting ready. If I give red, you will get red. If I give uh, green, you will get green. If I give yellow, you will get yellow. And if you do some other colors, you will get error. Okay. Right now you can see I'm manually changing it. What if, if a user having an input and if a user having input that if the user has clicked the input, then I need to change. I need to change the, I need to display the word according to the console. How can I do it? So let me do one thing. Here we will create an input. Let us give them an ID as input. And whatever the value the user is going to give here, I need to fetch it when someone clicks it. So I just going to create a get clicked function. Just going to say get click. Sorry. Just want to create a function giving the name as get click. And here I just going to say someone clicks it console.log. I am <laughs> If I click this, you can see I'm clicked is there. So now what I want, I need to fetch this input box. So how can we fetch it? Well, we know that it is a const input equal to document dot get element by ID. And here I just going to say what is the ID that we are given for the input is input. Let me take this ID input and paste it here. And I want it in the console. Someone click it. If I click, you can see we are getting this input ID. And like I said, you can able to get the attribute also, right? You can able to get the attribute also. If I ask for 
dot id what is the id is okay you can see the id is input and what is the type Let i ask for what is the type of the variable ask it you can see it is text type so same like that the input is also having an attribute called value value okay if you click it Oh. Yeah. So if you click it, what will happen? It is showing what is the value that is inside this attribute. So right now it is empty because there is no attribute is there, right? So that is why. So if I give any value, like I just say red, and if I click this, you can see we are getting the value red because right now it has value red. So that's what we wanted. So now what I want is I just want the input value, right? So I just going to remove this one. I am going to copy this entire code, cut it down, paste it here, and I am just going to cut it this one, paste it here. In this color, I am just going to say input dot value. That's it. And now let me ask if I say red, click it. You can see you are getting stop. And if I give hello, this you can see get ready. If I give green, you can see you can see go. And if you give some other colors, you will get error. So this is what the functionality. Is. And instead of this console dot log, what you can do, you can change the background color based upon the color they are giving. Okay, you can change it according to the color they are giving. You can change it. Okay, how can you change that one? Uh, well, instead of console, I just going to say first we need to fetch the body tag. So I'm just going to say const body for fetching the root elements. You can directly use. You don't want to say document and get element by id those things. For body, you can just simply say body. It will fetch the entire body tag. And what I'm going to do, I just say body dot background color. Sorry, style dot background color equal to color like this now if we just give red let us click here so to say document i made a mistake here again in this one i just give red click it you can see the entire background color is changed to red and here we are getting stop and if i just say green not here if I just say green, and if I click this one, you will get green. And if I change it to the some other yellow, attention grabbing color is yellow. I'm getting yellow. And if I just say blue, you will get blue. But notice here it is an error because it is running the code based upon the condition. Only three codes is possible, and other codes are it is considered as an error. So that is why it is going to be there. Okay. So this is how you need to create a logic. So just come whatever it comes to mind, you just want to create a logic according to this. Okay. So this is what you need to do with that. Clear? Okay. So yeah. So let me go for the next concept. That is the loop. If I create so the loops basically three types. There are some other advanced tools also there. So basically, here we have three types. What are the types are? We have for loop, we have while loop, we have do while loop. Okay. So let me go for for loop. So for loop is basically a very traditional loop. So they have very complex structure. It is easy, but Compared to other loops, it has some complex structure. Let me explain. So what is actually loop? Loop is nothing but if you want to run a particular line of code again and again, you need to use these loops. Okay. For example, if you want to run my name console.log for 10 times. So what do you need to do? You just want to use the loops. You need to use the loops. So how can I create the loops? So without loops, how we will write it? Just say console.log. 
like this. Just want to test it every time, right? Every time I need to paste it if I want to run the loop. Okay, so that's what it is going to happen. So instead of that, what I can do is I can create a loop. For loop. Okay, and I just want to say let i equal to zero. So let me explain once I've done this. Okay. I less than 10. So this is for loop. So the for loop basically, if I just run this code, you can see we are getting the code is run to for 10 times. If I increase 1000, you can see that the loop is running continuously again and again, right? You can able to see it, right? So how it is working, let me explain. So for creating a for loop, you just want to use a keyword called for, and it takes three things. One is the first one here, and the second one is this, third one is this. What are they? The first one is called as initiation, so where to start the loop. So for starting this basically in variable, you need to tell where the count number you need to start it. So I just say let i equal to zero. Don't give const here. It is because it is changeable each and every time. So you just want to use let out without any keyword. You can use it. So let i equal to zero. So what is the value of i? i is going to be zero. And i value is less than i value is less than thousand. So what is mean by that? So i value is zero if the i value is less than thousand, a comparison operator. So it is going to return as a Boolean value. So if it is true. If i value is less than true, less than thousand, it is true. Then what you need to do? You need to execute this code. Console dot log Harry. Okay. So now first time it is go and check i value is zero. The value that we are comparing is with thousand. So obviously i value is less than thousand. So it is going to execute the code. So until the until the condition is become false, the code will execute again and again. So how it will become false means once it is true, the code will execute. After the code is executed, it is go and it, it will here you can able to see here. So we have something called as i plus plus, the third parameter. So what is this? So it will increase the value of the i. Why I want to increase the value of i? Because I need to make, I need to create, whenever you are creating a loop, you need to just have a conscious that you need to create a finite loop. So it need to be stop. The functionality should be stop at some point of time. If you don't create some finite loop, what will happen means, okay? What will happen means the code started to execute again and again, then the browser will hang and it is going to crash your browser, okay? So that's what happened. So what you need to do is, well, uh, you need to create a finite loop. So that is why we are using I++. So why? Because each and every time the loop is going to execute the code, the I value is getting increased. So right now it is zero, it is increased to two, one and one less than 10 like that it will go on go on for thousand times and once it i value reach triple nine okay it will check for the value thousand it is still uh, less than thousand so it is going to be so it is going to be executed right so and then the console.log it is going to execute hurry and after that the y value is going to be increased right so right now it is thousand thousand is not less than thousand so what will happen it has become false so once the code will become false then the loop stop it's working Okay, so that is what it will happen. Okay, so that's what it will happen. So whenever you are creating a loop, you just want to create a finite loop. Okay, so that's what you need to do with it. Clear? If you have any doubt, you can ask it now. So this is all about loops. So and all other loops are exactly going to be the same. Exactly going to be the same. Okay, if you have any other doubts, you can ask now. Okay. So let us go for the next loop. The next loop is going to be while loop. So while loop is exactly the same what for loop is doing. While loop is also doing the same thing. But the execution is very simple. Syntax is very simple. Okay. So the execution is very simple. The syntax is very simple. So how means? Simply instead of for the same concept, but how we can execute this? Just say let equal to zero initiation. So I just going to create a loop that is the while loop. Okay. 
and it is going to create a loop and here i just going to say i value is less than i value is less than 10 if the value of i is less than 10 then you need to execute a certain code this is going to be in the console dot log console dot log what you need to do is just want to run hello okay once it is done you need to increase the value of i into i plus plus like this it is a pretty ordered one and it will do the exact same thing what while loop is do, for loop is do that i equal to i checking the value of i is zero yes i value is less than 10 so it is going to run the code and it is going to increment the value so straight line instead of this zigzag let and you can see it is separated by semicolon something weird and also using some longer syntax with some semicolons and the execution is initiation execute initiation condition execute and then increase the value here it is in the order is written as exact value right so here it is written in a straight line you can see let i equal to zero i value is less than zero and just console dot log here you can see we are printing hello in our browser for 10 times right so this is what all about this is what okay so that is what is all about that okay so now what i'm going to do i just comment off it we're going to have another loop that is going to be do while loop so what is do while loop is do while loop is an exit control loop what is mean by that it is totally different from the other loop okay? other while loop and do while uh, while loop and for loop okay so why means because the total here you can see the execution is same in while and uh, do while right execution is same in while and uh, everything but here the do while the execution is also different what does it mean by that simply first it will execute the code then it will check for the condition for example do this is the syntax and this is the why okay so first initiation so i just create let i equal to zero this is the initiation and here you need to tell what you need to do here i just say console.log no checking condition i just say simply hello and here after that you need to increase the value decrement the value you need to tell it here i i just want to say i plus plus then you need to tell the condition to check here the condition checking is done at the last okay if i value less than zero if i run it you can see the code is executed I'm checking for the condition if the value is less than zero. Yes, I value is equal to zero, not less than zero. Then it should not execute the code, right? But it is executed. Why? Because the flow is different. First, it will execute the code, then only it check for the condition. So that is why the do while loop will execute their code at least for one time. Okay. Even the condition is also false. It is going to execute their code for at least one time. Okay. So that's what it will do. Okay, clear. So these all are loops. These all are loops. Okay. So these this all are the basic concepts, and we have done with the basic concepts, and we have done with the DOM operations. Okay. 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 So that's it. So now what we can do now. Let us uh, what we will do. There is one note. Here you can see the basic concepts, variable, data types, loops, functions, and conditional statements. So all the things that we have covered and in DOM operation, how to manipulate the HTML, the inner content, how to manipulate the CSS, how to and manipulate, add a class, how to grab an element, and we have completed. And not that it is not like we have completed the things. Okay. So we have several things that you need to do. Like, for example, how to fetch an element based on their classes, how to fetch an element based on their uh, ID. There are several other elements is that that you need to fetch it. Okay. So let me show you what are the next thing that you need to focus right now after this done. Okay. So let me show you that one. Okay. So what are the other things that you need to focus is the basic foundation okay so if you know that you can able to come up with some good application so after completing this i will tell what are the roadmaps i think some people are asking about roadmaps i will tell you that okay
So we have JavaScript, right? We have JavaScript. And JavaScript, first you need to complete the basic. Whatever we have learned today, that is the basic. To understand the syntax. To understand the syntax. And once it is completed, then you need to learn about DOM. So we have learned several things in DOM. There are some other things also, some other basic things also is that just have a focus for that. Okay. You need to complete that DOM operation also. Okay. So have a focus on this DOM basics. Okay. Some methods and property explore some new methods like class list and uh, uh, how to change the CSS like that. Explore some new methods and things and have, uh, create something like some good one. Okay. So that's what the DOM operation that you need to do with. Okay. That is the second one. And then what you need to do is you need to understand, you need to create some, you need to work with some concepts. Okay. So what are all the concepts? Okay. The concepts are the main important concept that I'm going to say is you need to work with scopes. You need to work with hoisting. Okay. And you need to work with uh, like uh, APIs. What is API work? You need to have to work with that one. And uh, these are all the some concepts is that you need to work with that. So they are basically uh, they define uh, they, they are the way that you will write the program. Okay, so these concepts that you need to basically scope and hoisting is the most basic concept that you need to work with that initially. Okay, once you completed that one, then you need to jump into ES6. Okay, so what is ES6? So ES6 is nothing but ECMAScript version 6. What is this? ECMAScript version 6. So in the version 6 of ECMAScript, they have introduced lots of methods and variables. Okay. You need to work with those methods and variables and you need to like not, um, not methods and variables. So they have introduced lots of uh, methods and the syntax has been changed. Okay. You need to work with that because once you done with this ES6 only, all the methods and the what are the changes that they have made. So then only you need to jump into React. Okay, remember that after completing ES6 only, you need to jump into React. Without ES6, don't go for React. Why? Because React is fully, fully returned with the entire library is returned with this ES6 only. Okay, so don't directly jump into React without knowing JavaScript. That is completely useless, first of all. Okay, so you need to jump into React. Okay, then if you completed it, then you need to focus on async. So this is the core also comes under core concepts. Okay. So by default, JavaScript is a single threaded synchronous language. It is a blocking language, but we can able to achieve asynchronous with the help of the browser. So you need to learn about asynchronous of JavaScript. What is meant by asynchronous of JavaScript? Like how to handle multiple functions in a single time. That's what asynchronous is. Okay. Running a function parallel to another function. That is what asynchronous is. You need to complete it. And once you're done with that, then dive into Node.js. Okay. Because in Node, you will handle a lot of async. So if you don't know async, you don't jump into Node.js because you will handle everywhere. You will handle everywhere. Uh, if you want to store data, if you want to store some everything, everything is an asynchronous. And you need to know that how to control the asynchronous flow of JavaScript. So after that, you need to go for the backend. So let me tell you one thing. Like I till now I discussed about JavaScript is front end, right? So JavaScript React is a library for front end. Okay. So basically, it is going to ease, uh, like it is going to simplify your work in the front end. Okay. If you learn React, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you don't want to write it everything separately, and you don't want to uh, mingle up everything. Okay. So you will create a small small component, come up with some big component with the help of React. Easily, you can able to create a website and web application. That's what it is. And Node.js is something. It's a runtime environment. Right now, we know that JavaScript is only it's a scripting language and it is read by only browser with the help of browser engine. Right. So and this is super fast and the functionality is so dynamic and the code is easy to write. So that is why a person named Ryan Dodd. So remember that the person name is Ryan Dodd and the person who created JavaScript is Brendan Inc. OK, JavaScript was created in 10 days Okay, by this man, Brendan Inc. And Ryan Dodd is the person, what he thinks is, so right now JavaScript runs in browser, very good. But outside the browser, it will not work because it is a scripting language, right? So what he does is, he just created a runtime environment. 
okay so what is runtime environment a runtime environment is nothing but a program can run in a particular space that's what it is so create a runtime environment that is nothing but the node js that is node js and it basically allows javascript allow javascript code to execute outside the browser not only in the browser outside the browser if you write the code the code is will work with the help of this node js so he created that with the help of c++ and he wrapped it with the javascript runtime environment and he created Node.js, that is what the runtime environment that right now we can do the help of Node.js. You can able to work with the backend also. So you don't want to worry about the server database and we need to study a programming language. Yo, you don't want to study. Go with Node.js. Okay, pretty good. And all the popular stacks, Node.js will be there. And Node.js is also built in JavaScript. So if you if you learn JavaScript properly, then you can able to work with Node.js also. So front and back and no other programming language need that's only javascript is enough that is what it is okay so once you completed that jump into node.js and do some couple of projects okay then it's a time to jump into the core concepts core concept i can say principles parenting and i can see lots of people who are learning slightly these principles and paradigms paradigms you actually don't need this to create a web application and websites. This is a knowledge that is going to help you to build some quality applications. But if you are an initial behavior that you don't want need it. So don't go and learn those concepts initially. Okay. Then all the things and then jump into principle and paradigms. So what are the concepts that comes here? Okay. So here uh, learn a little bit about closer. Okay. So it will help in the interview. So principles and paradigms are hoisting again. Why? Because hoisting is not an a, like a full stop. It's like like so much of concept is involved that you need to learn hoisting deeper. Okay, and you need to learn about closers. You need to learn about how to write object oriented programming language, functional oriented programming language, prototypal inheritance. Prototypal inheritance. What is the problem it is solving and everything that you need to uh, work with that and async deeper okay like promises you need to learn about the core how to work with promises how the async and avoid is working and all those concepts that you want to learn it and then modules how javascript modules are working like uh, if you have multiple javascript file you want to align it how javascript modules are working and in this concepts only you will come to the concept of immediate working functions and uh, export import modules right now the ES6 is introduced right so how the modules are working and those concepts that you start you need to start to load okay there's a core principle concept that you need to start to load uh, closes and then you need to learn currying and then you need to learn a lot, lot of so much of things is there and uh, then only you need to focus on ES7 ES8 ES9 ES10 level 12 and uh, all those things okay so there are some different different methods that could really help you to or uh, do something good okay so this is how the roadmap is go for the basics start with the basics understand the syntax write some code create some application go with the dom and work with the browser add your basic knowledge syntax application into and real practical work create some application concepts learn the concepts that will really help to give a confidence that not confidence you will know, came to know that nothing uh, in this uh, program uh, it is not going to be end there is a lot of things to learn if you learn, started to learn here and you need to create an application with the help of api so api how to handle an api in a front end that you need to work with that and in api you need to learn about browser apis you need to learn about browser tools and browser apis okay and web apps web apis you need to work with these things okay during this space and after that conclude with es6 ES6, you need to learn about the syntax and those all those things until if you face every every time you are having you have struggled with react then come to ES6 starter to learn if you have lack of ES6 then react will be little bit is more tougher for you okay you need to create it and then start to create an application learn asynchronous okay learn asynchronous here itself you will learn the basics of asynchronous okay so you will learn it while handling api but here learn the core concept of asynchronous how the asynchronous happening why how in javascript is happening what javascript is doing how it is stopping the code and everything is going to be you need to learn it 
and then jump into dive deep dive into into and learn all those other things and uh, which all are really helpful for your interview to prepare okay so this is the core found uh, structure that you need to focus comes to javascript okay don't jump into react directly don't jump into core concepts directly don't jump into advanced concepts directly okay take some time if some people tell that if 21 days is enough to create a javascript yes you can able to get an understanding of javascript within 21 days but no program no program language can able to like uh, complete within 21 days okay it, it is a continuous process so don't think about that i am not uh, good enough to learn closer i am not good enough to learn those things and everything because no one knows it <laughs> everyone want to learn it and they need to clear it okay that's what it is that is what the entire program is all okay so that is all about that okay so if you have any doubts you can ask me ask with me now okay so yeah yeah and where you can learn this one well uh, we yeah i will tell you the place where you can learn it for basics and dom uh, there is a workshop will be there four days workshop one hour one hour workshop you can learn that thing here and scope hoisting and closer every wednesday there is a series will be released that is called as hollow javascript okay so there is the around 23 series has been released and you can prefer other youtube channel also if you like to go with that you can go with that and also we have a series and you can watch it also in wednesday so is there any paid course from twd yes so we have the paid course you will probably get the update uh, by now into business sir okay so you will get the update i think uh, the badge is uh, right now closed uh, i think so so you will get the update okay you will get the update by now into business sir the next uh, react is handled by now into business sir and he will tell you regarding those things uh, what are the things that you would want to follow also okay so the paid course is uh, like the, you will get a guidance okay so you will get a guidance like how we you need to teach it and uh, what are the things that you need to focus you will get a guidance also so those things will be taken uh, done by navid mr sir you can wait for a few minutes okay so that's what it is and then api there are we have created so much of projects with the help of apis you can watch it here we can created uh, in the youtube channel itself we have here and you can watch it and for advanced to mastery classes we have es6 and react beginner to basics advanced everything will be there but it is not enough you need to learn much more also when it comes to react and no js there are not of there is not there is no that much of videos is available but uh, you can able to see it in the old videos like it will be there currently there is no uh, workshop in node js is taken it will be taken bit later but you can able to watch the old videos that is available and this core concepts you can able to learn you can just learn it in the wednesday prem premium show okay so we every wednesday we will have the advanced 20 minutes we will explain deeply explain about the uh, uh, concept that you can do it basics of java dive into react no 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 basics of javascript is not enough to dive into react so what you need to know that is why i telling the structure this is the structure that you need to learn basic syntax dom annotation create a bunch of applications learn the scope hoisting and closer and api and then learn about es6 after learning es6 do every code with es6 then jump into react okay without that don't jump into react the reason why i am saying you may think like okay so i can learn react without that but it is really hard you can memorize it but you cannot understand the code later it will uh, like it will just really like confusing you like it will it will it will do that okay so you need to exactly follow the same structure okay so close us you need to done a lot of project you need to work on basics of asynchronous you need to work on basics of uh, core concept you need to work on basics of syntax you need to work on es6 the most because every syntax that you going to write is under the principle of es6 like under the versions of es6 so without es6 don't jump into react okay if you are not confident in a uh, es6 then wait for it and you can go for it okay that's the best recommendation that you can do for it. okay so yeah that's it if you have any other doubts you can ask it uh, i think uh, yeah bo uh, two more minutes let me okay thank you okay so i hope that uh, you filled the attendance form okay so yeah so so just a minute yeah okay
that's it that's it okay so three elements form is shared and uh, the next three hours uh, sorry uh, next three hours is going to be react class learn the react as from the basics okay so it will be the reactor if you right now you don't know es6 still you can able to understand what is react is and how it can able to work with that and everything that you can able to understand it it will be clearly explained by an abitibus person okay so i hope that you don't have any other doubts uh i will hand over the section to uh nabitibus person thank you all thank you Thank you, Hari. Thank you, Hari, for taking such a nice session. Thank you, Mawson, for taking such a nice session. And hope you all can hear me. And uh, we will start with React now. So we will start with the React now. We will start with React now. And uh, so let me share my screen.